The Jell-O program starring Jack Benny with Mary Livingston, Phil Harris, Dennis Day, and yours truly, Don Wilson. And now, ladies and gentlemen, this being the fifth day of January, we bring you a man who is still doing his Christmas shopping, Jack Benny. <laughs> Thank you, thank you. Hello again, this is Jack Benny talking, and Don, when you saw me in that department store yesterday, I wasn't shopping. I was exchanging some of my Christmas gifts. Well, that's quite a coincidence. I was doing the same thing. Would you believe it, Jack? Three different friends gave me electric razors. Well, you think that's bad? I got enough bottles of cologne to have people whistle at me for the next ten years. <laughs> No kidding, Don. I must have gotten 25 bottles of that stuff. Oh, what are you going to do with it all? I gave it to Rochester, and he's going to throw a cocktail party. <laughs> he uh, mixes it with orange ice and calls it a Central Avenue lullaby. <laughs> uh, but when you saw me in that store, Don, I was only exchanging the gift uh, Phil Harris gave me. You were? Why, Phil told me he gave you a lovely present. Oh, it was lovely, yes, but I don't know, I didn't feel right in it. Oh, well, you shouldn't have exchanged it, Jack. You'll hurt his feelings. I don't care whether I hurt his feelings or not. I'm too old for an Indian suit. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what's the matter with Phil. He gives a darn his Christmas present. Last year, he sent me a manhole cover. <laughs> Imagine a manhole cover. Oh, yes, I remember that. What'd you ever do with it, Jack? What could I do? I put Home Sweet Home on it and hung it on the wall. <laughs> and I wish you could have seen what the... Oh, hello, Mary. Hello, Jack. Happy New Year, Don. Same to you, Mary. What about me? No wonder you wouldn't thank me for the swell time I told you New Year's Eve. You didn't even phone me. I want to do a big. I'm going to hire a sky rider. <laughs> it won't be necessary. You know, Don, I took Mary to the Wiltshire Bowl. And boy, was I raring. At the stroke of 12, I grabbed a horn and blew the old year right out. You did, huh? Yep. And at 12.01, Jack took the horn in his pocket and said, let's go home. <laughs> now, the only reason I suggested going home early was because I didn't want to have a hangover the next day. A hangover? From what? Breaking balloons? <laughs> Listen, now, don't try to give the impression that I'm an old dodo. I was the life of the party. I had you on that dance floor every minute. Anything to keep me from eating. <laughs> You ate, sister. You... <laughs> Believe me. You had the special T-bone steak with French fried potatoes and choice of two vegetables, including tax, a dollar twenty-nine. <laughs> you know very well you had a swell time. Okay, I had a swell time. Don Tootie. Say, Mary, is Jack a good dancer? I couldn't tell. That was the first time I ever did the turkey trot. <laughs> It wasn't the turkey trot at all. I was doing the latanga. The latanga? Yes. Yeah. Couldn't you hear me going? One, two, three. Uh. One, two, three. Uh. One, two, three. Uh. <laughs> what do you think that was? I thought your rheumatiz was giving you the biz. <laughs> that was very funny, Mary. You know, I wonder why you and Phil don't quit this program and get one of your own. Harris and Livingston, every week an audition. <laughs> You're too smart for this show. Oh, hello, Dennis. Hello, Mr. Benny. Happy New Year. Same to you, kid. Is anybody an aspirin? Oh, boy, what a head I got. Why, Dennis, I'm ashamed of you. I bumped it getting out of my car. <laughs> oh. Oh, I see. I'm sorry. That's all right. You can bump your head. <laughs> I thought you meant you'd been celebrating too freely. By the way, Dennis, uh, where did you go New Year's Eve? I went there. Don't worry. Oh. <laughs> okay. Say, I wonder what's keeping Phil. You went where, Dennis? Never mind. I went there every night, just like you told me to. All right, all right. <laughs> Say, Don, have you seen... Dennis, where have you been going every night? Mary, it's none of your business. It's a good picture, all right, but gee, I can't laugh all the time. <laughs> Dennis, please. I'd rather go back to mowing your lawn. <laughs> Now, Dennis, I don't want to hear another word about it. Why, Jack, Danny, do you mean to say you've been sending a kid downtown to laugh at your picture every night? Mary, I don't know what you're talking about. Anyway, Dennis, it's time for your song. So let's have it. My girl laughed at Fred Allen, but don't worry, I kicked her. <laughs> now, Dennis, everybody's waiting for your song, so let's have it, please. What's it going to be? A brand new number called I'm Going to Round Up My Love. That'll be fine. Go ahead. And by the way, if your girl thinks Fred Allen is so funny, get another one. Mary, stop looking at me like that. <laughs> you hear? 
Oh, brother. That kid wouldn't babble so much. That was... That was I'm Gonna Round Up My Love, sung by Dennis Day. There you are, Dennis. That was... Well, you were in very good form. Hi, Jack. <laughs> Jack? Why, Dennis, what's come over you? You've always called me Mr. Benny. Well, I thought so much of you last week, I feel like we're old friends. <laughs> oh, I see what you mean. But you know, Dennis, I kind of like the idea of your calling me Mr. Benny. It adds a little dignity to the program and shows uh, your respect for me. Do you want me to call you Mr. Benny, too? That won't be necessary, Mary. Gee, I can call him Jack. <laughs> And now, folks... Wait till the girls at the May Company hear about this. Now, wait a minute. Don't get smart, Miss Livingston. Oh, do call me Mary. Now, cut that out. <laughs> you asked me a question, I answered it. Now, let's forget it. Well, look who finally breathed in. Hi, Jackson. Am I late? No, Phil. Uh, we realize that taking up a half hour of your valuable time once a week is quite an imposition. Now, hold on, Jackson. In fact, Phil, I think that next Sunday I'm going to have a microphone installed across the street in the pool room so you can say hi, you folks, without putting your cue down. <laughs> would you, uh, would you care for that? Now, before you ball me out, Jackson, I want to tell you that I'm a changed man. You're looking at the new Harris. Oh, I am, eh? I'm not kidding. No. On January the 1st, I made a resolution. I'm going to cut out smoking, cut out drinking, cut out gambling, and I'm going to cut out staying up so late. Well, I'm glad to hear it. When are you going to cut out running after women? When they stop running. <laughs> I thought so. Well, Phil, here's another resolution for you during this new year. Why don't you learn something about music? You mean I should be like Stokowski? No, Phil. All I ask, all I ask is when you pick up a piece of paper that has lines across it and little black dots all over it, don't look at your boys and say, there's a spy around here. This stuff is in cold. <laughs> <laughs> Little as they know, it embarrasses them. <laughs> okay, Jackson, that'll be another one of my resolutions. And now, ladies and gentlemen, we will have a number by Phil Harris and his orchestra who will play it not backwards, not forwards, but in their usual manner. They will start in the middle and blast both ways. <laughs> Uh, all right, Phil, let's have it. Okay. Say, uh, by the way, Jackson, I got my expense account on our New York trip all made out. You want to see it now? Uh, no, Phil, I'll look it over later. What does it total up to? 3,427. Give me that. <laughs> Let me see that expense account. There you are. I got the whole thing itemized. That's itemized. <laughs> itemized. If you don't mind, I'll look it over. Let's see here. Hotel room, $42 a week. That's reasonable. Meals for two weeks, $63. That's very reasonable. You don't have to read it, Jack. It's in perfect shape. I'll just give it a quick glance. Now, let's see. Hey, Jack, look. There's one item you can't complain about. Where? Right there. Laundry for two weeks, 37 cents. <laughs> Oh, yes. Uh, that's not bad. Uh, let's see what else he has here. Bottle opener, 10 to 10. Ice, 250. Bromo, $135. What do you want us to play, Jackson? Wait a minute, Phil. I'm not through yet. Taxi cab, 11 50. That's okay. Charles Bagby, musical arrangement for orchestra, 37 cents. <laughs> Thirty-seven cents. That must be the same guy that does his laundry. <laughs> yeah. See what else is here? IGR forty-five dollars. Forty-five dollars. Phil, what's this IGR? I got robbed. <laughs> My goodness, you expect me to pay for that? <laughs> You don't expect me to pay for that, do you? Oh, what are you peeping about? I never even charged you for bailing out my guitar player. <laughs> oh, well, that's very sweet of you. Now, let's see. 
Well, here we are again, Bromo 100. <laughs> Bill, you and I will talk this whole thing over later. In the meantime, let's have a band number. Okay. Look at this next item, Mary. Elevator, $400. What could he want with an elevator? <laughs> That was There'll Be Some Changes Made, played by Phil Harris and his orchestra, where there will be some changes made. <laughs> and, uh, Phil, getting back to your New York expense account, it's a ridiculous total and I'm not paying for all of your hilarity. Okay, Jackson. But as long as we're on the subject of dough, how about that 50 bucks I won from you from the Rose Bowl game? That you can take to court. <laughs> I didn't see the game, Phil, so the bet's off. I thought you'd squirm out of it. Well, Jack, I thought you told me you were going to the Rose Bowl game. I did go, but I, I didn't say. <laughs> Tell him what happened, Jack. Mary, Don wouldn't be interested. Oh, yes, I would. What happened, Mary? Well, Don, it was like this. No woman. Jack got the tickets and told us to meet him in front of Tunnel 16 at 1.30. 1.30, 1.30. <laughs> uh... Well, anyway, Phil Dennis and I took a cab. But when we got to the bowl, Jack wasn't there yet. So he waited and waited and waited. Programs, programs, names and numbers of all the players. Program is... No, thanks. Come on, fellas, let's go in. We can't go in. we got to wait for Jackson. Yeah, he's got the tickets. I don't see why he didn't come with us. Well, you know how romantic Jack is. He's bringing his girlfriend Gladys to the game, and they're driving out alone in the Maxwell. Say, that little waitress ain't so bad looking when she gets dressed up. I think that Jackson's stuck on her. He said it. Yeah, he said it. <laughs> Dennis, why don't you go get lost in the crowd? Don't think I couldn't. <laughs> hey, look, Mary, ain't that Jack and Gladys coming this way? Oh, yes. Yeah. Jack would be wearing a beanie. You get a load of that fur coat on Gladys. Gee, Gladys, I, I never saw you looking so good. You're sure pretty when you're all dialed up. Thanks, Stevie. I mean it. Get your programs here. Program, mister, 15 cents. Oh, Stevie, can I have a program? You're darn right you can. Here's a half a dollar, buddy. Keep the change. Oh, boy, now I get my toupee out of hock. <laughs> Well, here's the game, Gladys. Hiya, fellas. All set for the game? Yeah, I've been waiting on you, Jackson. Come on. Say, Gladys, you know Mary and Dennis, don't you? Sure. Hello, everybody. Hello. You, Gladys, has a pretty fur. You tap it yourself? <laughs> you know, darn well, I gave it to her for Christmas. Oh, pardon me, honey. Do you know Phil Harris? Do I? Mm. Hiya, Gladys. I'll have a ham on rye. Now, Phil, cut that out. <laughs> Not working today. <laughs> Come on, fellas. Here's our game. Let's go. Take it, take it. Hold your own stubs, please. Here you are. Oh, hello, Gladys. Hello, Eddie. How are you? Fine. Taking your old man to the game? <laughs> I'm not her old man. I'm her fella. Come on, sweetheart. Say, where's Dennis? I'm stuck in the transpile. <laughs> now push it a little, for heaven's sake. Here's tunnel 16 over this way. Oh, yeah. Say, Gladys, are you still working at the Shamrock Cafe? No, I'm at a drive-in now. He thought I ought to be outside where it's healthier. <laughs> Darn right. What's the use of being in California and not enjoy the sun? It's great for you. Yeah, I just have to get off the night shift. <laughs> You will, honey. Well, here's the entrance, kid. Say, look who's here. Hiya, Gladys. Happy New Year. Same to you, Lefty. Lefty. Hmm. Who's that fresh guy, Gladys? Lefty Flanagan. Boy, can he drive a truck. I can imagine. Hey, look, there's a hot dog stand. Let's see. Yeah, you want a hot dog, Gladys? I'm not hungry right now. Okay, we'll get him inside. Better get one now, Gladys. You know Speedy. That's Speedy. <laughs> All right, I'll go over and buy the hot dog. Everybody wait here so you won't get lost. Hey, mister, five hot dogs, please. Five puppies coming up? Oh, hello, stranger. Why, slap on them! Well, a 
Uh, oh, Fable, Slapperman, are you running a hot dog stand now? Well, look at my sign, Petty Boy. All the hot dogs you can eat for 10 cents. That's fine, but how can you make money with an offer like that? Taste one and you're tasting the answer. <laughs> oh, they're, they're pretty tough weenies, eh? What two taste handles they would make? <laughs> well, they still look good to me. Give me five of them. Okay, what kind of mustard do you want? Mustard? What kind? Yeah, sure. I got strong, mild, and channel number five. <laughs> oh, mild, I guess. How much do I owe you? Five hot dogs, 50 cents. Well, that's fair enough. Here's a dollar. Here's a quarter. Thanks for the tip. <laughs> You're welcome. So long, Slap. So long. Get your red hat here. You ain't hat till you dine with Slap. <laughs> Here you are, kids. Take your hot dog. Thanks, Jack. Here's my dime. Keep it. Everything's on me today. Hey, I'm thirsty. What are we going to drink with our hot dog? Here you are, Gladys. Put that back in your pocket. <laughs> Phil, just for once, why don't you see a football game where four teams aren't playing? <laughs> now, where's Dennis? He'll be back in a minute. Oh. <laughs> Well, well, he's uh, he's got his own ticket. Let's go in. Here's the tunnel. He is dark in here. Huh? So dark in here. Yeah. Say, Stevie, remember the time we went through the tunnel of love at Ocean Park? Oh, glad it's for heaven's sake. Cut <laughs> it out. Oh, I'm sorry. I slapped you. Gladys, it's all over. Forget it. <laughs> now, come on. Sub, please. Hey, uh, right this way. Oh, hello, Gladys. Hello, Nick. Where you been keeping yourself? Oh, I've been around. Where you been? Come on, come on. So is our team. <laughs> Listen, Gladys, you have to talk to every fellow you meet. Oh, Stevie, you're so jealous. I'm not jealous. Here you sit, Mr. Thanks. <laughs> These seats are all right, aren't they? Yeah, right on the old 40-yard line. Say, Jack, who's playing here today? Two of the finest teams in the country, Sanford and Nebraska. Then why does your parents say love thy neighbor on it? <laughs> i got to weigh something, don't I? You know, I kind of like Nebraska. Well, I'm for Stanford. You want to make a little bet, Jackson? Yeah, I might. Hey, Gladys, how are you? Oh, there's Lefty Gordon. Hello, Lefty. Another Lefty. Don't you know anybody that's right-handed? <laughs> Used to, used to. You're going with me now. I wish you wouldn't talk to everybody. Hey, Jackson, what about that bet? Okay, Phil, you've got Stanford, and I've got Nebraska. Oh, yeah, Phil. Is this big special, old fellow, old fellow? Oh, fine. <laughs> yes, a young man has it. He'll be here in just a minute. Oh, don't mention it, pal. I pledge the orchard to play a while. And this would happen to me. How much so you want to bet, Jackson? Any amount you say, brother. Just name it. Okay, 50 bucks. Hmm. Fifty, eh? Take another number, Phil. No, oh, no. If he wants to bet fifty bucks, it's okay with me. Quiet, quiet. I want to hear the game. The game hasn't started yet. No, sir. I love it, touch <laughs> How do you talk to a guy like that? Look, Jack, here comes the Nebraska team. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Gee, they're a husky bunch of fellas. Yeah, listen. Yes, sir. You know, Gladys, I'll bet there are 90,000 people here. That's terrible. Many thousand people without a home. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Many thousand people. What are you talking about? <laughs> They've got homes. They're here for the game. Oh, no. You're just saying that because I'm your pal. <laughs> You're not my pal. I never saw you before in my life. No, thanks. I never could. I don't know why I always run into one of these guys. Ignore him, Gladys. I am Gladys, old pal, old pal. Don't you dare speak to her. Here, hold my coat, Mary. He's on the floor already. What do you want? Well, he can't talk like that. Hey, look, Jackson. Here comes that good old Stanford team out on the field. Hey, hey those boys look pretty good, too, don't they, Gladys? Oh, they're a crowd bunch. Hello, Sally. Uh, 
Jack really lost his head, huh? He sure did. Okay, I'm a fiery, jealous nature. What can I do? Play, Phil. Okay, Speedy. We're a little late, so good night, folks. The Jell-O program starring Jack Benny with Mary Livingston, Phil Harris, Dennis Day, and yours truly, Don Wilson. And now, ladies and gentlemen, it gives me great pleasure to bring you... Hold it. Hold it, Don. Jack isn't here yet. I saw him just a few minutes ago. Where is he? He just went in the other room to talk to his riders. Oh, boy, is Jack burned up. Well, them two guys get away with murder. They never have a program ripped till the last minute. (laughs) Well, I'm going in to see what's happening. He's always having trouble with his riders. Now, look, fellas. If I told you once, I told you five times. You gotta have the program written before we go on the air. Every week we just barely make it, now today look what happened. No script at all. Well, what are you worried about? Yeah, it's only Friday. <laughs> it's not Friday, it's Sunday. And there's no excuse for you guys not knowing it. I gave both of you calendars for Christmas. <laughs> I knew this would happen someday. Well, we were stuck this week. We didn't have no inspiration. <laughs> Oh, you didn't. Don't yell at me. I'll fly to pieces. <laughs> I'm not yelling. I'm just I'm just asking you to work. That's all. I'm paying you to work. And that's another thing. We want more gold. Well, you certainly picked the right time to ask me. You're getting plenty now. What do you want more dough for? We want to get a room tonight. <laughs> Now, cut that out. Fine team of writers I've got. I've been looking for you all week. Where were you? The Boba Hot Springs. <laughs> You're not supposed to be in the Boba. You're supposed to be here with me. Come on, Jack. We're waiting for you. Be there in a minute. Now, look, fellas. Hey, who's the thing? That's Mary Livingston. She's on the program. You've met her 400 times. Oh, yeah. That's the girl we write for, ready? You're ready. I'm Bill. <laughs> And I'm Benny. Glad to know you. <laughs> now, now, listen, fellas. Jack, you better hurry up. Let those two dream boats alone. I told you, Mary, I'll be there in a minute. Okay. Not fair. Well, stop <laughs> listening. <laughs> now, look, fellas. Look, we're on the air, <laughs> so I'm going out and do the best I can. Meanwhile, you stay right here and prepare some kind of a play for it. Okay. Say, how about a murder mystery? A murder mystery? You know, where a guy comes home and finds his wife in the arms of another man. Door opens. Now I got you. Like Julius, what are you doing here? You know what I'm doing here. I didn't go to Tarzan at all. Like Julius, Julius! Put down that gun! Oh, no, thank you. Oh, thank you. Oh, 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 now, bring it, bring it in as soon as possible. Okay, give me the pencil, Eddie. You got it, Phil. I gave it to you yesterday. Oh, no, I gave it back to you. Yeah, but after that, I... Well, you use my pencil. <laughs> For heaven's sake, get started. Now, go to work. And those guys that go to the Boba Springs, and I have no broadcast. What's the matter, Jack? You having trouble with your riders again? Yes, on every week, they're getting lazier. Now, tonight, no material at all. Why don't you fire him, Jack? He can't. They got off the photograph of Jack when he was in third grade. What's wrong with that? He was the only kid with a handlebar mustache. <laughs> oh, it was just a fuzz. You could hardly see it. <laughs> anyway, that picture has nothing to do with my writers. If this ever happens again, I will fire him. What are you worried about, Jackson? If you ever get stuck for material, I'll be glad to let you have my author. Your author? Yeah, the guy that writes all my funny stuff for the Wilshire Bowl. Oh, fine. Hey, you're always bragging. No, you're always bragging about your writer. I've been to the bowl a thousand times, and I've never seen him. Who do you think parked your car? <laughs> oh, so that's your gag, man, huh? Well, the next time he points at my Maxwell and says, that does it, I'm going on the wagon, I'll run right over <laughs> Now, 
remember that. <laughs> say, uh, say, Dennis. Yes, please? Hmm. Dennis, as long as we're stuck here, how about doing your song right away? Well, why don't you and I add little, little, to and fro? <laughs> to and fro, eh? All right, Dennis, let's add live. I'll start it. Uh, who was that lady I saw you with last night? That was no saw. That was a battle act. <laughs> well, I think you better sing, Dennis. At least it'll be better than standing around. Come in. Special delivery for Mary Livingston. Right here, boy. Give him a tip, Jack. Here you are, buddy. Say, you're rather old for a messenger boy, aren't you? You ain't going to get the mumps anymore yourself, bub. <laughs> Give him a fifty cent tip. You gave him a time. I gave him a quarter. I know what I gave him. <laughs> Who's the letter from, Mary? It's from my mother in Plainfield. <laughs> now, listen, one time I'm glad to hear from the old lady. <laughs> yes, sir. What you got to say, Mary? Listen to this. <clears throat> my darling daughter, Mary, just a few lines to say hello and thank you for the small check you sent me for Christmas. It looked like a refund from the gas company. <laughs> Boy, is he mercenary. By the way, Mary, we have a new address now. We had to move from the old house in Elm Street as the landlord, who was engaged to your sister, found his glasses. <laughs> I mean, I thought your sister was very good looking. She has beautiful skin. Yes, but there's too much of it. Oh, well, I see. The weather's been awful lately. In fact, it was so cold here this week, your Uncle Herman throws an ear off. Now he only has two. <laughs> More things happen to your relatives. <laughs> and Mary, I must tell you about Miss Missy. The whole family... Mary, we had enough of that letter. How about a song, Dennis? Okay. The whole family went to the midnight show of Jack's new picture. Mary, we've had enough... Oh, oh, hold it, Dennis. <laughs> What was that, Mary? Uh, the whole family went to the midnight show of Jack's new picture, Love Thy Neighbor. Well. We weren't in the theater ten minutes when your brother Howard was thrown out for taking the title seriously. <laughs> well, who's just the type? No more news, so we're closed with love to all from your mother, Smiley Franklin Livingston. <laughs> if he had a program so I could write her a letter. Well, let's have your song, Dennis. I'm going out and see how my writers are coming along. If they're stalling, I'm going to give them... <laughs> sure, sure, fellas. I know it's a good title for a murder mystery, but where's the play? Well, we got a lot of ideas, but we can't write them down. Why not? I gave you a pencil. Yeah, but there ain't no lead in it. <laughs> see? Oh, there ain't no lead in it. Give me that pencil. Look, fellas, you turn this little knob here, and out comes the lead. It's an automatic pencil. Oh, yeah. Look, Bill, you turn this knob, and the lead comes up. Say, that's good. Let me turn it. No, I want to turn it. Come on, just one. I turned it already. <laughs> Look, all you got to do is put the pencil on a piece of paper and push it a little. Now, please write that mystery play, will you, fellas? Okay. Boy, if I ever get my hand on that picture, I'll fire him so fast he won't know what hit him. Well, Don, it'll be a few more minutes yet. What do we do? I don't know what to talk about. Me neither. Why don't we talk about currents and events? <laughs> you mean... You mean current events. All right, Phil, let's talk about current events. What do you think of the president's new deficiency appropriation bill? Anything Wilkie does is okay with me. <laughs> he didn't get in! Wilkie, dear, what's the matter with you, anyway? Well, I got a laugh, didn't I? Hey, uh, Jackson, why don't you hire me for a writer? Because I hired you once for a band leader, got gypped, and I'm disillusioned. <laughs> <laughs> well, I guess we'll just have to uh, stall around until my boys get that play written. Gee, if this is television, you could take your teeth out and make like Popeye. It's very funny. Remember when you dropped him at the hockey game in New York and the Rangers made a goal with him? <laughs> Mary, that wasn't my tea. That was my cigarette case. Sure grins, don't it? <laughs> all right, all 
I says, no use trying to keep this up. I'm going to see if my writers have got anything. I'll take it. Hello? Hello, Mr. Benny. This is Rochester. Rochester, I can't talk to you now. But this is important, boss. It's about Mr. Billingsley, our border. Mr. Billingsley, what about him? Well, I've been telling you for months to get rid of him. He's getting crazier every day. Oh, he's just a little odd, that's all. I don't even call the wagon. <laughs> Oh, you just don't like him. What's he done now? Well, you know that mechanical man he was building? Mechanical man? Oh, you mean that robot? Yeah, remember you said it would never be practical? Uh-huh. Well, that ain't your cousin Boo-Boo walking around the kitchen. <laughs> oh, my goodness. What, what's the robot doing in the kitchen? He's making himself a sandwich. Actual grease on whole wheat. <laughs> Now, Rochester, this is no time for joking. I don't want that big mechanical thing roaming around my house. Aren't there any buttons to control it? Yeah, there's three of them. When you press the first one, he knocks you down. Uh-huh. And when you press the second one, he picks you up. I see. Well, what happens when you press the third button? He goes, Woo! <laughs> And slaps you down again. <laughs> well, for heaven's sake, watch out. That thing is dangerous. If it comes near me again, I'm going to take a sledgehammer and beat the batteries out of it. <laughs> well, there must be some way to shut it off. Now, look, Rochester, I'll be right home after the broadcast. In the meantime, don't go near the kitchen. I'm calling from San Diego. <laughs> Well, you get right back, and I'll wait up for you. <laughs> Goodbye. Goodbye. See, I, I never thought that mechanical man would work. Well, I guess I'll have to raise Mr. Billingsley's rent. He's got a roommate now. <laughs> Play something, Phil. I'm going in and beat the gags out of my writer. <laughs> now, look. Look, fellas. Look at this page. That word is murderer, not moiterer. Look. Well, a gangster would say moiterer. I'm not a gangster. I'm a police captain. Read your own script. Now, fellas, it's time for our play, so I'll take what you got and bring the rest in as soon as you can. Give me those pages. Please give me those pages. All right. Please give me those. <laughs> now, now, concentrate, will you, fellas? Fine thing. Grandma on the installment plan. Well, how does it look, Jack? Are we going to do a play tonight? Yeah, but we'll have to do it without a rehearsal. Here are your parts, kid. Now, let's see. I'm going to be Captain O'Benny of police headquarters. And, Dennis, you'll be my assistant, Sergeant O'Day. Oh, thanks. Oh, welcome. <laughs> now, Mary, you're going to be the widow, Mrs. J. Malcolm Smith. The widow? Yes. Your husband has been killed, leaving you $3 million, an estate on Long Island, and a yacht. And you're all broken up. <laughs> Why, does the yacht leave? <laughs> no, you loved your husband. Oh. Now, let's see. <laughs> Phil, Phil, you'll be the family physician. And, Don, you're going to be the bugler. Bugler? Oh, they must mean butler. <laughs> hey, you're, uh, you're the butler, Don. Well, so much for casting. And now, ladies and gentlemen, for the feature attraction this evening... The Benny, when we act, you better like, uh, act like you enjoy it, players. <laughs> we'll present, we'll present an original mystery drama entitled The Murder of Malcolm Smith, or Although He Wasn't Drafted, He Was Drilled. <laughs> Say, that's not a bad title. I think I'll get the boys a room tonight. Huh? <laughs> well, let's go, fellas. The opening scene is the office of Detective Captain O'Benny at police headquarters. Curtain. Music. Hey, Sergeant O'Day. Yes, cop? A chat. <laughs> Did you answer the burglar alarm at the First National Bank? Yes, sir. Well, were there any suspicious characters around? No, the furniture movers told me they hadn't seen anybody. Furniture movers? Yeah, two fellas with a safe. Those were the burglars. What's the matter with you, anyway? I'll take it. 
Hello, police headquarters. Hello, this is Mrs. J. Malcolm Smith talking. Yes? My husband, J. Malcolm Smith, wealth and stockbroker of New York, Palm Beach, Miami, heir to the millions left by his father, has been killed. That's talking news, Mrs. Smith. Are you sure your husband is dead? Definitely. <laughs> well, we'll be there in five minutes. Goodbye. <laughs> What's up, Chief? Wait till I hang up. <laughs> J. Malcolm Smith, the stockbroker, is the murder. What's the J for? Jazzbo. He sold neckties on the side. <laughs> Come on, let's get going. This is an important case, Sergeant O'Day. And we're going to find the murderer of J. Malcolm Smith or... Or... For what? Or nothing. We're all out of script. <laughs> hey, fellas, hurry up with the rest of this, will you? Play something, Phil. <laughs> They couldn't even finish the sentence. Hold it, Phil. There's a few more pages, Jack. Thanks. Now go back and get to work. We got a union. We're going out to eat. Not until you finish the script. Okay, blue eyes. <laughs> even my writers notice them. <laughs> now let's see. Oh, yes. This is an important case, Sergeant O'Day. And we're going to find the murder of J. Malcolm Smith, or my name ain't Captain O'Benny. Heck, I could have thought of that myself. <laughs> let's go. Open the door. This is the police. Open up or we'll break it down. Yeah, it's down. <laughs> Come on, O'Day. Let's crash it. <laughs> there goes my cigarette case. <laughs> Good evening, gentlemen. Did you ring? I'm Captain O'Benny of Police Headquarters. We're here to investigate the murder of J. Malcolm Smith. Yes, J. Quiet, dear. <laughs> Where's Mrs. Smith? She's in the library. This way, sir. Come along, O'Day. You stick with me and make notes. How do you get the lead out of this pencil? Look, you turn this little knob and I'll come to lead. <laughs> You're as bad as my two writers, Mink and Smink. <laughs> Here we are. Pardon me, are you Mrs. J. Malcolm Smith? Yes, Captain. Tell me what you know about the murder of your husband. Well, we were sitting here in the library listening to the radio, when all of a sudden I turned around and there was my husband on the floor with five bullet holes in him. You're lying. Here's the body. And he only has one, two, three. He was only shot. One, two, three, four times. Now count him. <laughs> Give me that dagger and I wish my writers would concentrate. <laughs> Five gunshots. Make a note of that, O'Day. Oh, cop, Jay. Oh, cop, Chuck. Okay, Coop. Okay, Pat. <laughs> There's nothing to it. Well, Cap, Coop, cop. <laughs> now, Mrs. Smith, I want the truth. You really hated your husband, didn't you? You hated him. No, no, I loved him. I loved him. I said you loved him. Then why did you shoot your husband? He was always saying, wrong time, no save. <laughs> Don't be flippin', Mrs. Smith. You killed your husband, and I know why. You murdered your husband because... Because... Oh, fine, we're stuck again. All right, Phil. This is embarrassing. Hold it, Phil. All right, boy, come on. Some more pages. Here you are, chum. Thanks. <laughs> oh, yes. Now listen, Mrs. Smith. You murdered your husband because there's another man in the case. Now tell me, who's your lover? Who is it? Well, what's going on here? Hello, darling. Hello, dear. Aha, uh -huh, the other man. What's your name? My card, sir. Hmm. Dr. Philo Harrison, F.C. What's the F.C. for? Physician and surgeon. <laughs> So full of corn, and I like that better. Ah, <laughs> oh, listen, Harrison, I don't think you're a doctor at all. Where did you study medicine? Medicine, medicine Wisconsin. Wisconsin. <laughs> I thought, now come clean, you. 
You're this woman's sweetheart, aren't you? Why, that's ridiculous. Preposterous. Incredible. Sanifer. Budapest. Cut that off. <laughs> you two are responsible for the murder of Jay Malcolm Smith. And you're under arrest. You can't arrest us. You can't prove we did it. Oh, yes, I can. I know your motive. You killed Mr. Smith because... Oh, nothing. <laughs> hey, fellas, we're stuck again. Here you are, Tom. <laughs> All right, let's finish this. I know your motive, Dr. Harrison. You killed Mr. Smith because you're in love with his wife. That's the truth now, isn't it? No. No, I didn't do it. I didn't kill him. Oh, yes, you did. You're guilty of murder, Harrison, murder. And you're going to hang for it. All right. I'll confess. I did it. I killed him. I killed him because I hated him. I'm very dead, you understand? Well, well. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 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 Not bad, eh? I ought to get the Academy Award for this. You'll hang first. Come on, you two. Slap the handcuffs out of cars. I didn't bring him with me. Oh, well. Never mind. It ain't believable anyhow. Play, Doctor. <laughs> we will be with you again next Sunday night at the same time. <laughs> Say, boys, but next week we can please try and have the program ready before we go on the air. Okay. Hello, Ma. Good night. <laughs> <laughs> what can I do? Good night. <laughs> The Jell-O program starring Jack Benny with Mary Livingston, Phil Harris, Dennis Day, and yours truly, Don Wilson. And now, ladies and gentlemen, I would like to announce that last Monday, a great and well-deserved honor was bestowed upon our illustrious Master of Ceremonies. Oh, Don, do you have to tell everything? For many years now, the outstanding stars of Hollywood have been selected to inscribe their footprints in the forecourt of Grauman's Chinese Theater as a tribute to their supreme artistry. Don, please, I'm so flustered. So without further ado, I bring you the latest celebrity to achieve this great distinction, Jack Benny. Thank you, thank you. Uh, Jello again, this is Jack Benny talking, and Don, your introduction was awfully sweet, but I wish you hadn't brought the subject up at... Might make people think I'm hammy. Well, Jack, it was a grand tribute, and I feel that our listeners should know about it. True, Don, but it makes me feel so darn con uncomfortable. No, I really didn't want you to mention the honor accorded me at Grauman's Chinese last Monday at 2 p.m. before a crowd estimated by the police at over 3,000. <laughs> I mean, it, it happened, it's over, now let's forget it. But, Jack, there isn't the slightest reason... Now, now, Don, there must be other things to talk about. So, uh, let's change the subject, shall we? <laughs> now, just a minute, Jack. There isn't the slightest reason why you should be embarrassed over this wonderful compliment. Well, maybe so, Don, but... Mr. Still... Grauman must have thought a lot of you to suggest adding your footprints to such a distinguished group. I know, Why, but... Jack, a great artist like you should realize... Hello, Mr. Benny. Hello, hello. Uh, what's that, Don? <laughs> uh, a great artist like me should what? How are you, Mr. Wilson? He's fine, he's fine. Sit down. <laughs> I, 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 I should realize what, Don? You should realize that, uh, oh, darn it, I forgot what I was going to say. But you had it on the tip of your tongue. Concentrate. I, I, I should realize what? Now, so, let's see. Uh, Hiya, Jackson. Are you on the beam tonight? Uh, quiet, Phil. Don is trying to think of something. Uh, I, I should realize what, Don? Oh, it slipped my mind, Jackson. We might just as well forget it. Well, that's a fine how do you do. <laughs> Don, we were talking about me putting my footprints in the cement in front of Grauman's Chinese Theater. Oh, yeah, I read about that. You know, Jackson, this was a big week for the both of us. And what do you mean? Well, at night school, I received a great tribute. I got a gold star for spelling. Oh. Congratulations, Phil, that's terrific. Thank you. That's Thank well, you, Mr. Harris, congratulations. Thanks. Mm. I think that gold star was footprints. <laughs> so you're an honor student, eh, Phil? Yeah, I was the only guy in the class that could spell Mississippi. Well, that's a toughie. Let's hear you spell it now. Okay. Hold my coat, Dennis. <laughs> spell it with your coat on. Go ahead. Mississippi. M-I-S-S-I-S-S-I-P-P-I. -S 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 -I. Oh, very good. Now spell river. 
R I V V E R. I knew it, I knew it. Uh, Phil, uh, you can now take that gold star and paste it back on a Hennessy bottle. <laughs> no kidding, you ought to quit. Oh, hello, Mary. Hello, Jack. What are you talking about? Oh, nothing in particular. We're just fooling around. What's the matter? Didn't your writers prepare anything this week either? You mean mink and schmink? <laughs> now, they said they needed a vacation, so they uh, went to Catalina Island to write the program. Did they send you any material? No, but this morning I got a wire from them that said, uh, have just pinned script on Seagull. Watch for it. <laughs> Those guys are always going someplace. Remember the time you sent them out for a hot tamale and they went to Mexico City? <laughs> Do I? A tamale cost me $800 and it was ice cold when I got it. <laughs> oh, well, we'll manage. We did last week. Say, Dennis. Yes, please? Hmm. Uh, how, how about a song? Okay. Say, Miss Livingston, did you hear about Mr. Benny at Grauman's Chinese Theater? Hear about it? I was there. All right, Dennis, let's have your song. Talk about laughs. Who's talking about laughs? Sing, Dennis. What uh, happened, Mary? Well. <laughs> 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 well, Jack oh. and I went to a matinee at the Chinese last Monday, and they were fixing the sidewalk there. All right, they were fixing the sidewalk. And Mr. Grumman happened to be standing at the box office. Yeah. So Jack went up to him and said, Mr. Grumman, as long as you've got all this wet cement here, how about paying a tribute to my supreme artistry? Now, wait a minute. So Mr. Grauman said, what do you mean? And Jack said, you know, make with a footprint. <laughs> he said that to me. Go ahead and sing, Dennis. Wait, wait a minute now, Jackson. We want to hear this. Oh. Yeah, what happened, Barry? <laughs> well. So without waiting for an answer, Jack jumped into the wet cement and disappeared. <laughs> Disappeared? Yeah, they were filling in a manhole. <laughs> well, it's still a wonderful tribute, and I'm proud of it. Now, let's have your song, Dennis. Okay. Say, what's that in your ear, Mr. Benny? Cement. Now, go ahead and sing. <laughs> Mr. Grauman pays a little tribute to my supreme artistry, and everybody's jealous. <laughs> that was I Hear a Rhapsody, sung by Dennis Day. And now, ladies and gentlemen, for our feature attraction tonight, the Benny Hungry Hollywood Harlequins will present their version of that... Hey, very... wait a minute, Jackson. I thought you said your writers didn't work this week. Uh, that seagull came in while Dennis was singing. <laughs> uh, the Benny Harlequins will present their version of that sensational Warner Brothers picture. That masterpiece of human emotion. That gripping melodrama of the sidewalks of New York City for Conquest. Uh, thank you, Warner Brothers. Now, um, now in this, in this epic, and nice of them to come all the way from Burbank. Now, in this epic, I will play the part as portrayed by James Cagney on the screen. That of a rough and tough kid who fights his way through the slums and grows up to be a prize fighter. And Mary... Why, Jack, how can you play that part? You're not the Jimmy Cagney type. I'll handle it. Now, Mary... Imagine you playing a prize fighter. That's just silly. Oh, I'll do all right. Now, Mary... But, Jackson, you ain't tough enough to be Jimmy Cagney. It ain't believable. <laughs> well, I'll try it anyway. And now, Mary... Mr. Harris is right. You're not tough enough. Oh, yeah? Put him up, Dave. <laughs> Put up your joke. I'll show you who's not tough enough. Oh, Jack, calm down. Why pick on Dennis? Well, you know how excitable I am. <laughs> I guess I lost my head. Sorry, kid. Can I put my dukes down now? <laughs> yeah. Now, uh... <clears throat> now, my name will be Danny... And, Mary, you're going to be my girlfriend, Peggy. You know, the part Anne Sheridan played. And you're madly in love with me. Why can't I play Carol Lombard's part? She wasn't in the picture. That's what I mean. <laughs> Mary, you're either going to be madly in love with me or infatuated with the May Company. 
<laughs> now, Phil. <laughs> Phil. Uh, you're going to be Eddie, my kid brother. A frail, artistic sort of fellow whose only interests are his books and his great love of music. Yeah? Yeah, you're high-strung and delicate, Phil. And your forehead suggests deep intellect. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> You grow up to be a great composer and finally conduct your own symphony at Carnegie Hall. At last, the part that fits me. <laughs> Phil, it's just that we're stuck. Uh, that part fits you like a mail-order suit made by a nearsighted tailor for a couple of other fellas. <laughs> uh, now, Don. Yes, Jack? Uh, you have one of the most important parts in our play. You are the narrator, and you symbolize the spirit. Of a great metropolis. In fact, Don, you are New York. He ought to take a little weight off his bronx. <laughs> you said it. Now, this play, ladies and gentlemen, will go on immediately after a number by Phil Harris and his orchestra. Now, Phil, how about playing... I'll take it. Hello? Hello, Mr. Billy. This is Rochester. Well, I'm sorry, Rochester. I'm busy. You want to be busy on that? I'm quitting. <laughs> quitting? What's the trouble now? It's about that mechanical man Mr. Billingsley made. You mean the robot? Yeah, he's breaking up everything in the house. You know that big grandfather's clock we got in the hall that runs so good? Yes. Well, Tempest has fused it for the last time. <laughs> Oh, my goodness, that, that clock was very expensive. I tried to stop him, but he whammed me right on top of the head. On top of the head? Why, that robot is made of iron. Did he hurt you? I won't need collars no more. <laughs> well, look, Rochester, I told you before, there are buttons on that robot to control him. All you have to do is sneak up behind him and press the button. That's how I got my neck shortened. <laughs> Now, Rochester... Just call me Turtle. <laughs> now, Rochester, I don't want that mechanical man roaming around the house. Where is he now? He's in the kitchen. I think he's that way about the electric refrigerator. <laughs> now, now, that's just silly. A robot has no emotions or feelings. He hasn't even got a personality. He has now. He's wearing your toupee. <laughs> well, take it off of him. Now, Rochester, this is no time for joking. I'll be home right after the program. Meanwhile, tell Mr. Billingsley to keep that robot in his own room. Okay. What was that? My neck just came out. So long, bro. <laughs> so long. Play, Phil. I wish Mr. Billingsley would take a trip somewhere on his magic carpet. That was You Walk By, played by Phil Harris and his Sunset and Vine Orchestra. <laughs> Sunset meaning they are playing right here on Sunset Boulevard, and Vine meaning they are just clinging to their job. <laughs> and now, ladies and gentlemen, for our sensational melodrama, City for Conquest, Curtain, Music. <laughs> Our scene, ladies and gentlemen, is New York. New York, the greatest metropolis in the world. Millions of people gasping for life and air. Fighting, biting, clawing away for a place in the sun. New York! Gee, that's wonderful. And now, we take you to the east side. The attic room shared by Danny, the truck driver, and his brother, Eddie, the young musical genius. As the scene opens, Eddie, with an inspired look on his delicate face, is seated at his drum. Composing his Symphony of New York. Listen. <laughs> no. No, I still haven't got it. I don't feel that ending, but I can't give up. I must finish my symphony. Ah, I have a thought. That's it! Now I've got it! Oh, that's it! 
That's the voice of New York. Hello, Eddie. How's me kid brother? Oh, hello, Danny. Why aren't you working this afternoon? Ah, uh, me boss started an argument, so I slugged him. And a couple of cops came along, and I slugged them, too. I slug everybody. Oh, Danny, you're always fighting. Will you ever pick up good manners by yourself, or do I have to learn you? <laughs> hmm. It ain't no use, brother. I'm just naturally tough. How's your symphony coming along? Oh, I fear the masses will never like it. It's much too highbrow. Let me hear what you've done so far, will you, brother? Very well. I call my composition Manhattan, uh, Al, um, uh, Al, um... Allegory. Manhattan Allegory. <laughs> Let's hear it, brother. All right. I'll start with the part you like, Danny. The part I call East River. With all its proud and passionate beauty. With all its shrieking jungle cries for life and sun. Gee. And I carry on the theme until I've told the complete story of New York. With its wealth and power and everlasting loveliness. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Let's... Let's hear it, brother. Oh, that's beautiful. Beautiful. I can see it all. The Empire State Building. The tenements downtown with the laundry hanging out the window. Oh, boy. And there's Central Park in the moonlight. It's winter and the snow is falling. And that's the winter got again. Holy smoke. Olsen and Johnson are still there. Oh, Eddie, it's wonderful. It's wonderful. <laughs> Eddie. Eddie, you're a genius. But what's... What's that cowbell for? Well, that symbolizes the burning of New York. You know, when Mrs. O'Leary's cow kicked over the lantern. <laughs> that was Chicago. Oh, brother. <laughs> That's got nothing to do with New York. Okay, I'll take it out. <laughs> but otherwise, it's beautiful. I can listen to that forever. Oh, hello, Peggy. Hello, Danny. Get that girl out of here. A composer has no time for women. Hmm. Well, Eddie, at least you can say hello to me, sweetheart. Hello, Eddie. Hello, babe. What you doing later? Eddie! <laughs> hello is enough. Gee, you look pretty tonight, Peggy. Is that a new scoit? Yeah, this is a new scoit. Is that a new shoit? Yeah. <laughs> it's a new shoit. How do you like my shoit? Too toy to around Detroit. <laughs> well, so much for dat. Say, Eddie, how's your symphony coming along? Gee, Peggy, you ought to hear it. Gee, it's beautiful. Beautiful, yes. But who's ever going to hear it? Where will I get the money to complete my masterpiece? Oh, he's so high strung. <laughs> I might as well tear it up. I'll never achieve my ambition. Never, never, never. <laughs> Poor kid, he's so sensitive. Also unbelievable. Yeah. But don't cry, brother. I'll get you the money. I know what I'll do. I'll be a prize fighter. There's a lot of dough in that. A prize fighter? Oh, don't do that, Danny. No, no, Danny, you mustn't. You'll get your nose broken. With all this cement in it? <laughs> don't be silly. Your music belongs to the world, Eddie. To the world. And I'm gonna see that they get it. <laughs> Months pass, and Danny the truck driver becomes Kid Samson, the sensational newcomer to the ring. After an amazing series of knockouts, he is now the leading contender for the championship of the world. We now find Kid Samson in the gymnasium, training for the big fight. One, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. How am I doing, Eddie? Oh, Danny, I wish you wouldn't fight. I'm doing it for you, brother. Hey, Lefty, you think I'm in good shape now? Yeah, but now listen, kid. This guy you fight tomorrow night is plenty tough. And you gotta know how to handle him. Don't worry, I'll moiter him. Now, don't be too sure of yourself, kid. The champ's got a habit of being with a side portrait, and he's liable to hit you with a side of reason separate, but... <laughs> oh, yeah. I'll remember that. And when you duck, he comes back with a little side of Watch out for that cast of sulfur. You know, he's liable to fight you with a side of to segregate to the kidneys. <laughs> I'll watch out for that. I'll get in close. Now, look, you can't be too careful. 
I remember in Chicago, he was fighting a guy in the center of Fawcett. Yeah? One, two, three to face. He stood back with a cat. Travis in him? Get him in the center of Fawcett, started really. He pulled him in state, the reach. I've seen him. <laughs> okay. Maybe you're right. Give me a rub down, Lefty. I don't know where that bottle of alcohol is. You don't? It was here yesterday. Where is it? I broke it. I can't stand alcohol. <laughs> oh, for Pete's sake. <laughs> Hey, what's that sticking out of your hip pocket? That's for after the play. <laughs> Give me that. Here, Lefty, rub me down. Now, look, wait you take a shower. There's no use celebrating brushes, is there? <laughs> no, I'll do it later. Well, look who's here. Hello, Peggy. Hello, Samson. That's Kid Samson. With gray hair? <laughs> that don't make no difference. I'm as hard as nails. Get a load of this chest and feel these muscles. Where? Right there on the arm. Look at that bulge. That's a muscle. Where? I don't see it. Right up. Now you're scared of it. It's gone. <laughs> well, I gotta leave you now, Peggy. I'm gonna get me rubbed out. Gee, Danny, you ought to get some new trunks. What's wrong with these I'm wearing? They're so long I can hardly see your garters. <laughs> They're all right. Say, Danny, who are you fighting tomorrow night? The champ. And he's one of the toughest mugs in the ring. What's his name? Dennis Killer Day. That guy's dynamite. Oh, Danny. I know you're doing this all for me, but I can't let you go through with it. Give it up, Danny. Please. Please. Oh, stop crying. Stop, will you? I want my rubbing alcohol. All right, here. Come on, Lefty, let's go. Pull up your trunks, kid. I want to tie your shoe. <laughs> oh, yeah. They are a little droopy. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is Clem McNulty coming to you from the ringside of Madison Square Garden. We're about to witness the championship fight between Killer Day, holder of the title, and Kid Sampson, the contender. The killer is already in his corner. And here comes Kid Sampson, nervously pulling his trunks up. Whoops! He stumbles. He's up again. Darn these trunks, they are too long. Get me suspenders, Lefty. Now, before the fight begins, we'll have a word from each of the contestants. First, Kid Sampson, the challenger. I'll moiter him. And now, the champion, Killer Day. I'll get killed. <laughs> Come on, let's get going. The referee has just given the boys their final instructions. They're standing in their own corners, nervously awaiting the bell. And there it is. The boys meet in the center of the ring, and Killer Day leads with a right to the jaw. Ooh. I'm sorry, Mr. Benny. Watch it, will you? I got me glasses on. Wait till I take them off. Kid Sampson removes his glasses. Ooh. And counters with a left to the referee. He can't see a thing without him. Oh, yeah? Where's that killer? I'll moiter him. Kid Sampson is staggering around, and Killer Day is moving in for a knockout blow. Ooh. The killer throws another one. Ooh. And another one. Ooh. And another one. Ooh. Ooh. Kid Sampson is down, and it looks like a knockout. Let me at that guy. I'll slug him. I'll moiter him. It's too late. You're in your dressing room. Oh, yeah. Darn that, Dennis. He hit me right in my big blue eye. Ooh. I'm sorry, Mr. Benny. Sorry nothing. Now, listen here, Dennis. You know very well this was a play and that I was supposed to knock you out. Well, I'm Irish. I don't care what you are. Hey, what about my symphony? The heck with your symphony. Dennis, say, I'm not going to forget this. There's no excuse. You saw the picture. Jimmy Cagney's supposed to knock out the champion. That's the only way he can get the money to help his brother. And what happened? The minute my back is turned, you hit me right square in the eye. Now, this is the last time I... Then we'll be with you again next Sunday night at the same time. Ooh, how does my eye look, Mary? Let's go to Ciro's and get a steak for it. Okay, I'll take it out of Dennis's salary. Good night, folks. The Jell-O Program, starring Jack Benny, with Mary Livingston, Phil Harris, Dennis Day, and yours truly, Don Wilson. And now, ladies and gentlemen, I would like to announce that Jack Benny is at home this evening, where he is packing for a sudden and unexpected trip to New York City. Mary Livingston is with him. So without further ado, we take you to Jack's home in Beverly Hills. Take it away. Now, let's see. One, two... Three. Uh, what else do you want me to do, Jack? Uh, just a minute, Mary. 
Three, four, five, six. Mary, do you think I ought to take six of these to New York? Oh, take them all. No, these will be enough. I'll take six. Take the whole box. How much does Kleenex cost? <laughs> That's not the point. I'll just take six. If I had a cold, it would be different. Now, let's see. Uh... Say, Jack, what are you going to New York for anyway? I told you I'm going there on business for a couple of days. I'm considering a part in a Broadway play. Are you kidding? No, I'm not kidding. I've had my fling in pictures, and I'm going to tackle the legitimate theater. In fact, I'm toying with Shakespeare. Why don't you get a yo-yo and leave him alone? <laughs> now, Mary, I'm serious. One of these days, you'll see a big electric sign on Broadway, Hamlet, starring John Benny. John Benny? Who's that? Me. I'm going to change my name. Well, here we go again. <laughs> I know what I'm doing. You can jest, Mary. With a little experience, I may become one of the leading interpreters... Interpretators? <laughs> What's that? <laughs> If I don't get away from Phil Harris, I'll go nuts. <laughs> Mary, with a little experience, I may become one of the leading interpreters of the immortal bard. Now, let's finish this packing. Okay. <laughs> hey, Romeo, uh, Romeo, art thou taking this hot water baggie? <laughs> Certainly, it's cold in New York. I want that hot water bag, my heavy muffler, those galoshes, my mittens, and that brick. What are you taking a brick for? I'm going to heat it and put it in my bed. <laughs> now, let's see. What else? Hello, Miss Livingston. Hello, Rochester. Oh, Rochester, my plane leaves in a couple of hours. Did you alter my tuxedo like I told you to? Yes, sir. Here it is. Alter your tuxedo? Yeah, I told Rochester to take the satin cuffs off the sleeves. They're all right, but they're a little dated. That belt in the black ain't exactly cafe society. <laughs> Well, no, but I may buy a new one in New York. Here, pack my tuxedo, Mary. Okay. Say, Jack, what's this deep pocket for in the back? Where? Right here on the inside. Oh, that. Uh, I did a magic act for a while in vaudeville, and that's where I kept my rabbit. That was a pigeon, boss. It was a rabbit. Uh-oh, it was a pigeon. Rochester, I ought to know. I'm telling you, I kept a rabbit in that pocket. Okay, it was a rabbit. You're darn right. And that egg I found was a mothball with a yolk in it. <laughs> An egg? Oh, 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 now I remember. That was a pigeon, and I used it in my violin act. Oh, boy, was that corny. No, Mary, it was one of the most beautiful things I ever did. Gee, I remember that act of mine. I used to come out on the stage in an amber spotlight and play the glow worm. The glow worm? Yes, and near the finish of my number, Natalie would... That was the pigeon, Natalie. <laughs> Natalie would come out and fly around the whole auditorium. And just as I'd hit the last high note, she would swoop down, light on the end of my violin bow, and stand there with a neon worm in her mouth. <laughs> oh, the... Really, the effect was simply wonderful. And then for an encore, the pigeon would sit up on my head and coo while I played Waters of the Minnetonka. <laughs> Oh, that, that pigeon was so cute sitting there. Uh, remember the night she got knocked off with a tomato? <laughs> you never even saw the act. It was sensational. Whatever become of that pigeon, boss? Oh, we split up. <laughs> and, you know, Natalie isn't doing so well. I saw her in a pot pie at the Brown Derby the other night. <laughs> uh, gee, Mary, we better... Um... She was still tender, though. Mary, we better hurry with this packing or I'll miss my plane. Uh, do you want this string? That's a tie packet. Oh, Rochester, I want you to take care of our boarder, Mr. Billingsley, while I'm away. You know, see that he gets his meals on time and everything. I don't want to be alone with that man. I tell you, boss, he's cuckoo. Oh, you're always saying that. What's he done now? Well, last night he put on a fur coat and told me he was a beaver. A beaver? Oh, he was probably just going to a masquerade party. Well, he came back later and built a dam across the swimming pool. What? You mean to say he built a dam clear across my swimming pool? Yeah. 
Well, why didn't you go out and catch him? I tried to, and he told me he was out of season. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Well, he better clean out that pool while I'm gone. Say, Jack, what? where's that mechanical man Mr. Billingsley invented? Oh, he's around somewhere. Rochester's scared to death of that robot. I'm scared of anything that nicks my razor when I hit it. <laughs> Well, don't tease them. Say, Mary, uh, pack, uh, pack a couple of those, uh, uh, see who's at the door, Rochester. The door? Yes. Maybe it's a salesman selling something we got enough of. Well, go and see. Let's find out. Okay. Never saw such a lazy guy. Mary, pack a couple of turtleneck sweaters. I'll need them in. Sweater over those ears. I pull them up from the bottom like a girdle. <laughs> How do I get them over my ears? Let's see. I hope I didn't forget anything. It's Mr. Harris, boss. Hello, Phil. Hiya, Mary. Hey, Jackson, here's that suitcase you wanted. Thanks, Phil. It's nice of you to lend it to me. Boy, get a load of those labels on it. Yeah, I had it with me last summer when I was on the road playing them one-night stands. Oh. <laughs> hey, Jack, look uh, at this label here. Rich Carlton Hotel, Empty Jug, Texas. <laughs> empty Jug? That's us. Kill them and fill them. I never heard of the town Where is Empty Jug, Phil? It's about 50 miles this side of Bottoms Up Oh, fine All those jerk water towns Phil, why don't you get booked into cities like Fort Worth or Galveston or San Antonio or Dallas? Leave me alone, Jackson I know my market I'm glad you do At least you're not kidding yourself, Phil I'll give you credit for that Yeah, credit Oh, Dennis, I didn't see you come in well, I finished mowing your lawn, Mr. Benny. Is there anything else? No, that's about all. What do I owe you, Dennis? Well, two hours at 50 cents an hour. That's 75 cents. Oh, what a kid. Dennis, you're cheating yourself. 50 cents an hour for two hours is a dollar. It wasn't last week. <laughs> Dennis, that's about all. Okay. You mind if I go in the other room and practice my song? No, no, go right ahead. Go in the living room, Dennis. There's a piano there. Thanks. Okay, well, Mary, my suitcase is about full. We'll start on Phil's now. Open it up. Okay. Be surprised how many things you have to take with you. Hey, Phil, what's all this stuff in here? Oh, those are the posters we put up when we're on the road. Let's see one of them. Well, I'll be darned. Coming next week to the Trianon livery stable, <laughs> Phil Harris and his barefoot serenaders. Phil, don't your boys wear shoes when they're on the road? Ah, uh, we don't want to make our audience feel self-conscious. Oh, I see. Now, Mary, take these posters out of Phil's bag and put my wool socks in it. Oh, Jack, you're taking too much stuff with you. No, I'm not. Now, Mary... Fold these things neatly, will you? I'll need all the space I can get. Okay. And, Phil, hand me my dressing robe. Here you are, Jackson. Thanks. I know you're taking chances in New York, you know. It's pretty cold there. Well, I guess that's all the shoes I'll need. Say, Mary, do you think I ought to take a pair of rubbers to New York with me? I already packed your galoshes. Well, they're for snow. I want the rubbers in case the snow turns to rain, you know? Well, why don't you take some skates in case the rain turns to ice? Skates? Say, that's not a bad idea. Uh, pack them, too. Uh, why don't you take a spoon in case the ice turns to ice cream? Oh, quiet. <laughs> You're so smart lately. <laughs> now, let's see. I'll be going out nights in New York, so I'll need a... Uh, oh, Rochester. Yes, boss? A run next door to Mr. Ronald Coleman's house and ask him if I can borrow his opera hat. It's hanging in your closet now. <laughs> Oh, yes, I borrowed it for my cousin Rita's wedding. She's had twins twice since then. <laughs> oh, it hasn't been that long. Oh, I know what I need. Now go over and ask Mr. Coleman to lend me his black evening cape. That'll come in handy with my full dress suit. You mean his full dress suit? All right, go borrow it. How do you know he's got an evening cape? I've seen him wear it in three pictures. Go get it, Rochester. I wouldn't buy anything else for Mr. Coleman, boss. I don't think he likes you for a neighbor. Ronnie, what are you talking about? We're very good friends. Did you see that sign he put up in front of his yard? What sign? House for sale as soon as I get my clothes back. <laughs> oh, well, there's a smart-alecky thing to do. 
Who does he think he is, anyway? He must be pretty sore to you, Jackson. Who cares? Why should I worry about Coleman? He never listens to my program anyway. How can he? We've had his radio for two years. <laughs> well, it's going back first thing in the morning. Needs new tubes anyway. <laughs> now, let's see. Mary, stop jumping up and down on those shirts to get them in the suitcase. You're not making wine. Huh? <laughs> say. Well, you've got too much stuff in here. Not if you pack them right. Be neat. That's how you got fired at the May Company. <laughs> we ought to get something from them pretty soon, don't you think? <laughs> you know, I don't, even if it's just a little handkerchief, you know, I... Well, I've got... Well, I guess... <laughs> Well, I guess I've got everything now. Yeah, I think... Oh. Oh, hello, Mr. Billingsley. Good evening, Mr. Benny. Getting ready for a trip, I see. Yes, yes, I'll be away for a few days. I'm flying to New York. Flying, eh? Would you like to borrow my magic carpet? No, no, thanks. I'll, I'll take the plane. <laughs> After all, New, uh, New York is pretty far to go on a magic carpet. I'll be glad to put a hostess on it. <laughs> No, no, thanks, just the same. I'll just be an old stick in the mud and take the plane. <laughs> I hope you'll be comfortable while I'm gone. Oh, don't worry. Mr. McDougal will keep me company. Mr. McDougal? That's the robot. Oh, 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 oh. By the way, how is Mr. McDougal? Oh, he's been in a frightful mood all day. I think I'll have his oil changed. <laughs> his oil changed, eh? Would that help? Always helps me. <laughs> Oh, 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 well, well, hmm, hmm, if you'll, uh, if you'll, uh, if you'll excuse me, Mr. Billingsley, I'll go on with my packing. Of course. Good night, Mr. Benny. Good night. One never knows. <laughs> you know, that guy is a little eccentric, but I, I can't help liking him. Does he always carry a bunch of bananas over his shoulder? No, this is the first time. Well, I might as well finish my packing. Now, let's see. What else do I have to do? There's the buzzer. I wonder if I took along enough handkerchiefs. Oh, sure. You got plenty. Yeah, I guess so. Hmm. Oh, Rochester! Yes, boss! There's someone ringing the doorbell. Maybe you'll go away! Anybody, I never saw anybody so allergic to doors. Well, Mary, I guess I've got just about everything I need. Huh? Yeah. Hey, wait a minute. You want to take your step-ins, don't you? Mary, men refer to them as shorts. With lace on them? <laughs> That's not lace. They're just frayed a little. I'll buy new ones in New York. Why don't you buy us some from Ronald Coleman? We're not speaking. Not until he removes that sign from his front yard. Announcing Mr. Don Wilson. You don't have to be so formal, Rochester. Hello, Don. Hi, Don. Hello, oh, hello everybody. Hello. Well, Jack, here's those ice cream puffs or those uh, cream puffs that you asked me to bring over. <laughs> Don, I know you haven't got much to do this week, but don't pad your car. <laughs> One word isn't going to help it any. <laughs> What was it you said, Don? What? I said, here are those cream puffs that you asked me to bring over. Cream? What are these for? Well, you phoned me this morning and asked me to bring over some cream puffs. I asked you for earmuffs. It's cold in New York. <laughs> the silliest thing I ever heard of. Oh, I'm sorry, Jack. I'm sorry I stumbled and misunderstood you. That's all right. Mary, put these cream puffs in my suitcase. I'll eat them on the plane. Thanks, Don. Oh, you're welcome. Oh, Rochester, get the car out of the garage. We'll be leaving for the airport pretty soon. Yes, sir. Phil, help me close the suitcase, will you? Okay, Jackson. 
She was darn nice of you to loan it to me. Ah, oh, don't mention it. A friend in need is a friend indeed, like my teacher says. Oh, so you're studying Proverbs in night school now, eh, Phil? Yeah, here's another one. Early to bed and early to rise... Won't help those bags under your eyes. <laughs> he has to have Proverbs. I got a swell one, Jack. What? A penny saved is a penny earned. Say, that's good. I ought to remember that. Remember it? You wrote it. <laughs> Mary, believe me, I never heard of that proverb before in my life. By the way, Jack, uh, what time does your plane leave? In about... Say, look what time it is. We better get a move on here. Come on, Phil, help me close this suitcase. You got too much stuff in there, Jackson. Well, look, I'll sit on it, and you snap the lock. Okay. There. Now, snap the lock, Phil. Careful now. I'll be all right. Snap it. Okay. Yay! Open it! Open it! Open the lock! Open it! Woo! 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 you're doing. I told you to be careful. Well, you didn't have to. Now, how are we going to, how are we going to close this suitcase? I'll sit on it, Jack. Okay, Don. Now, hurry, we got to get going. Now, Mary. (laughs) Well, there goes the cream puffs. (laughs) Bill, tie a rope around the suitcase and let's go. The car's waiting, boss. We'll be right out. Where's Dennis? He's in the other room. Hey, Dennis, you want to drive to the airport with us? I live out that way. I'll ride my bicycle. All right. <laughs> we're coming. We're coming. Everything has to happen to me when I'm in a hurry. See, nice of you guys to come down and see me off. Are you comfortable back there, kid? I'm okay, Jack. I was seasick for a while, but I'm all right now. Well, we'll be there pretty soon. We're making pretty good time. What are you talking about? We should have been at the airport half an hour ago. Well, don't forget, Mary, we had a few hills on the way. When we come to the next one, I'm not going to get out and walk for anybody. You'll get out the same as everybody else. (laughs) Rochester, can't we go just a little bit faster? What does the speedometer say? Take your choice. There's no needle on it. (laughs) Don't step on it. I've got to get my ticket, check my bags and everything. Gee, it's a beautiful night, though. What are you blowing the horn for, Rochester? I want to pass that catalog. Cadillac. I must be crazy. (laughs) Rochester, if you can't pass a catalog with this car, I'm really going to get rid of it. (laughs) And just drive. Say, Jack, are you going to see Fred Allen while you're in New York? Well, I certainly won't go to his house, and I doubt that I'll run into him on the street. Oh. You see, Alan never goes outdoors in the wintertime uh, due to thin blood and shoes. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty good, Jackson. You ought to use that on the program sometime. No, I'm not kidding, Phil. The soles on Alan's shoes are worn so thin that he can stand on a lawn and feel the grass growing. <laughs> Make a note of that, Mary. I can use that gag. Write it yourself. How can I write? i got to wave this lantern. Do you want somebody to bump into us? <laughs> anyway, don't bother. I'll remember the gag. Hey, look, Jack. There's Dennis on his bicycle. Oh, yeah. Hello, Dennis! Hiya, Mr. Buddy! Hiya! Pass him, Rochester. Aren't your legs tired from all that pedaling, Dennis? No, nah, this is fun. That's good. Pass him, Rochester. <laughs> you want to hitch on back, Dennis? We'll give you a lift. No, thanks. This is good exercise. Ah, it's good exercise, all right. Pass him, Rochester. <laughs> Pass him. Embarrassing, ain't it? <laughs> well, step on it or something. So long, Mr. Benny. I'll wait for you at the airport. You come back here. <laughs> all right, go on, those reckless kids. Let them go. Oh, Jack. Don't you dare open your mouth. And listen, fellas, I don't want any of you breathe a word of this. I won't, Jackson. Don't worry about me. We still have a lot of time, so let's relax and enjoy the ride. We're going along fine now. Attention, folks, we're going down a hill. Please fasten your safety belts. <laughs> okay, buckle them on, everybody. You too, Harris. I don't want any lawsuits. Here we go. Whee! Boy, we're traveling now. See you at the airport, Dennis. I knew we'd pass him. Well, 
Flight number nine, plane leaving for Phoenix, Fort Worth, Nashville, Washington, and New York. Phil, did you have my baggage, Wade? The guy's doing it now, Jackson. Good. Here's your ticket, Jack. Thanks, Mary. By the way, Jack, I brought you something to read on the plane. Uh, thanks, Don, thanks. Uh, how much does my baggage weigh, mister? Well, you're allowed 40 pounds on your ticket, and your bags weigh 90. That's Rochester. Take them out of the plane. Okay, boss. 50 pounds excess. That'll cost you a fortune. Cost me... Hold those bags, Rochester. How much is the excess, mister? 50 pounds at 75 cents a pound. That's, uh... That's, uh... 37.50. Open the bags, Rochester. Open the bags. Come on, take off that heavy overcoat. Jack, it's cold in New York. I'm no sissy. Take it out. Take it out. Take it out. Come on. Take it out. Go ahead. But, Jack, your plane is leaving in a second. Well, it'll wait. It'll wait. Take out those sweaters, Rochester. Oh, wait a minute, Jack. You'll need those. Take them out. Take them out. I don't, take out that dress suit. I don't have to be so formal. Well, what about those galoshes? Take one of them out. He can hop through the snow. <laughs> Take them both out. Take them out. Take them out. Now, look, Rochester, I want you to take all this stuff and put it back in the car. Okay. What about these woolen mufflers? Take them out. Take them out. I'm not going to Alaska. And when you get home, Rochester, press everything and put them back in my dresser. How about these mittens? Take them out. I'm not going to the North Pole. Take them out. Take... Now, Rochester, be sure and take care of everything. I'll be back in a few days. I'll wire you first, and you can meet me here at the airport. Take those off, too, Mary. Take them out. Take them out. In the meantime, Rochester, keep an eye on Mr. Billingsley, and don't let that robot go roaming all around the house. Well, goodbye. Goodbye, everybody. Take those sweaters out, Mary. Take them out. Take them out. And we'll be with you again next Sunday night at the same time. Good night, folks. The Jell-O Program, starring Jack Benny, with Mary Livingston, Phil Harris, Dennis Day, and yours truly, Don Wilson. And now, ladies and gentlemen, I would like to announce that Jack Benny has not yet returned from his trip to New York City. However, he will be back with us next Sunday, and in the meantime... No kidding, Don. Ain't Jackson going to be on the show tonight? No, Phil. He wired me saying he's been delayed in New York. A big business deal holding him up. A big business deal? Yes. He's probably sitting in a restaurant waiting for the other guy to pick up the check. <laughs> I know Jack. No, I'm serious, Mary. He won't be back until tomorrow. Well, what am I waiting for? Hello again. This is smiling Phil Harris talking. And folks, here's the hot one. <laughs> you know, folks, a funny thing happened. A manicurist says to a guy in a barber shop, Shall I file your nails? And he says, No, honey, just throw them away. Ha, 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 a Lulu? Now, just a minute, Phil, just a minute. I'm sorry, but you can't be the master of ceremonies tonight. Jack has arranged to have Herbert Marshall take over the show. You mean Herbert Marshall, that big movie star? Yep, sir. Gee, Herbert Marshall. I wish I'd known about this before. My hair's a mess. Mine, too. (laughs) (laughs) I wonder if we'll have time to go to the beauty parlor. (laughs) Say, Don, what time is Mr. Marshall getting here? Well, Rochester went over to pick him up. He should be here any minute. You know, I'm pretty anxious to get acquainted with that guy. I never met him. Um, well, don't say ain't never in front of him. You'll scare him away. Don't worry now. I can be highbrow. When I put on the dog, you think I was graduated from Oxenard. <laughs> Oxenard? You mean Oxford. All right. I got my pounds mixed up. But you don't have to worry about, fellas. I can be just as rich as he is. Now, you don't have to be rich, Phil. I've known Bart Marshall for years, and he's a grand person. Oh, Phyllis. Oh, hello, Dennis. Oh, boy, guess who I just saw out in the hall? Who? The big movie star, Hubert Marshall. Oh. <laughs> Hubert, you mean Herbert Marshall. You're bad as hell. Oh. Well, Dennis, why didn't you bring him here with you? Miss Marshall's taking Jack's place on the program tonight. Gosh, if I'd have known that, I'd have faked the puppet. <laughs> hey, Don. Don't you think you want to go out and get Marshall? Yeah, don't lose him. Well, maybe that's him now. Come in. Uh, pardon me, is this the Jello program? Well, fine, come right on in. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Herbert Marshall. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. I'm awfully sorry I'm late, Don, but Jack sent his man over in a mess to pick me up. Yes, we, uh, we had some tire trouble. Oh, there's one of the tires blow out. One would have been nothing. <laughs> it sounded like a gangster movie. 
I know, Bart. I've lived in that car. Oh, uh, pardon me. I don't believe you know the other members of our cast. This is Mary Livingston, our leading lady. Hello, Mr. Marshall. How do you do, Miss Livingston? I heard you on the air so often I feel we're old friends. Please. <laughs> so, uh, let's not be formal. I'll call you Mary and you call me Bart. Please. You know, I'm not used to this sort of work. I hope I made good tonight. You made good with me already. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> and Bart, this is Dennis Day, our young tenor. Oh, hello, Dennis. Hello, Mr. Marshall, if I'm not too excited. <laughs> <laughs> calm down, Dennis, calm down. Hey, John, how about giving me a knockdown? Oh, yes. Bart, this is Phil Harris, our musical director. Yeah, I don't know you, Mr. Harris. Put it there, Herbie. What's cooking? <laughs> What, uh, what's cooking? Yeah, you know, are you driving? Are you solid? Are you on the beam? Solid on the beam. You mean, how are you? Oh, 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 I'm fine, thank you. You're a weird fellow, isn't he? <laughs> well, Bart, you, you'll just have to get used to Phil. Musicians are like that. Oh, are they? Well, I'm sure we'll all get along beautifully, although it's rather difficult to come in here on such a short notice. I'm sure Jack appreciates it. Hey, Herbie, I can't figure this out. Are, are you pals with Jackson? Jackson? You mean Jack? Oh, oh, oh yes, yes. You know, really, I, I will have an interpreter with this fellow. <laughs> <laughs> well, Phil, no, we're, we're not exactly pals, but I've known Jack for some time. Uh, did you work in a picture together? No, I've never had that pleasure. Well, Sam, did you meet him at a party or something? No, ours is more of a business relationship. You see, for years now, Jack has been selling me Christmas cards. <laughs> Very nice one, too. Christmas cards? Holy smoke! <laughs> he needs more darn people that way. <laughs> well, let's get on with the program, shall we? I think the musical selection could be in order. You, uh, you have an officer, haven't you, Mr. Harris? Yeah, them's it. <laughs> Them this. Yeah, them boys sitting over there is this. What's the matter? Don't you speak English? Well, frankly, old boy, I'm beginning to wonder. <laughs> Amazing creature, isn't he? <laughs> he certainly is, Bart. Well, what are you going to play, Phil? Well, it's an original composition written by myself entitled That's What I Like About the South. Oh, brother. Yeah, and I'm going to sing a couple of voices, too. I've got a good notion to take Herbert Marshall and go home. Now, don't you believe her, Harvey? It's going to be a great number. All right, let's hear it. And now, ladies and gentlemen, you will have a band member by Phil Harris and his Ben Gates. <laughs> Play, Phil. <laughs> yeah, that was, um, that's what I like about the South, played by Phil Harris and his office, with a vocal chorus by Mr. Harris. Did you really write that number, Phil? Yep, every word of it. Ham hot, butter beans, backbone, turnip greens. Don't that make your mouth water, Herbie? <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes, it's one of the most appetizing songs I've ever heard. <laughs> By the way, how did you happen to compose a number like that? He was hungry. <laughs> <laughs> Very good, Mary. Oh, <laughs> now shut that up. <laughs> no, 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 that wasn't it at all. There's a lot of songs about June and moon and love, so I figured I'd write about food. Food, huh? Yeah, just give me a cookbook and a piano and I'm going to town. <laughs> That's very interesting. I had no idea you had such a gastronomical outlook. <laughs> gastronomical? Hey, I better write that down. That's a longie. A longie? Eh? Well, he means a long word. Oh, but why did he write them down? He put them in a scrapbook. He's making his own dictionary. <laughs> yeah, I got over 300 of them, but I forget what they mean. I see, yeah. He gets more fantastic every minute. <laughs> oh, by the way, Bart, did Jack mention in his wire about our sketch this evening? Why, no, he didn't. What sketch do you mean? Well, we were going to do our version of Somerset Maugham's great play, The Letter. You know, the picture you made recently with Betty Davis? And Jack was going to play Herbert Marshall. Well, that's very flattering. And I was uh, just wondering, Bart, since Jack isn't here, perhaps you'd be willing to play your part yourself. Well... You think you can do it, Hubert? <laughs> Well, Bart, Bart, how about it? Would you like to join the tiny little theater group? Why, yes, it might be fun. <laughs> I'll tell you what. 
Then if you sing your song, and then we'll do our version of the letter. Oh, why bother? Let's just take post office. <laughs> that might be fun, too. But I think we better do the letter first. Now, you, Mary, you will be my leading lady. Somebody pinched me. I'm dreaming. Oh, it. <laughs> I'm sorry, Miss Livingston. Oh, go ahead and sing. I'll get it. Hello? All the small, please. It's for you, Mary, New York calling. New York? Probably Jack. Hello? Come on. Oh, hello, Jack. How are you? I know it's long distance, but how much does it cost to say how are you? <laughs> All right, forget it. So, Jack, how did your business deal come out? Yeah? Yeah? <laughs> What about that business deal, Mary? Alan finally paid the check. <laughs> uh, what's that, Jack? Yes, he's right here. I'll put him on. He wants to talk to you, Mr. Marshall. Thank you. Hello. Oh, hello, Jack. How are you? Sorry, old man. I, I forgot it was long distance. <laughs> what? No, you don't have to do that at all. No, no. No, but really, old boy, I don't expect anything. Very well, if you insist. Thanks awful. <laughs> Goodbye. Well, I'll be darned. Is Jackson going to pay you for being on the program tonight? No, but next year I get my Christmas card for nothing. <laughs> <laughs> Let's have your song, Dennis. <laughs> that was Sierra Mamuto, sung by Dennis Day, and a very beautiful number. You know, Dennis, I like the way you sang part of the music and part of the Spanish. That's quite a linguistic piece. Yeah, linguistic. <laughs> hmm. And now let's have a go at our sketch up. I'll play the same role I had in the picture, that of Robert Crosby, the rubber planter, and Mary, you'll be my wife, Leslie Crosby. It's a very difficult role. Well, let's rehearse a little. Kiss me, darling. Later, Mary. Now, let's see. We'll need, uh, we'll need a barrister. Phil, do you think you can handle the part of a lawyer? Absolutely, old boy. How do you want me to play it? Gastronomical or linguistic? <laughs> uh, a little of each. Well, I think that about take, uh, take care of the casting. Hey, Mr. Marshall, am I going to be in the play? Well, in a way, Dennis. You see, you, uh, you enact the role of the man who's been murdered. But unfortunately, as the story opens, you are already dead. Oh, no dialogue, eh? <laughs> well, uh, hardly. And now, ladies and gentlemen. Then I might as well go over in the corner and have a chair. That's a good idea. Of course, it'll be more believable if I lay down on the floor. Very well, you can, uh, you can lie on the floor. But if I do that, I'll get my new suit wrinkled. Young man, let's not worry so much, shall we? Okay, Bob. <laughs> good. And now, for our future attraction this evening. Members of the Benny Stock Company and myself will present our version of Warner Brothers' current film achievement, The Letter. Ladies and gentlemen, the letter. The locale of our play is Singapore in the Malay Peninsula. Leslie Crosby, a beautiful young English woman, has just been acquitted of the murder of Jeffrey Hammond, her lover. That's me, folks. I'm just full of holes. <laughs> Young man, will you please lie down? Yes, sir. Mrs. Crosby's husband, her friends, and even the court believe her to be innocent. However, a very valuable piece of evidence has been withheld. A letter. A letter so condemning that it would have changed the entire course of the trial and sent Leslie Crosby to the gallows. Hey, Hubert, shall I lay on my face or on my back? <laughs> Either one. Her husband has no knowledge of this scanning bit of evidence which is now in the possession of Mrs. Crosby's attorney. As the scene opens, the trial has just ended, and Leslie is being escorted through the crowd of talking by her family. Oh, Mr. Marshall, Mr. Marshall. One side, one side there, thank you. Come into this room, Leslie, I must talk to you. But my husband... You can see him later, come along. Well, Leslie, if you want to compliment me on my magnificent plea, have that jury in the palm of my hand. You had him drooling, too. <laughs> All you talked about was ham hocks and butter beans. <laughs> Come, please. Well, I got you off, didn't I? Thanks to me, you are now a free woman. Why shouldn't I be free? I thought Jeffrey Hammond is tough to think. That's what the public believes. The 
if you murdered him and you'd done it with malice and forethought and all that stuff. <laughs> what are you talking about? Well, just look at this. Look at this letter. Dear Phil, I waited for you last night until all... Wrong letters! <laughs> Yeah, give me that. Now, here's the letter I mean. Do you see it? Well, that's the letter I wrote to Jeff Harmon. Precisely. Oh, fine. Now, look. Do you realize that if this letter had been introduced as evidence, they'd have given you a hemp necklace? Oh, never mind that. How did you get hold of this letter? Well, I had to buy it from a blackmailer. He wanted $10,000, but I talked him down to 85 cents. 85 cents? Well, that's all the money my husband had in the world. Well, that's the best I could do. Here, now take this letter and burn it up. The most terrible thing I've ever read. And if your husband ever sees it, you're going to... Quiet. Who comes now? Oh, yes. Hello, Robert. Hello, old boy. Ah, oh, Leslie, my love. Robert. Kiss me, my darling. Oh, my dear, I'm so glad. So glad this terrible ordeal is over. Kiss me, my darling. It's been like a horrible nightmare. And now, thank heaven, it's over. At last, we are together again. Kiss me, my darling. You'll never know. You'll never know what I've been through. Those nights of torment and loneliness. Please, push me, my darling. Oh, 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 yeah, oh yes, yes. Sweetheart. Hey, Herbert, we got the same technique. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're in there. <laughs> well, if you'll excuse me, old man, I'll toddle along. This is the most gastronomical day I've ever gone through. Get this. <laughs> Oh, Robert, alone at last. Yes, alone at last. Kiss me, my darling. Take it easy, old girl. We only just got through. <laughs> oh, Leslie, I can't tell you how happy I am. But I've made such a spiteful mess of things. How can you love me after what I've done? But I do love you. Darling, I do. No, no, you can't. Believe me, Leslie, I love you now more than ever. I adore you, Leslie. Dear. Yeah. Rest your head on my shoulder. Oh, boy, if the girls at the May Company could see me now. Please. <laughs> I've ever been planned, Lizzie. They're leaving Singapore, leaving it forever. Yes, we must go away. I know of a rubber plantation to Martha that you can purchase for only 85 cents. Uh-oh. But there's something I must tell you, Robert. I had to use that 85 cents to buy a letter. What? You've squandered my life savings on a mere scrap of paper? Leslie, let me see that letter. I haven't got it. Don't lie to me. What's that in your hand? Leslie, I must see that letter. No, no, I can't show it to you. Then read it to me. No, no, it's too shameful, too horrible. I don't care. I paid 85 cents for that letter, and I want to know what it says. <laughs> You're as bad as Benny. <laughs> Very well, I'll read it. Dear Jeff. Oh, Robert, it's too terrible. I can't continue. I insist. Read the rest of that letter. I can't go on with it. You must. All right. You might as well know. Dear Jeff, roses are red, violets are blue. I like my husband, but I'm nuts about you. <laughs> there. Now you know. So that's it. You were in love with Jeff Hammond. Yes, Robert, and I still love him. With all my heart and soul, I love the man I killed. Yeah, killed. Young man, will you please lie down? Kiss me, darling. Kiss me. Please, Mary, please. Play, Phil. Christmas cards or no Christmas cards, I'll never go through this again. <laughs> that was Keep an Eye on Your Heart, played by the orchestra. And Bart Marshall, on behalf of Jack and every one of us, I want to thank you for coming over here tonight and doing such a swell job of King Kitty. No kidding, Herbie. You're a terrific. Terrific? I'll bet anything. That means terrific. Now you're catching on, Bob. Thanks, Phil. <laughs> Well, everyone, I've had a grand time here this evening, and it's been fun meeting you all. Uh, say, Mr. Marshall, you live in Beverly Hills, don't you? Yes, Mary, I do. Well, uh, I live out that way myself, but would you mind dropping me off? I oh, know, I'd be glad to. And uh, on the way home, maybe we could stop at a drive-in for a sandwich. A drive-in? That's a splendid suggestion. Of course, I'm, I'm pretty hungry, and uh, maybe we ought to go to a restaurant instead. All right, we'll, uh, we'll stop at a restaurant. Well, I'll phone Cyril's and reserve the table. Well, oh, we certainly got there in a hurry. Come along, Mary. Well, goodbye, everybody. Goodbye. Cheer up, everyone. Oh, by the way, Mary, I'm afraid I'm being rather rude. Do you think I ought to uh, invite the rest of the gang to Cheer with us? Nothing doing. You're mine, Bob. Come on. <laughs> we'll be with you again next Sunday night at the same time when Jack will be back with us again. Good night, folks. Good night, Jack. <laughs> Thank you.
Better step on it, Rochester. Yes, sir. It'll be nice to get to the studio before my broadcast starts. Don't worry, boys. We'll have time to spare if the wind don't change. <laughs> Well, I, uh, I don't want to be late, especially after being off the program last Sunday. You know, I was a little worried about that. I was afraid my gang wouldn't be able to do a show without my being there. Yeah, who, who'd ever think a program could be that funny with the both of us just listening in? <laughs> yes, it, uh, it did go over pretty well. Say, boss, that's the first time you ever missed a broadcast, ain't it? No, it happened once before when I fell asleep at a movie. It was my picture, too. I can't understand it. <laughs> Is everything comfortable there in the back seat, Mr. Billings, please? Oh, fine, thank you. <laughs> it's awfully nice of you to give me this lift. Oh, don't mention it. I wouldn't have bothered you, but my magic carpet is at the cleaners. <laughs> oh. Oh, oh. I told you, boss, that man's cuckoo. He is not. Rochester, so what's the idea of driving on this little side street? We always take Sunset Boulevard to the studio. Well, the policeman told me that on Saturdays, Sundays, and holidays, we got to keep this car off the main drag. <laughs> oh, Rochester, so you'll say anything to run down my Maxwell. I wouldn't mind it so much, boss, if you'd just fix the springs in the cushion. Never mind. Every time I ride in this thing, I get the Martin and Zorro. <laughs> Too bad about you. Oh, Mr. Billingsley, are you sure you wouldn't like to come to the broadcast with me? No, thanks. Just drop me off at the bowling alley. I'm going to have this ball taken off my thumb. <laughs> Well, I, uh, I don't blame you. It must be a nuisance. I'll never eat taffy again while I'm bowling. <laughs> oh, I was wondering how it happened. All right, sir, will you please drive a little faster? I've got a program to do. I hope, this, I hope it's as good as last week. That Mr. Marshall was sure great. Oh, I thought Herbert Marshall was all right. Everybody's raving about him, boy. You couldn't have got a better man to take your place. I didn't want a better man. I made a mistake. That's all. <laughs> I ought to have my head examined. He's the talk of the town from Central Avenue to the sea. Oh, don't get so poetic. Just drive me to the studio and forget about Herbert Marshall. I sure laughed when he looked at Mr. Harris and said, Whiz, fella, isn't he? <laughs> What's funny about that? And another thing, Rochester, you don't have to enjoy him quite so much. Who pays you, Mr. Marshall or me? Lately, it's been Santa Anita. <laughs> well, unless you expect your luck to continue right through Bay Meadows, you better curb your enthusiasm. Now, get me to the studio. Can we give you a lift, babe? Mr. Billingsley, please! That girl is a total stranger. Drive on, Rochester. Hmm. She was kind of cute, though. <laughs> the Jell-O program starring Jack Benny with Mary Livingston, Phil Harris, Dennis Day, and yours truly, Don Wilson. And now, ladies and gentlemen, after a week's absence from the Jell-O program, let us welcome back our good old master of ceremonies, Mr. Jack Marshall. What for Benny? Jack Benny! <laughs> Uh, Jello again, this is Jack Benny talking, and Don, you were a little mixed up on that introduction, weren't you? Oh, yes, I was, Jack, and I'm sorry. It was just a slip of the tongue. Well, don't worry about it, Don. It could easily happen. After all, you've been with me only eight years, and I've been away for one whole week, <laughs> so it's only natural that you'd forget my name. Well, Jack, the only excuse I can offer is that since Perfect Marshall was on the show last week and did such a grand job, I subconsciously connected you with him. I see. Well, don't give it another thought, Don. It's a very common mistake. In fact, if I should happen to walk in on our program some Sunday night and call you Harry Von Zell, it'll be Von Zell, believe me. <laughs> if 
if I'm not too subtle. Now, wait a minute, Jack. There's no reason for you to feel jealous of Bart Marshall. He may have done a very good job, but there's no one who can ever take your place in our hearts. Don, if there's one thing I can't stand, it's a big, fat hypocrite. <laughs> a lot you and the rest of the gang care about me. The way you all drooled over Marshall last Sunday was revolting. Hello, Jack. How was your trip to New York? Well, if it isn't, kiss me, my darling. <laughs> what are you talking about? You know what I'm talking about. I heard you last week when you kept asking Marshall for a kiss. Now, you didn't even know the man. I do now, Bob. <laughs> it's not the point. You didn't have to act like a schoolgirl. Well, I couldn't help it. Gee, he's wonderful. Oh, everyone's wonderful to you but me. <laughs> By the way, Mary, uh, Bart took you to Ciro's uh, for dinner after the show last Sunday, didn't he? Yes, John, and don't talk about it. I was so embarrassed in front of Mr. Marshall, I nearly died. Sir, for well, what for, Mary? Well, the head waiter had seen me there with Jack so many times, he gave us each our own check. <laughs> Now, listen, Mary, the only time you ever pay your own check is when you order a la carte. <laughs> the regular dinner is always on me. And you know it. Gee, Mr. Marshall is such a gentleman. After we left Ciro's, he took me straight to my house, shook hands, and said goodnight. Well, why shouldn't he? He didn't try to put his foot in the door like you used to do. <laughs> oh, for crying out loud. No kidding, Mary. Was Jack that kind of a guy? Now, wait a minute. As long as Mary's telling stories about me, let's get it straight. Look, Don, years ago, when Mary first came to work for me in New York, it was raining one night, so I said to her, you live way over in Plainfield, can I take you home? Can I take you home girly? All right, girly. <laughs> Everybody said it in those days. Anyway, Don. Yes? Yeah? Anyway, I put on my yellow slicker. With hat to match. It was a set. All the fellas were wearing it. <laughs> anyway, Don, when we got to Plainfield, it was still raining. And the only reason I put my foot in the door was because I wanted to come in and have a cup of coffee. There. That's the whole story. It is not. When you put your foot in the door, Papa bit your ankle. <laughs> well, how did I know he was laying there? <laughs> If you remember, Miss Livingston, that's the last time that... Oh, hello, Phil. Hiya, Jackson. What's steaming? Is everything solid in New York? What? Did you latch on? Were you in there jumping? <laughs> Weird, fellow, isn't it? Oh, Jack, stop, will you? That's exactly what Mr. Marshall said last week. Yeah, Herbie pulled that one. Well, for heaven's sake, does he own every word in the dictionary? What a fuss you're all making over that guy. Now, wait a minute, Jack. What are you so upset about? It was all your idea. Yes, you asked Mr. Marshall to be on the program. You asked him to take your place. I didn't ask him to get laughed. He's a legitimate actor, and he double-crossed me. <laughs> That'll never happen again. Well, I'll say one thing about Herbie. You sure got a lot of class. I tell you, Jackson, that guy's suaver than me. <laughs> uh, he's distinguished her, too. <laughs> suaver. And Mr. Marshall thinks... Marshall, Marshall, that's all I've heard tonight. Well, I guess that's about all the loyalty I can expect from this game. That's life for you. Guy leaves the program, and the minute his back is turned, boom, the dagger. Boom is for a gun. All right. <laughs> The dagger. <laughs> if that's the way it goes, I've never seen it to fail. If my father told me once, he told me a thousand times, son, stay out of show business. Don't leave the clothing store. Because <laughs> I need you. You're the best dummy I've got in my window. He didn't say that. But no, I had to be a wise guy. I had to leave Waukegan. So long, Dad. I'm going to Kenosha. <laughs> Kenosha. Yeah, I had bought a there. And that was the beginning. I had to get into show business. What a place, Phil. Okay. I'll never forget that opening night. Gee, I was a big hit. There I stood on the stage with my violin, taking bow after bow. I thought they'd never stop. <laughs> and after Kenosha, I went to Milwaukee. I wowed him there. 
Then came Elkhart, Indiana. Oh, pardon me. That was You Can Depend on Me, played by Phil Harris and his orchestra. And now, ladies and gentlemen... Hey, Jackson, did you hear the song I did last week? The one I wrote myself? You mean the one about ham hocks and butter beans? And... Yeah, I heard it, Phil, but I don't get it. What does it mean? It don't mean nothing. It's just gastronomical, that's all. <laughs> yeah, I heard you say that before. I... Phil, um... Uh, what does gastronomical mean? Gastronomical, capital G. I don't want it spelled, Phil. I, I don't want it spelled. I, I want to know what it means. Well, it's easy enough to figure out. Let's break it down. Okay. Gastronomical, break it down. Well, gas. Gas is what you buy in a filling station. Uh-huh. And throw. Throw means like when you throw a ball. I see. That's gas throw. Now, what's nomical? Nomical is what an Englishman wears in his eyes. <laughs> uh, that's a monocle, but I'll settle for nomical. So according to your definition, Phil, gastronomical is an Englishman with a monocle in his eye standing in a gas station throwing a ball. <laughs> now, what's that got to do with your song? Are you trying to befuddle me? <laughs> oh, Phil, I just want to show you that you don't know what you're talking about. Oh, hello, Dennis. Can I say hello now? Yes. Yeah, hello, Dennis. Hello, Mr. Benny. What's going on? Oh, nothing. Boy, did we have a program last week. Is that so? Uh, who was responsible for that hilarious half hour? The big movie star, Hubert Marshall. <laughs> yes, uh, yes, I know, Dennis. I heard all about it. Are you worried, Buck? <laughs> Uh, Dennis, uh, you don't know it, but it's not too late for you to become a policeman. <laughs> so watch it. Anyway, a lot of people, a lot of people missed me last Sunday. Uh, Fred Allen didn't. He said it was the best yellow show he ever heard. Oh, he did, eh? Yes, he said it was the first time our broadcast had any class to it. Well, Alan's the fine one to talk about class. Any man that can be on a gasoline program for six months and still have those spots on his vest. <laughs> well. And now, ladies and gentlemen, I saw him on the street in, uh, in New York. He ran down the subway like a rat. What a coward. And now, ladies and gentlemen, for our feature attraction tonight, the Benny Little Theater Bun will present their version of Somerset Maugham's great play and Warner Brothers' sensational picture, The Letter. Wait a minute, Jack. We did The Letter last week with Herbert Marshall. And we're doing it again tonight with me. <laughs> Show that guy how to play it. Mary, what are you doing there? I'm printing a sign. I'm going to pick it. Put down that pencil. Whether you like it or not, right after Dennis's song, we're going to do this play. Not with me in it. Me neither. Jack, I think you're very silly to do it. Well, that tops everything. Fine, pal. Honest to goodness, if I'd have saved my money, I'd quit radio right this minute. What? I said if I'd have saved my money, I'd quit radio. You saved enough tinfoil alone to retire. <laughs> what a girl. I maybe have 75 pounds of tinfoil, and right away I can retire. Anyway, fellas, we're doing our version of the letter, and that's final. So, Dennis, go ahead with your song. Okay. Say, Mr. Benny, what's tinfoil song for now? Uh, Sixteen cents a pound. <laughs> Sing, Dennis. <laughs> that, um, that was You Should Be Set to Music from Crazy with the Heat, sung by Dennis Day. And, Dennis, I hate to bring it up right now, but I was out in my backyard this morning, and I noticed that while I was in New York, you did not mow my lawn. I'm fine, Mr. Benny, but I was pretty busy last week. Well, sorry isn't quite enough, Dennis. You see, a contract is a contract. When you signed your name to that little piece of paper, you agreed to sing and mow for me. <laughs> so tomorrow morning, I better hear a familiar rattle in my backyard. Well, I'm going to be pretty busy all day tomorrow, too. Dennis, are you going to mow that lawn or do I have to take you to court? <laughs> Now, it's up to you, kid. What's it going to be? Okay, but I'm going to run over the petunias. <laughs> You'll do nothing of the kind. 
And while we're on the subject, Dennis, next time I wish you'd mow the lawn straight. Don't spell out down with Benny. <laughs> and now, ladies and gentlemen, for our feature attraction, the letter. Holy smoke, he's going through with it. Yes, Bill. Now, I will play the part portrayed on the screen by H.M. <laughs> that of uh, Robert Crosby, the rubber planter. And Mary, you're going to be uh, Leslie Crosby, my wife. I won't say kiss me, my darling. Yes, you will. It's here in the script. Now, Don... I won't put any feeling into you it. You will, too. I will not. According to my contract, all I have to do is tell jokes and manicure your nails every Friday. <laughs> That's so. My contract says I have to tell jokes and play music. Phil, your contract says that you tell jokes and play good music. The word good is in there. Don't you remember? We scratched that out. <laughs> Oh, yes, your lawyer said it was irrelevant, immaterial, and impossible. <laughs> anyway, uh, getting back to our play, Phil, you're going to be the... Come in. Well, look who's here. Gee, it's Mr. Marshall. Hello, everybody. Hi. Hi. Hello. Hi. Well, Bart, what brings you here? Better have a good reason. <laughs> Jack, old boy, I simply had to drop in tonight and thank you for asking me to take over your program last Sunday. It was a delightful experience. I know, I know, and you seem to have gone over very big. Oh, I wouldn't say that exactly. Oh, yes, yes, you did. What a ham. <laughs> Well, it was nice of you to drop in, Bart. Uh, you know everybody here. Of course, of course. Hello, Don. Well, hello, Bart. Glad to see you again. And Phil, how are you? Hi, you heard me? Sandra Claxton. Get out with the news. <laughs> Sandra Claxton? He's throwing me creeps, isn't he? <laughs> oh, positively weird, I always say. <laughs> and Mary, Mary, dear, I didn't see you standing there. You look charming this evening. With these two temples? Now cut that out. <laughs> Well, Bart, if you'll excuse me, uh, we'll get on with our play. Uh, we're going to do the the letter, you know. The letter? I, I did that last week. Uh, very good, too. Uh, you were excellent. Oh, Jack, I thought it was just fair. Fair nothing, Bart. You were terrific. Boy, if he can see it. <laughs> now, if you don't mind, old boy, uh, we'll go ahead uh, with... Say, Bart, look what I've got on. Why, Mary, are you still wearing that orchid I gave you last Sunday? Yes, and I'm going to wear it till there's nothing left but the tinfoil. Then Jack takes over. <laughs> now, stop showing off. That's, a, that's very good, Mary. <laughs> <laughs> Don't encourage her, please. Gee, Bart, didn't we have fun at Cyril's the other night? Yes, indeed. Of course, I'll never get over the, the way they're handling a piece of chest. <laughs> <laughs> hmm... Uh, Mary was telling me about that. Well, Bart, if you don't mind... Hey, Gilbert, remember me? <laughs> Dennis, will you pipe down? Come on, fellas, let's get going with the play. Uh, so long, Bart. Goodbye, Jack, and thanks again. Say, Bart, as long as you're here, why don't you say and watch Jack play your part? Why, uh, yes, that might be fun. Yes, do say. Don had to open his big fat mouth. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, let's go, shall we? <clears throat> uh, sit down, Bart. Uh, ba uh, Dennis, uh, get Mr. Marshall a chair. Oh, don't bother. I'll stand right here. Hmm. Okay. Okay. Hmm. Now the uh, the o the the opening scene of the play. The opening scene is the courthouse in Singapore in the Malay Peninsula. Uh, I will play the part of Robert Crosby, the rubber plant. That's Robert Planter. Well, he makes me nervous. Gee. <laughs> I'm sorry, Jack. Well, I'll go over and sit down. Okay. Mary, let go of him. As I said before, the opening scene is the courthouse in Singapore. As the curtain rises... Oh, darn, who's that? Answer the phone, Mary. Okay. Hello? Who? Mr. Harrington? Mr. Harrington? That's my sponsor. Give me the phone, Mary. He wants to talk to Mr. Marshall. Oh. 
Oh, it's for... Oh, it's for you, Hubert. Uh, Herbert. Uh, our sponsor would like to talk to you. Your sponsor? I wonder what he wants. So do I. Answer the phone. Here. Thank you. Hmm. Hello? Yes, this is Herbert Marshall. Oh, well, thank you very much, Mr. Harrington. I was awfully sweet of you. Yes, I thought it went over fairly well. Sure, for one show, let us try it. We try doing it week after week. What's that, Mr. Harrington? Oh, no, no, no. No, I couldn't have been that good. <laughs> week after week, that's the test. <laughs> What then? Oh. Oh, your wife likes it, too. <laughs> what does she know? <laughs> well, please tell Mrs. Harrington how much I appreciate that. Never did like me. That's what I'm up against. Well, thanks again, Mr. Harrington, and I'm so glad you called. Goodbye. Well, it was nice of my sponsor to call you, Bart. Yes, and he seems to be such a lovely fellow. Oh, he is. He is. You know, Jack... I'd like to have you introduce me to him sometime. I just hope you live that long. <laughs> and now, ladies and gentlemen, for our play, The Litter. I mean, The Letter. <laughs> the Letter. Let's do The Letter, on off, off. Mary, we're going to do The Letter. Hey, Jack, look at your watch. We haven't got time to do a play. Well, it's not my fault. I started to do it ten minutes ago. Anyway, we're going through with it. Get your parts, everybody. Now, don't be silly, Jack. They'll take you off the air. They wouldn't dare. Let's go. The opening scene, ladies and gentlemen, is a courthouse in Singapore. Leslie Crosby, wife of Robert Crosby, a rubber planter, is on fire for her life. And as the curtain rises, she's being escorted to the crowded courtroom by her attorney, Howard Crosby. And we'll be with you again next Sunday night at the same time. And now, ladies and gentlemen, I want to thank Mr. Alton Cook and the radio editors of the United States and Canada for the honors accorded us in the recent World Telegram poll. I also want to thank my listeners and my authors, Bill Morrow and Ed Boulogne. And oh, yes, I want to thank Mr. Herbert Marshall for stealing my show last week. Good night, folks. I'm not really mad. <laughs> The Jell-O program starring Jack Benny with Mary Livingston, Phil Harris, Dennis Day, and yours truly, Don Wilson. And now, ladies and gentlemen, last Friday the 14th, which was Valentine's Day, was also the birthday of our master of ceremonies, Jack Benny, who was exactly... Yes, sir. ...years of age. <laughs> so tonight, we would like to reenact the events which occurred at Jack's house Friday evening. It was about 7 p.m., and a little group consisting of Jack, Mr. Billingsley, the boarder, and Mary, who had been dropped by to go to a movie, were seated around the dinner table. Let us eavesdrop, shall we? Oh, boy, there's nothing like eating at home, I always say. Uh, Mary, pass some of those extra fancy, solid packs, two tomatoes. <laughs> Will you? Oh, stop building them up. Well, they're delicious. Take some more. I'm tired of tomatoes. Where's the meat? It's coming. Rochester, I'm taking Miss Livingston to a movie. So will you please hurry with that extra choice, eastern cut, prime ribs of beef. You mean that dinky little pot roast? <laughs> Never mind, bring it in. It's a pretty tough meat. It's a pretty tough piece of meat, boss. I don't know if it's done yet. Well, stick a fork in it. I did, and I can't get it out. <laughs> well, bring it in anyway. Okay. Say, Mary, aren't these nice dishes? Lovely pattern, isn't it? Yeah. Is this a set you want at the Beverly Theater? <laughs> All but the soup tureen. I got that at the Oriental. <laughs> Gee, these tomatoes are good. They're not seasoned enough. Uh, pass me that salt shaker you want at Ocean Park. Here you are. And that wise guy said I couldn't break those balloons. <laughs> how, uh, how are you enjoying your dinner, Mr. Billingsley? Just fine, thank you. Good, good. This watercress is delicious. Uh, those are ferns, Mr. Billingsley. Your... <laughs> your, uh... You're eating the centerpiece there. <laughs> hmm. Uh, say, Jack. What? Why is Mr. Billingsley wearing that fife and drum around his neck? That fife and drum? Yeah. Well, that's my fault. I told him we were having Yankee pot roast tonight. <laughs> 
Oh, by the way, Mr. Billingsley, Miss Livingston and I are going to see a movie after dinner. Would you care to join us? No, thank you. I'm going to stay home tonight and get stiff. <laughs> Get stiff. I thought you didn't drink anymore. I don't. I'm going to sit in the ice box. <laughs> oh. Oh. Oh, I see. Here you are, folks. Make way for the pot roast. Mmm, that smells good. Did you get the fork out of it, Rochester? Only the handle. <laughs> you mean the prongs are still in the meat? Don't worry, boss. I put a band-aid there so you won't bite into them. That's very thoughtful of you. What do you want, Mary? A rare piece or an outside cut? Uh, give me the band-aid. That looks tender. You watch out or you won't get any. Rochester, hand me the pot roast. Here you are. You think that's... Whoa! 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 <laughs> whoa, my finger! The plate's kind of hot, boy! Well, it's a fine time to tell me. Never saw such a careless... Now, where the heck is the pot roast? There it is, up on the chandelier. <laughs> On the chandelier? Well, I'll be darned. It's dripping on my drum. <laughs> well, move over a little. Rochester, you're so clumsy. Now, go out in the kitchen and fix up a few cold cuts. We've got to eat something. Let's take some oranges and knock down the pot roast. <laughs> you can get a ladder and take it down later. Now, bring in the cold cuts. How would you like some genuine, boneless, skinless, imported Norwegian sardines? Packed in virgin olive oil. Bring them in, Rochester. <laughs> now, Mary, while we're waiting, have some more stewed tomatoes. A fine meal. Well, they're very good for you. They'll make you strong. I'm strong enough now to walk to a restaurant. <laughs> well, if you don't like the tomatoes, don't eat them. Will you pass the bread, please? <laughs> Here you are, Mr. Billingsley. Would you, uh, would you like some butter, too? I've never been there, but I hear it's lovely. <laughs> yes. Yeah. What? Gee, that doesn't make any sense at all. Say, Mary, I've got an idea. Why don't we go to the movie and then eat later? Oh, Jack, I don't want to see Love Thy Neighbor again. <laughs> Getting so now, I can't even laugh at your love scene with Mary Martin. You're not supposed to laugh at that. Hey, Rochester, we're going to a movie, so never mind those sardines. I already opened them. Oh. Well, you can, you can eat them. I made some fried chicken for myself. <laughs> what? Rochester, this is only Friday, and I told you we're not having that chicken until Sunday. I'm having some people over at the house. The way it's been raining lately, the house might not be here Sunday. <laughs> Oh, don't be so panicky. It is raining kind of hard, but it's nothing to worry about. Then why did you build an ark? <laughs> I've got to have a hobby, don't I? Anyway, to hear you two talk, I think it was a regular flood or something. Well, all I know is the milkman arrived on a surfboard this morning. <laughs> That's Mr. Kahanamoku. He's a Hawaiian. <laughs> And another thing, I won't stand for anybody running down the California weather. Quiet or I'll stick my fork in your water wings. You wouldn't dare. <laughs> Sister. <laughs> now, come on, Mary, we're going to the movie. Hey, boss, boss! What is it, Rochester? There's a big crowd of people coming up the front steps. A crowd of people? Open up, open up! Come on, open up! What's going on here? You'll find out. Come on in, fellas. Surprise! A surprise birthday party, Don, Dennis, and Phil. Come on, kids. One, two, for he's a jolly good fellow. For he's a jolly good fellow. For he's a jolly good fellow. Which nobody can deny. <laughs> Gee whiz, fellas, I can't get over. Come on in and take your things off. Come on, everybody. Wipe your feet. Come on, come on. Well, gee whiz, fellas, I can't get over you guys surprising me like this. No kidding. You didn't think we'd forget your birthday, did you, Jackson? No, but gosh, all this fuss. Well, believe me, Jack, you've been so darn nice to the whole gang, you're entitled to it. Yeah, entitled. 
Gee, I... I, I don't know what to say. I'm all choked up. This is really the last thing in the world I expected. You know, I was just sitting here getting ready to go to a movie, not even thinking about little me having a birthday party, and then you all barged in. Gee. Look, fellas, I'll just run down and see my picture and be back in 84 minutes. Come back here. Oh, yes. I'm so excited, Mary. I don't know what I'm talking about. Then. Say, Mr. Penny, what's that up there on the chandelier? A pot roast, Dennis. It's a long story. <laughs> But don't worry about it, kid. A pot roast on the chandelier, and he tells me not to worry. <laughs> Forget it, will you? I'll have Rochester take it down a few minutes and make sandwiches. I just sent him to the store to buy some food. Oh. Did you give him any money? Uh-huh. I took $3 out of the sugar bowl. Mary, the sugar bowl is for laundry. <laughs> You want to buy groceries, you take the money out of the cookie jar. I tried to, and a cobra stuck his head out. <laughs> That's my East Indian burglar alarm. Say, Don, what's that you're hiding behind your back? Well, Jack, uh, Mary, Dennis, Phil, and myself all chipped in and bought you a birthday present. And believe me, Jack, it comes right from the heart. A present? Doggone you guy. You'll have me bowling in a minute. You give it to me, I'll unwrap it. Hold it, Jackson. A speech goes with this, and I'm going to make it. Well... Mr. Benny, ladies and gentlemen, and members of the Minneapolis Chamber of Commerce. <laughs> Minneapolis Chamber of Commerce? I copied this out of a book. Forget that part. <laughs> okay, go ahead. It is with great pride, or make it pride, yeah, it is make with it great pride, pride yeah. and pleasure that I and my fellow colleagues... Holly, go ahead. Yes, present you with this beautiful gift as a token of our loyalty, devotion, and gastronomical appreciation. <laughs> Here you are, Jackson. Here it is. Oh, Go on up. Gee whiz, fellas, I know it's my birthday, but you... Gosh, you, you shouldn't have gone to all this. Uh, well, for heaven's sake, isn't that beautiful? <laughs> you like it, Jack? Oh, boy, just what I needed. A bicycle pump. <laughs> With a hose and all. I uh, wish one of you heels suggested that. <laughs> well, we didn't know what to buy you, Jackson. You've got everything. Everything but a bicycle pump. Now I've got that. <laughs> oh, well. Thanks anyway, fellas. I'll wear it in good health. Rochester, there's someone at the door. I told you he went out for the groceries. Oh, yes. I'll answer. Probably another telegram. I've been getting them all day long. Hello, boss, it's me. Rochester, you've got a key. Why make me open the door? I just want to give you an idea what I go through. <laughs> Too bad about you. What'd you bring from the market? Well, I got some limes and lemons and grape juice for the punch. For the punch? Well, what are we going to have to eat? Boss, with the punch I make, people have been known to go for days without eating. <laughs> well, we still have to have food. And if you can't find anything in the kitchen, run next door to Mr. Ronald Coleman. This is the day his cook makes popovers. Okay. Say, fellas, we'll have something to eat in a little while. In the meantime, let's play games or something. I'll call up some chorus girls and we'll play post office. <laughs> That's all we need, chorus girls and no food. <laughs> Say, I'll tell you what, fellas. How about playing blind man's buff? Oh, that's well done. All right, now look at, look at, look at. I'll be the blind man. Who's got a handkerchief? Just take off your glasses and we're all set. <laughs> Oh, stop, will you? Blind man stop, everybody. Come on, come on. Blind hold me, somebody. Take it easy, Jackson. The last time we played this game, it took us two hours to get your head out of the goldfish bowl. Oh, that's right. I know a swell game, Mr. Benny. It's called Clap Hands. What's that? Well, you folks sit down. I'll sing a song, and when it's all over, you all clap hands. It's a fine game. It's a little dull, isn't it, Dennis? It's better than getting your head caught in a goldfish bowl. Well, maybe you're right. Sit down, everybody. Dennis is going to sing for us. I want to play that game where I can win $10. Well, go on a quiz program and don't bother us. Go ahead, Dennis. Sing something. <laughs> Rochester, there's someone at the door. Maybe it's me again. Answer that door. <laughs> sing, Dennis. He's the laziest person I ever met. <laughs> That was a swell game, Dennis. Let's do it again Sunday on the program. Uh, who was at the door, Rochester? It was a special delivery, boss. I gave it to Miss Livingston. Oh, did you give the boy a tip? How could I? You keep the tip money in the glue pot. <laughs> well, 
Well, I would have reimbursed you later. What's the letter, Mary? It's a comic valentine from New York. New York, eh? Well, I have a pretty good idea who it's from. Uh, what kind of a valentine did arsenic and old lace send me? <laughs> Read it. Uh, to a comedian. <laughs> uh-huh. Your eyes are blue, your hair is gray, and you're as dumb as Dennis Day. That's very funny. Yeah, very. <laughs> Wait till Alan gets the valentine I sent him. Somebody at the door, Rochester. How do you know I'm back with Mr. Coleman? I see you standing there. <laughs> now stop eating those popovers and answer the door. Okay. Doors, doors. I'd like to get a job working in a barrel. That's just silly. What could he do in a barrel? Always grumbling. Hey, boss, look who's here. Well, I'll be... Hey, fellas, look. Hiya, Buck. Wendy. <laughs> Divine, we haven't seen you in six months. How did you happen to drop in? Well, Buck, I heard it was your birthday, so I thought I'd come over and surprise you. <laughs> you certainly did. Uh, how old are you, Buck? Well, Andy, I'll, I'll never see 36 again. <laughs> <laughs> Even on a clear day. <laughs> That's very cute, Andy, and where's my present? Your present? Yes. I got two of them, Buck. Ma sent you a jug of sweet cider. Uh-huh. And Pa sent you a jug of hard cider. Well, look at that. Two jugs. Which is which, Andy? There goes Pa. <laughs> hey, look out. It's, it's, it's spilling all over the floor. Quick, get me a sponge and a pillow. <laughs> get away from there, Harris. What's the matter with you? Say, Andy, uh, you're putting on a little weight, aren't you? <laughs> yeah, ain't we? <laughs> Tell them, Andy, you're pretty sharp tonight. Sit down at the table, everybody. The food's ready. Oh, oh I am hungry. Take it easy. Oh, take it easy. The plates are all fixed. Gee, two and a half sardines apiece. And lots of popovers. Dig in, kids. There's someone at the door, Rochester. I'm busy, boss. Answer that door. <laughs> Yes, and be quick about it. Well, Andy, I'm sure glad you dropped in. I had no idea that you'd remember my birthday. As a matter of fact, I didn't oh, know... Oh, good it. evening. Come right in, Mr. Marshall. Yikes! Holy smoke, it's Herbie. Hello, everybody. Happy birthday, Jack. Well, thanks! <laughs> well, my good... Gee whiz, Herbert Marshall at my house. Quick, Mary, phone Luella Parsons. <laughs> She'll never believe it. Phone her anyway. Well, Bart, you're the last person in the world I expected to see on my birthday. No, Mary and I were just... Oh, I'm sorry. This is Andy Devine. How do you do, Mr. Devine? I'm glad to know you, Mr. Marshall. You want to buy a horse? Andy, not now. Oh. Jeez, as I started to say, Bart... Uh, Mary and I were just sitting here not even thinking of having company on my birthday. Stop looking at the package in his hand. <laughs> I'm not looking at it. Oh, yes, yes, the, uh, the package. Here you are, Jack. A little remembrance. Many happy returns, old boy. A present for me? Well, gee, I feel like a darn fool. I, I didn't get a thing for you, you know. <laughs> This, um, this is your birthday, not Christmas. Oh, yes. Yeah, what am I thinking of? Hey, Dennis, get Mr. Marshall a chair. Gee, I'm all thumbs opening this package. Here's a chair for you, Hubert. <laughs> Thanks, Dennis. Yeah, I, I can't seem to get this... the this, this string untied. Stop shaking. Well, I'm so anxious. My name is Billingsley, Mr. Marshall. <laughs> Well, I... I'm glad to know you, Mr. Billingsley. Mr. Billingsley, sit down, please. Darn this string. See, I tried to open this present. There, I got it. Well, thanks, Bart. Thanks a million. Hey, fellas, look. Look what he gave me. Look at these beautiful cufflinks. I mean, cufflinks. <laughs> Oh, look, God, gee, 14 carats. Cheapers, he looked already. <laughs> well, they're beautiful. By the way, Bart, what's in that other box? That's a gardenia. I, I brought it for Mary. Well, 
he's just like all the other fellas. He starts out with orchids, and now I'm now down to a gardenia. Quiet. <laughs> Very good, Mary. <laughs> then better if she hadn't muffed it, Bart. <laughs> I can't, I can't get over these couplings. Thanks again, Bart, thanks. I'm so glad you like my gift, Jack. You know, Jack, it's hard at the time to mention it, but I rather had the impression that you didn't like me. I didn't like you? Why, Bart, what do you mean? Well, I felt that you resented my taking over your program while you were in New York. I? <laughs> I resented me? Listen, fellas. Did I ever say one word against this gentleman? <laughs> Did I? You see, Bart, you're wrong. I regard you as one of my best friends. Ah, oh, you're full of complaints. <laughs> Mary, smell your gardenia. <laughs> well, Bart, Bart, won't you join us at the table? Yeah, sit down, Herbie, and have some chow. Thanks, I believe I will. Now, here's a plate, Bart, all thick. Well, two and a half sardines and a biscuit. Well, it's not much, I... Really must apologize. Not at all. This is fun. It's like being shipwrecked. <laughs> well, that's, that's what we're having, a shipwreck party, you know? Yes, sir. Won't you have some of this punch, Bart? It's very good. Yes, have a cup, Bart. My, what a beautiful punch bowl. Yes, yes, it is. Ronnie Coleman's, isn't it? <laughs> yes, yes. Yes, it is, it is. We're very dear friends, you know. Oh, Rochester, bring your Marshall, Mr. Marshall some tea. Tea, 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 tea. You'd like some tea, wouldn't you, Bart? Yes, thank you. Uh, how would you like it, Bart, with lemon or with irradiated, homogenized, vitamin D, evaporated milk? You can have either one. Uh, well, Jack, I think I'll just have some extra juicy, sun-ripened lemon. Oh, okay. Some tea with lemon, Rochester. Very good, sir. Hmm. Well, Andy... Andy, you never thought you were going to meet the Herbert Marshall at my house, did you? Uh, gosh, no. I feel like a darn fool with no shoes on. <laughs> well, keep them under the table. Nobody will notice it. Uh, do, you, do you like the sardines, Bart? They're delicious. Oh, my goodness. Sardines and you haven't got a finger bowl. Oh, Rochester. Yes, boss. Bring in the finger bowl. We never had any. <laughs> Well, let's bring in Saucer. <laughs> bring him in. You'll, you'll have one in a minute, Bart. By the way, Jack, what's that hanging up there on the chandelier? <laughs> that's, uh, that's, uh, that's, uh, that's a pot roast. A pot roast on the chandelier? <laughs> uh, uh, yes. Weird custom, isn't it? <laughs> Custom, it's an accident. You see, Bart, I know it sounds fantastic, but the pot roast bounced up there, you know? Bounced? Yes, yeah. You see, here's exactly what happened. I was just having a quiet little dinner at home, not expecting anybody to drop in, and my man Rochester brought in this hot plate, see? Well, I didn't know it was hot, and I grabbed for it. You see, the pot roast was on the plate, see? And the minute my fingers touched it, I threw it up in the air. Well, that's how it happened. It sounds silly, but that's the whole story. <laughs> And we will be with you again next Sunday night at the same time, broadcasting from Palm Springs, California. Palm Springs? Yes, sir. We're all going to have a little vacation. Say, Bart, would you like to come to Palm Springs with us? I don't think I'll be able to, Jack. I'm making a picture, you know. Oh. Well, if you can possibly make it, look us up. We'll be staying at the Cactus Blossom Auto Court. <laughs> uh, good night, folks. <laughs> The Jell-O Program, coming to you from the Plaza Theater in Palm Springs, California, starring Jack Benny with Mary Livingston, Phil Harris, Dennis Day, and yours truly, Don Wilson. And now, ladies and gentlemen, we bring you our master of ceremonies, toughened by the desert wind, tanned by the desert sun, and frightened by the desert prices, Jack Benny. Thank you, Jill. All again, this is Jack Benny, the sage of the sagebrush talking. And Don, I'm not the least bit frightened by the prices here in Palm Springs. After all, this is a resort. And when you're on a vacation, you expect to let yourself go and have a good time. But Jack, don't you think the hotels here are rather expensive? Not a bit, Don, considering what you get. 
Why, you take the El Mirador, the Desert Inn, the Colonial House, and places like that. They're the last word in swank and luxury. It's worth it. Oh, I agree with you there, Jack. By the way, you're stopping at the El Mirador, aren't you? Uh, no. Uh, no, Don, I have a lovely room at the T.P. Motel. <laughs> It's, um, it's a little bit out of town where it's not quite so crowded. I like it very much. The T.P. Motel. Is that run by an Indian? No, it's run by a fellow named T.P. Ginsburg. <laughs> uh, Don, uh, Motel is his uncle. Oh. <laughs> However, so <laughs> However, uh, come to uh, uh, come to think of it, Don, the uh, bellboys, the bellboys are Indian, uh, full-blooded, too. Well, that's a novelty. Novelty is right. I left a call for 7 o'clock this morning, and one of them came in and hit me on the head with a tomahawk. <laughs> Don near scalped me. By the way, Jack, I don't remember passing the T.P. Motel. Where is it located? Well, you know the road that leads to the... Uh, pardon me, Don. Come in. Mr. Benny? Yes? On behalf of the Palm Springs Chamber of Commerce... I want to welcome you to this desert paradise. Well, thank you. Thank you very much. By the way, I don't want to get personal, but how did you happen to lose your hair? I left the call for 7 o'clock. <laughs> that guy... That guy sure gets around, doesn't he? Uh, what was that you were saying, Don? Well, I asked you about that motel you're stopping at. Where's it located? Oh, the teepee. Well, um, uh, Don, here's how you get there. You know the street right out front here, the one that leads to Cathedral City? Oh, it's this side of Cathedral City. No, uh, no, Don. You go through Cathedral City. <laughs> and, then, and then you know how the road curves out and goes on to Indio. Indio? Why, you're not living way over in Indio, are you? Uh, no, uh, Don. You go through Indio. <laughs> You, uh, look, uh, the way I can explain it, you stay on Highway 66, and the only delay is when they stop you at the Arizona border. <laughs> uh, you know, for plant inspection and things like oh, that. Oh, my goodness, Jack. You mean to tell me that while we're all in Palm Springs, you're living in Arizona? Sand is sand. I'm still on the desert. <laughs> Anyway, Don, I told you uh, every place here in Palm Springs is filled up. Uh, this is the height of the season. Well, look who's here. Hello, everybody. Well, hello, Mary. Hiya, Don. Hello, Mary. Hello, Jack. What are you doing in town? <laughs> I drive in nearly every day. What am I doing in town? Why don't you stay in Beverly Hills? That's closer to Palm Springs than where you're living now. <laughs> I couldn't stay in Beverly Hills because I sublet my house. Oh, fine. He's here for five days and he sublets his house. I might be here 14 days. Who knows? You even look for a tenant when you go out to lunch. <laughs> now you're reaching. <laughs> well, down the minute Mary comes in, down goes McBenny. Yes, sir. By the way, Mary, I saw you on the street yesterday. You look very cute in your sun shorts. Thanks, Don. You look cute in yours, too. What? Don Wilson walking around town in a pair of shorts? <laughs> Boy, did he hold up traffic. I can imagine. You got a lot of nerve, Don, walking around in sun shorts. Well, Jack, everybody does it here. I know, but with your figure. Hey, that takes courage. What about you in that corny cowboy suit? Oh, I looked all right. And those high heel shoes you were wearing, wow. Well, now I've got you. For your information, young lady, all cowboys wear high heel shoes. With open toes, you're crazy. <laughs> Well, I had to cut them. They hurt my feet. What a cowboy. You should have seen him, Don, swagging around town with two guns in his belt. Three. One is a cigarette lighter. <laughs> anyway, Miss Livingston, as long as you're so cute, the next time we go horseback riding, you can very well pay for your half of the horse. Marty. Why, Jack, do you mean to say that you and Mary were both riding on one horse? Not only that, Dennis Day was a horse. <laughs> That was only for practice. We got a real nag later. Yeah, later. Oh, hello, Dennis. How are you? She is my back swage. <laughs> well, 
Dennis. Dennis, here you are in Palm Springs. How do you like it? Oh, it's swell here. But I was sure glad when it stopped raining. <laughs> Dennis, it never rains in Palm Springs. This is a desert. Well, it was sure misty the first part of the week. <laughs> it wasn't even misty. You see, Dennis, uh, Palm Springs owes its hot, uh, dry climate to the mountains that surround it. Like a storm approaching from the Pacific Ocean is always stopped by these high peaks. Oh, yeah! <laughs> yeah. There's never, thing, uh, there's never anything over Palm Springs but a great big bright sun. Well, we ought to put a cork in it. <laughs> oh, stop complaining. Fall every place. We're all having a wonderful time here. Hey, Dennis, where are you staying? I'm living with Mr. Benny, far, far away. <laughs> <laughs> yes, uh, we couldn't get a place right here in town, so Dennis is with me at the TP Motel. It's nice there, isn't it, Dennis? I'll say. We saw the 12th movie in Phoenix last night. <laughs> Well, we made it in no time. Gee whiz, Jack. Aren't you lonesome living so far away from everybody? No, we like to rough it. We've even got Indian bellboys. Gosh, am I lucky. I told them to wake me up at 7 o'clock this morning, and I didn't even feel it. <laughs> well, Dennis, you're the only guy I know of that sleeps with his hat on. <laughs> well, now that you're here, how about singing a number for all of our Palm Springs guests? Okay. I've had a lot of requests to sing Perfidia again. All right. Let's have it. Now, what's that? Come in. Telegram for Jack Benny. I'll take it. Hey, buddy, you got a little more hair than the other fellow that was in here. <laughs> Haven't you? Yeah, I left the call for 7.30. <laughs> I'm up at half past eight myself. Uh, who's the wire from? <laughs> uh, who's the wire from, Mary? Gee, we're having fun tonight, aren't we? Huh? Who's the wire from, Mary? <laughs> it's from the Paramount Studio, the wardrobe department. The wardrobe department? Yeah, it says, uh, Dear Mr. Benning, New Hope Along Cassidy picture goes into production tomorrow morning. Please return cow suit immediately. <laughs> A cowboy suit. Cow suit. A cowboy suit. Perfidia, sung by Dennis Day. And Dennis, you were in very good form. This uh, dry desert air is marvelous for your tonsils. I haven't got any tonsils. <laughs> oh, I... I didn't know that. And now, ladies and gentlemen... I had him taken out about three years ago. <laughs> oh, I... I see. And now, ladies and gentlemen... You're not mad, are you? <laughs> No. Of course not. You can have your tonsils out if you want to. I had mine out. And by a wonderful doctor. Doctor, nothing. Rochester took him out. <laughs> he did not. I finally wound up going to the doctor. You know that. Well, you were considering, Rochester. Oh, considering. I asked him if he knew how. That was all. <laughs> considering. Isn't it amazing, Don? All I said to Dennis was, this desert air is wonderful for your tonsils, and look at the routine we got in. <laughs> Hi, it's Jackson. Hello, Phil. Howdy, folks. How about giving out with a root and toot and western reception, huh? <laughs> well, how's that for an ovation, Jackson? Gunshots and everything. What do you mean, ovation? They were shooting at that Marcel wave in your hair. <laughs> We don't go for male beautifying around these bar strangers. No, sir. Hello, Phil. I haven't seen you around all week. Yes, we were looking for you. Where are you living? I'm stopping out here at the Dud Ranch. <laughs> Phil, you mean Dude Ranch. No, Dud. There ain't a dame on the plane. <laughs> oh. <laughs> well, that's too bad. Huh? Say, Jackson, now, uh, where are you living? Well, I couldn't get a place right here in town, Phil, so I'm staying at the T.P. Motel. The T.P. Motel? Where's that? It's just this side of Birmingham, Alabama. <laughs> oh, stop, will you? <laughs> Alabama. That's a big fib, isn't it, Dennis? It sure is. <laughs> Dennis, 
<laughs> Dennis, don't be funny or I'll take off my shoe and give you a call for 7 o'clock right now. <laughs> Say, Phil, you know, this vacation is doing you a world of good. You look much better here at the Springs than you do in Hollywood. Yeah, I do look healthier, don't I? No, you, you don't look healthy, Phil. Here's what I mean. You see, in Hollywood, you always look like you had a bad night. But here, you look like you had a bad night with the window open. <laughs> there, uh, there is a difference, believe me. Well, you see, Jackson, I've been getting a lot of rest here in Palm Springs. How do you like my tan? What tan? Tan little fingers and tan little toes. They tell them no, no. Phil, there's a Greyhound bus that leaves here in five minutes. Be honest. But I'm... I'm serious, Phil. You've got the wrong plan on the kind of life to lead down here. What do you mean? Well, while you're out here on the desert, you ought to get some exercise. Now, take me, for instance. The minute I get hit on the head with that tomahawk, I jump out of bed raring to go. The first thing I do is put on my shorts and go for a long hike. No kidding. And then I put on my cowboy suit, jump on a horse, and away I go across the wide open space. Then I put on my bathing trunks. Over your cowboy suit? No, I take that off. <laughs> then I put on my bathing trunks and swim all afternoon. Boy, I swim till it's time to go to bed. Then he puts on his night shirt and walks in his sleep. <laughs> I do not. Well, you're going pretty fast there, Jackson. Don't you ever relax and take it easy? Sure. Lots of nights I sit around play cards with Dennis. I'm teaching him gin rummy. Hey, kid? I thought we were playing bridge. No, 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 no. Uh, gin rummy, the dunes is closed. You know. <laughs> anyway, there's nothing else to do at the TP. Well, then why are you living way out there, Jackson? What's the sense of it? Phil, I've explained the whole thing to Don. I tried to get a room here in town. Everything was filled up. Well, I can't understand that. The little woman and I got a beautiful bungalow at the La Paz Guest Ranch. It's expensive, but it's worth it. Well, you're you're very lucky, Don. And I have a lovely apartment at the Lone Palm. It's not cheap, but look what you get. Well, you're lucky, too. But those are the breaks a fella gets, that's all. You kids were fortunate enough to get swell accommodations, and I have to live in a dinky little auto court. Why don't you loosen up, Bob? <laughs> Dennis, it's not a question of money. I'd much rather be here in town. Well, Jackson, if you want to live in a high-class place, let me call up Charlie Farrell at the racket club. Got tennis courts and everything. The, uh, racket club, eh? Yeah, it'll cost you dough, but it's worth every penny of it. Oh. Well, well, let's have an orchestra number, Phil, and we'll, uh, we'll talk about it later, huh? <laughs> well, wait a minute, Jackson. I better give that club a buzz right now. I'm sure they'll have a room for you. Oh, then again, they may not, and I'll be disappointed. No. You, uh, you better play something, Phil. Oh, Jack, let him make the reservation. Never mind. You've got two guns. You can always kill yourself. <laughs> I said he can call up after the program. This is much more important. Now, let's have some music. Okay. I was wondering, Mr. Benny, how much do I owe you for gin rummy? Uh, $30,000. Play, Phil. I've had enough trouble with tenors. I'm going to keep this one. <laughs> that was, there'll be some changes made played by Phil Harris and his orchestra who haven't got changed for a quarter. <laughs> you know, Phil... Uh, you know, even your boys, though, they look much better out here on the desert. I don't know, in Hollywood, they always look so pale and haggard. You're right, Jackson. This climate is good for them. Sure is. Look at your guitar player there. Gee, his face is as red as a beet. Where'd he get that tan? He passed out in front of a fireplace. <laughs> He looks like a waffle there. Say, Jack, huh. you know what I did? What? While Phil was playing his band number, I sat down and wrote a beautiful poem all about Palm Springs. Well, if you wrote it that quick, it can't be any good. Say, Don... Oh, it's awfully cute, Jack. Let me read it. I told you, Mary, we don't want to hear your poem. You let me read it, or I'll get you a room at the racket club. <laughs> all right, read it. What's the title of your little masterpiece? Did you ever see a palm springing? Uh, well, that's silly enough to begin with. Go ahead. <coughs> <coughs> oh, take a trip to Old Palm Springs in the desert, oh so sandy. But don't forget to bring your rubbers. You will find they come in handy. Mary, it's not raining here anymore. How I love your talk with Falls and your Indians whom I talk with. <laughs> Off 
up with. Oh, my goodness. And I love your ice cream sodas. You take vanilla and I'll take chocolate. <laughs> well, that's it. Uh, and now, ladies and gentlemen... Hey, Jackson, I'll let the kid finish her fall. Yes, go ahead, Murray. Oh. About Palm Springs, I saw... Palm oh. <laughs> About Palm Springs, I shout with glee, it certainly is the place to be. For Don and Phil and little me, but Jack always stays where it's next to free. <laughs> I try to get a room in town, and how many times do I have to tell you? Phil, call up the racket club, will you? Okay, Jackson, and I'll get you the best bungalow in the place. I'm sick of these insinuations around here. <laughs> Hello, operator, get me the racket club. Hold it, hold it, I forgot to bring my tennis shoe. Oh. That's too bad, Phil, but I did. Boy, that was a close one. <laughs> oh, quiet. Phil, I'll send for my tennis shoes, and then you can call up. Let me finish my poem, will you? Oh, yes. Go ahead. So I'll return to old Palm Springs when the cactus is in bloom. And it... There's the phone. I'll take it. Maybe it's a club. Yeah. Hello? 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 Hello, oh, boss? This is Rochester. <laughs> Yes, sir. Where are you calling from? I'm over here at the TV Motel. <laughs> I'm the weather in California. <laughs> it's nice here. Incidentally, I thought I told you to come to Palm Springs and pick me up. I had an accident with the car, boss. One of these Indians around here shot an arrow right through the gas tank. <laughs> Through the gas tank? Was he intoxicated? No, he thought the Maxwell was a buffalo. <laughs> well, that's just silly. My Maxwell, a buffalo. Well, they're both gone near extinct. <laughs> Never mind. Now, Rochester, you get right out and fix that gas tank. With all those arrows flying around, I ain't gonna bend over. <laughs> Sir, I don't want any more stalling. So get over here because I'm tired and I want to get to bed. I can get you a room at the racket club, the MC in the washroom room with the pal of mine. <laughs> Thanks, just the same. But do as I tell you, now come on into town. Okay, but I can't leave for a little while, boss. I'm under the sun lamp. <laughs> under the sun lamp? Yeah, I want my friends to know I've been on the desert. All right, but hurry up. And incidentally, Rochester, I want you to pack up my cowboy suit and send it back to Hollywood. Paramount wants it. The 10 gallon hat, too? Yes. I'm throwing your socks in there. Well, take them out. And listen, Rochester, when you get to Palm Springs, you'll find me waiting in front of the theater. Okay, goodbye. Goodbye. Oh, say, boss. What? Have we got any use for a growth of peace pipe? <laughs> A gross of peace pipe? Yeah, I just won them in a crap game. <laughs> Rochester, I told you not to gamble with those Indians. Well, they got a lot of wobble. I don't care. <laughs> I'm teaching them gin rummy. Now, goodbye. So long, boy. That kills me. Stay there gambling, and I'll be stuck here till all hours of the night. So I'll return to old Palm Springs when the cactus is in oh, bloom. Oh, stop with that poem. Play, Phil. When the cactus is in bloom. <laughs> you sure make Longfellow look like a nickel. <laughs> And we will be with you again next Sunday night at the same time, broadcasting once more from Palm Springs. Hey, Jackson, you want me to call up the racket club now? I'll talk to you about it later, Phil. Uh, good night, folks. The Jell-O program coming to you from the Plaza Theater in Palm Springs, California, starring Jack Benny. With Mary Livingston, Phil Harris, Dennis Day, and yours truly, Don Wilson. And now, ladies and gentlemen, for our second broadcast from Palm Springs, we're going to show you how Jack and all of us have been enjoying our vacation here on the desert. As you remember, last week, Jack was living quite a little distance from Palm Springs at a place called the T.P. Motel. But a few days ago, he rented a house here in town with a swimming pool. Yeah, with us. <laughs> Dennis, don't interrupt. <laughs> Go ahead, Don. Anyway, last Thursday, Jack invited us all over to his pool for a swim. It was a beautiful sunny day, and Jack told us to get there early so we'd have a full day outdoors. Rochester, the gang will be over pretty soon, so I think I'll take my swimming lesson before they get here. Okay. 
Now watch this, Rochester. I'm going to swim clear across the pool. Clear across? It's only six feet. <laughs> Too bad. I'm sorry I haven't got the Atlantic Ocean here. Now keep your eye on me and tell me when I do anything wrong. But boss, I don't know anything about swimming. I gave you an instruction book last night. Why didn't you read it? I was working on that Navajo rug for your father. <laughs> You're supposed to weave in the daytime. <laughs> now, here I go across the pool, Rochester. Have you got the gun? Right here, boss. Well, start me off. Okay. On your mark. Get set. I'm off. <laughs> wow. Whew. Well, I did it. I swam clear across the pool. How was that, Rochester? Fine. Now try it without your water wings. <laughs> Nothing doing. This is the deep end. Oh, well, I've had enough swimming for a while. Ain't you going to take your diving lesson? Oh, yes. Here, help me out. <laughs> there. Now hold my water wings and I'll dive in. I think I'll dive from the high board. That'll be a real thrill. Uh-huh. Of course, I'm not used to this. Maybe I ought to dive off the low board. That's fun, too. Uh huh. Of course. Oh, why bother? I'll dive right here from the edge of the pool. There's one more way, boss. I can dunk you. <laughs> no. No, I'll dive in. Here I go. One, two, whee! There he goes. When he takes them water wings off, he sinks like a rock. Oh, hello, Miss Livingston. Hello, Rochester. Did the rest of the gang get here yet? No, ma'am. You're the first one. <laughs> sure is a beautiful day. Yes, it's lovely. Gee, look at those mountains all around us. Majestic, ain't they? <laughs> Can I get you a glass of lemonade, Miss Livingston? No, thank you. Where's Mr. Benny? He's down at the bottom of the pool. The bottom of the pool? Oh, yes, there he is, coming up. That's his toupee. Mr. Benny's over here. <laughs> Darn you, Rochester. I almost drowned. Why didn't you throw me the life preserver? I couldn't. I was sitting on it. Well, you could have got up. Now, pull me out. There. Oh, hello, Mary. Hello, Jack. Oh, boy, get a load of that bathing suit. What's the matter with it? The first one I ever saw with long pants. <laughs> These aren't long pants. When my trunks get wet, they creep down. <laughs> they'll be all right when they dry out. When they dry out, they'll break your leg. They will not. This material is very good. Say, so you've got your bathing suit on, Mary. Why don't you go, uh, go in for a swim? Oh, I'll wait till the others get here. Hey, Jack, what's that canoe doing in the swimming pool? That canoe? Oh, Rochester won it from an Indian. You know, he brought his dice with him. Would you like a string of beads, Miss Limson? <laughs> Rochester, I told you last week to stop gambling with the Indians. Boss, when a man pays me, I don't look up to see if there's a feather in his hair. <laughs> well, I want you to cut it out. You got more Indian stuff now than Fred Harvey's. <laughs> so take it easy. Hey, Jack, look. Here comes Mr. Billingsley, your boarder. Oh, yes. What's he doing here? Oh, he arrived a few hours ago. Claims he flew in from Hollywood on his magic carpet. Over these mountains? Oh, you're as bad as he is. <laughs> oh, hello, Mr. Billingsley. Good morning, Mr. Benny. Been in for a dip, I see. <laughs> yes, uh... Uh, yes, yeah. Uh, uh, why don't you go in for a swim, Mr. Billingsley? I'd love to, but my tuxedo is at the cleaners. <laughs> oh, yes, he always swims formal. You know? <laughs> hmm. Say, Jack, uh, I think I'll stretch out and take a sun bath. Go ahead. Watch out for that sun, Mary. It's pretty hot. Here's a can of oil. I'm not going to rub that stuff on me. Here, take this can. Nothing doing. It's still got a sardine in it. <laughs> Sardine. Shall I bring you a cracker, boss? Never mind. 
think I'll take a sun bath, too. Rochester, rub some oil on my back. You mean out of this can? Yes. I did that yesterday, and the cat licked it off faster than I could put it on. <laughs> well, that cat isn't around here today. Rub me. Okay. Gee, Mary, just think. Here we are taking a sun bath, and right above us are snow-covered mountains. Aren't those peaks beautiful? They're sharp, too. My magic carpet is in shreds. <laughs> oh, that's too bad. How are you going back to Los Angeles? With a banjo on my knee. <laughs> well, that was my fault. <laughs> hey, Mary, Mary, you better, you better cover up there or you'll get sunburned. I'm all right. Gee, you look cute in that bathing suit. No kidding, Mary, you look just like Miss Hollywood. Oh, hello, Dennis. Hello, Mr. Benny. Stand up, Mary. Let's see your suit in the back. There. Oh, boy! Dennis! <laughs> now behave yourself or I'll take away your pass to my swimming pool. Did he get a pass? I had to buy a membership. Mary, I can't start a swimming club without members. Say, Mr. Benny, you got a lot of swell records here. Do you mind if I play your Victrola? No, no. Go right ahead, Dennis. It's the club Victrola. Any member can play it. Oh, Mr. Billingsley, are you sure you wouldn't like to go in for a swim? No, thanks. I'll just run up to my room for a sun bath. To your room? Oh, did you bring a sun lamp with you? No, just a glow worm. Goodbye. <laughs> he must have traded in his lightning bug. <laughs> oh, well. Look, Mr. Benny, here's one of my records. Would you like to hear it? Yeah, that would be swell. Go ahead, Dennis, put it on. Gee, the sun is hot now. Sure feels good, though. You know, it's fun just stretching out here and... Ouch! Oh, 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 oh! What's the matter, Mr. Benny? His trunk's just dried. <laughs> oh, my leg. I can't understand the suit shrinking so much. My own father sold it to me. <laughs> well, that was all right. No kidding, Dennis. That was a swell record. Now, uh, why don't you go in for a swim? I don't know how to swim. Oh. Oh, you don't? Uh, say, Mary... I meant to learn, but I never got around to it. Oh. Oh, didn't you? Say, Mary... You're not going to kick me out of the club, are you? No! No, then just sit in the sun and peel. Now, forget it. Say, Mary, I wish Don and Phil would get here so we can get started on our hike. Now, wait a minute, Jack. I told you I'm not going on any hike. You are, too. We're going up to Tockwood Falls. It's one of the most beautiful sights uh, in this part of the country. Here comes your friend for some more of that sardine oil. <laughs> oh, yes. Here, here, kitty, kitty, kitty. kitty. Watch out, kitty, or he'll be playing love and bloom on you. I just want to pet him, that's all. Here, kitty. Hey, Jack, here come Don and Phil. Oh, yeah. Hiya, Jackson. Hello, Mary. Hello, everybody. Hi, Hello, Don. Hi, Phil. Hi, Phil. Well, fellas, what do you think of this place I rented? Not bad, eh? Hey, it's all right. And what a beautiful swimming pool. Move over, Don. I can't see it. <laughs> it's not that small. And, Phil, if our swimming pool isn't big enough for you, you can very well stay out of it. I don't want to go in anyway. I just had my hair did. <laughs> That's hair done, and it ain't becoming. <laughs> Incidentally, fellas, before entering pool... Please take shower. How much does that cost? No, don't try to be funny. The shower is free. Towels, 15 cents! <laughs> now cut that out! And I'll tell you one thing, fellas. I'm very lucky to get a house like this at the height of the season. Ah, uh, you certainly are, Jack. It's a lovely yard. And look at those fruit trees. Boy, get a load of those oranges. They'll leave those oranges right on the trees. I don't want to break up a crate. <laughs> Gee, Percy, they counted them. Mary, that's part of the landscaping, and I don't want them disturbed. Say, Jack, uh, don't you think we ought to get started on our hike? Uh, yes, Don, we'll be leaving just as soon as our Indian guide gets here. Indian guide? Yes, he knows the trail. Now, get into your slacks, Mary, so you'll be ready. I am not going on that long walk. Then why did you join the Benny Swimming and Hiking Club? You told me Mrs. Roosevelt belonged. <laughs> I did not. I said I sent her an application blank. That was all. Now, come on, we're all going. Say, Jackson, how do you like my hiking outfit? Oh, you look swell, Phil. Well, what's that bottle sticking out of your coat pocket? 
Well, that's a little Kentucky painkiller in case a snake bites me. Well, you might need it at that. Hey, wait a minute, Phil. There's another bottle in your hip pocket. What's that for? Oh, that's standard equipment. <laughs> oh, I see. Well, now, come on, everybody. Let's get ready. I'm all set, Jack. I got the rope and everything. The rope? Yeah, I hear the trail's pretty steep in places, so I figured we'd all have to tie ourselves together. Oh. Then in case one of us happens to slip, the others can keep him from falling. Well, that's a beautiful theory, Don, but, uh, supposing you happen to be the one that slips. Uh, what about us? Next Sunday, the Aldridge family. You said it. Well, let's get started. Go in and change, will you, Mary? Okay, I'll be right back. Look who's here, boss! Oh, yes. Me, Indian guy. You, Jack Benny? Oh, I mean, yes. Yes. (laughs) Now, look, uh, Leaping Deer... That's, uh, that's your name, isn't it? Leaping Deer, my uncle. Me, Eagle Puss. Oh, he couldn't come, eh? Well, now, look, Eagle Puss. Uh, we'll be starting in a few minutes. Uh, what do you get for taking a party up to Tockwood Falls? Ten dollars. Ten dollars? I'll get it back, boss. <laughs> All right, all right. Come on, fellas, let's get ready. Hey, Dennis, have you got the water jug? Yeah, I got it. Good. Uh-oh, somebody picked an orange. Phil, put that orange back. Go ahead, put it back. Well, I'll put it up there. we got to get going here. Come on, Eagle Foot. Left, 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 right, left. Now, everybody stay on the trail, single file, so we don't get lost. I'm tired, Jack. Let's rest for a while. Me too. Okay, okay. Company! Oh! What a bunch of sissies. It was nice of you to bring your drum along, Mr. Billingsley. I'm sorry, I swallowed my pipe. Your pipe? Now, don't worry about your pipe. The drum is just dandy. Hey, Jackson, all this walking is monotonous. It is, eh? Yeah, and if a snake don't bite me pretty soon, I'm going to take a drink anyway. (laughs) Don't you touch it. Say, Eagle Puss, uh, we've been walking... (laughs) Eagle Puss, we've been walking a long time. How much further is it to Tockwitz Falls? Me don't know. Eagle Puss off the beam. Oh, lost, eh? Well, you're a fine Indian. You should have known that. His tomahawk says made in Japan. <laughs> well, well, what'll we do? Here's a sign, Mr. Benny. Talk with Paul, straight ahead. Oh, yes. Well, let's get moving. Oh, I'm hungry, Jack. Let's stop and eat. Don, we're not eating till we get to the fall. But I haven't had a bite of food since breakfast. I know, Don, I know. You're wasting away to a shadow of Mount Whitney. <laughs> we'll eat later. Say, Phil, what are you doing with that bottle in your hand? Big Joe, a snake bit me. (laughs) That's impossible. At this time of year, rattlesnakes are in hibernation. They're in their holes, sleeping. Well, this one's a playboy. (laughs) Oh, stop, will you? Well, all right, Eagle Puss, there's the sign. Read it. We take them trail up mountain. Follow me, pale faces. So long, boys! (laughs) Rochester. Now, Rochester, you're coming too. All right, fellas, let's go. I'm tired, Mr. Benny. This water jug is heavy. Well, let somebody else take it. Phil, you carry the water jug. I got the hatchet. Here, John, you take it. Oh, I'm carrying the rope. You take the water, Mary. I got the camera. Here, Jack, you carry it. I'm loaded up with the compass and everything. (laughs) Here, Dennis, you take the water jug. Okay. There's something funny going on around here. Well, you had a rest, didn't you? All right, fellas, let's go. Forward! March! <laughs> oh, why, why, Mr. Billingsley, what happened there? I stumbled. Oh. 
Well, don't bother with the drum now. I've got the fife again. <laughs> Well, we don't need that either. Gee, fellas, get a load, get a load of this rock formation. You know, I've never seen a view with so much... Hey, hey, what's that? Look, Jackson, there's something moving in that bush up ahead. Yeah, yeah, that's what I meant. Wonder what it is. Gee, it might be a wild animal. Oh, Rochester! Yes, boss! Go find out what's in that bush! Let it remain a mystery! <laughs> now do as I tell you! <laughs> Rochester, you're nothing but a coward! I found that out years ago! <laughs> Well, all right. Let's walk around the bush. Come on, fellas. We can pick up the trail on the other side. Lead the way, Eagle Puss. <laughs> Gee, it's rocky up here. Say, Eagle Puss, uh, what are all these holes in this in the side of the mountain here? Many moons ago, white man dig gold here. Gold, eh? Yes, Jack. Why, even today, hikers have been known to find nuggets on this trail here. Is that so? Well, that's very interesting. Get up off your knees, Jack. <laughs> I'm just bending over. This knapsack is heavy. Well, let's get going, fellas. Gee, you know, fellas, I wouldn't have missed this hike for anything in the world. Gosh, all the vastness of this gorgeous scenery makes one realize the insignificance of man. Especially me. I can't even swim. Dennis, <laughs> you forget about that. You're right, Jackson. Look at that brook down there with the weeping willows hanging over it. Yeah. What a painting that would make for my bass drum. <laughs> well, I wish you'd put it on there. Your telephone number is a little too obvious. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, golly, but no, no kidding, fella. Gee, you talk... I never saw anything place like You talk about scenery. Hey, fellas. Hey, look at that cliff over there. Look at that cliff over there. Gee, it makes an echo, too. It makes an echo, too. <laughs> Hey, this is fun. Hello there. Hello there. Hello there. Hello there. Hello there. Take it easy, Bob. I'm tired. <laughs> Gee, this, this trail is getting real rocky now. Watch them step. Trail face no papoose anymore. Okay, I'll watch it. Gee whiz, fellas, look at those white fleecy clouds against that blue sky. You ever see anything so... Whoop! Help me up, Rochester. Why don't you watch where you're going? Well, I didn't see that. Hey, wait a minute. Wait a minute, what's this? What's this? I saw it first. You saw what first? Right there. That gold nugget. It's mine. Mine. Where, Jack? I don't see it. Right there. I moved my foot and there it was. Gee, there may be hundreds of them here. And they're all mine. Oh, boy, I can retire. No more slaving on the radio. No more pictures with Fred Allen. Oh, Jack, stop. I won't stop. Look. Look, I discovered gold. It's gold. Gold. Gold is right. That's your bridge work. <laughs> Oh, yes. Darn that thing. It's always falling out. Pick it up, Rochester. Well, come on, fellas. Let's get to the falls. Ready, Mr. Billingsley? Forward. March. Left, right, left. Left, 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 right, left. Left, right. Well, fellas, here we are at Tockwitz Falls. It was a long hike, but it was worth it. Isn't that a beautiful sight? 
tons of water falling 90 feet into an icy pool. Just listen to it. <laughs> ah, what a sight. What a thrill. What a thrill. Oh, quiet. <laughs> Good night, Joni. The Jell-O program coming to you from the Plaza Theater in Palm Springs, California, starring Jack Benny. With Mary Livingston, Phil Harris, Dennis Day, and yours truly, Don Wilson. And now, ladies and gentlemen, as you may remember, three weeks ago, a certain young man came to Palm Springs, run down, anemic, and pale. Oh, I was a wreck. And now, after three weeks on the desert, I bring you that picture of health, that Greek god, that bronze Adonis, Jack Benny. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. Jalo again, this is Jack Benny talking, and folks, I wish this was television. No kidding, Don, I don't want to sound vain, but isn't it marvelous the way this deep tan of mine sets off my big blue eyes? <laughs> And all, all in three short weeks. Well, you do look wonderful, Jack. Your face is as brown as a berry. Isn't it, though? But I meant to ask you, uh, what are those three round white spots in the middle of your forehead? Those white spots on my forehead? Yes. Well, I sent Rochester out for a cigar the other day, and I was asleep in the sun when he came back. So uh, that's where he laid the chain. <laughs> You see? Oh, yes, those spots look like a quarter and two dimes. Exactly. In other words, Don, I'm just 45 cents short of a complete tan. <laughs> but, Don, isn't it a shame we have to go back home next week? You know, uh, you're commencing to look great yourself. Ah, oh, I feel good, too, Jack. As a matter of fact, in the short time we've been here, I've lost four pounds off my stomach. You lost uh, four pounds off your stomach, eh? Mm hmm. Well, Don, if you're interested in finding out where they went, uh, Take a peek in a rear view mirror. <laughs> but um, at that, you have lost a little. How did you do it? Well, I go horseback riding every day, and it's wonderful exercise. Oh, it is. It is. There's nothing in the world like horseback riding. I do it all the time. You do what all the time? Oh, hello, Mary. We were just talking about horses. You know, Don, I've had a lot of experience with them, and, and the main thing to remember... Oh, stop, will you? All you know about horses is they don't wear high heel shoes. <laughs> That's so. I know plenty. <laughs> Tell Don what happened at Roger's stables the other morning. Never mind. What was it, Mary? Jack wanted to get on a horse, so he tried to make it kneel like a camel. <laughs> well, I remember a horse in Vaudeville that used to do that. He got more money than I did. <laughs> And he could count, too. Of course, he had to. He was working on percentage. <laughs> anyway, um, I was talking to Don. You see, Don, the main thing about riding a horse is rhythm. Is that so? Yes. Now, take, for instance, galloping. When the horse goes up, I go up. When the horse goes down, I go down. And when the horse stops, leapfrog. <laughs> Now, wait a minute, Mary. The only time I fell off the horse is when I was trying that new trick, and you know it. What trick was that, Mary? Well, Jack put a handkerchief on the ground and said he'd ride by full speed and pick it up. Oh. So what happened? He picked up his handkerchief, dropped his teeth, picked up his teeth, and fell in a gopher hole. <laughs> oh, boy, you really dream it up, sister. You didn't leave out a thing. You had to tell him everything about the horse, didn't you? I didn't tell him where you tried to put the bit. <laughs> Now, lay off, will you? Don't listen to her, Don. You know, I've been riding for... Oh, hello, Dennis. Hello, Mr. Benny. Well, here I am. So I see. Uh, what are you going to sing, Dennis? Can I have some dialogue first? I got friends in the audience. <laughs> oh, yes, yes, of course. I'm sorry. Uh, tell me, kid, have you been having fun while we've been here in Palm Springs? Oh, boy, have I? Good. I will now sing Frenesy. <laughs> Wait a minute. You said you wanted some dialogue, didn't you? That was enough. I didn't want to run it into the ground. Oh. Well, there's a kid that's easy to please. All right, uh, go ahead with your song. Okay. Oh, say, Mr. Benny, I meant to ask you something. What is it, Dennis? Can I be sent to the penitentiary for parking my car in front of a fire plug? The penitentiary? Of course not. 
That's ridiculous. Darn that, Mr. Harris. What's Phil got to do with it? He said I'd get ten years, so I gave him my girl who was in the back seat. <laughs> well, don't worry about it, Dennis. You'll never see jail or your girl either. Sing, kid. <laughs> very good, very good. That was, uh... That was Frenesy, sung by Dennis C. Day and accompanied by the Guadalajara Trio through the courtesy of the Dollhouse. And very good boys. By the way, these fellows are from Mexico, aren't they, Dennis? Yes, sir. Well, thanks for appearing on our program, boys. It was really a pleasure listening to you. Él nos dijo que viniéramos. Era bueno cobrarle ahorita. Él no paga nada. Nunca tuvo intención. Oh, no sean tontos. Si ustedes creen que nos va a pagar, están locos. <laughs> hmm, uh... Uh, what did they say, Dennis? One guy said they were going to be paid for singing here tonight, and the other two said he was crazy. <laughs> oh, well, uh, tell him I'll see him tomorrow. He'll see you tomorrow, fellas. Tell him in Spanish. I can tell him in English. <laughs> anyway, boys, you were swell. Uh, and now, ladies and gentlemen, going from our vocal specialty, uh, you were swell, boys. Adios, adios. <laughs> I don't know what they're waiting around for. <laughs> no, they sang and they're through. That's all. <laughs> and now, ladies and gentlemen, going from our uh, vocal specialty to our feature attraction of the evening, as a tribute to Palm Springs, we are going to present an original mystery melodrama entitled Murder at the Racket Club or Ain't His White Flannels Messy. <laughs> Now, I will play the part. Oh, by the way, Jack, speaking of the racket club, did you finally join it? Uh, no, Don, I was thinking of joining, but, oh, after all, how often do I play tennis? Well, that isn't their only attraction. They have a beautiful swimming pool, too. I know, Don, but, oh, oh, how often do I swim? But, Jack, the club is right out there on the desert. The air is wonderful for you. Is it? Oh, how often do you breathe? <laughs> Now, wait a minute, Mary. The only reason I didn't join the racket club is because they don't take in actors. They don't take in actors? No. Don't tell me all that ham around there is just for sandwiches. <laughs> all right, I didn't join the club, and it's none of your business why. Now, getting back to our play, ladies and gentlemen... Hold everything, Jackson. Here I am, folks, the chic of Palm Canyon Drive. <laughs> well... <laughs> well, he finally got here. Listen, Sheik, the next time you're late, into your tent I'll creep and hit you on the head with your option. <laughs> now, where were you? Well, it ain't my fault, Jackson. This is what happened. I was walking over here in plenty of time for the broadcast, and I bumped into a girl I hadn't seen in years. Oh. In fact, I've never seen her before. <laughs> I knew that. Well, anyway, I honked my horn and said, uh, Are you going my way, babe? Honked your horn? I thought you said you were walking. I was. What? I always carry a little horn with me. Whistling ain't polite. <laughs> oh, you carry a horn. Well, you're the only masher I ever met with accessories. <laughs> Where is this girl, Phil? Uh, I'd like to meet her. Well, she had to go to work. She's a date picker in Indio. <laughs> a date picker? Yeah, you ought to see her climb a tree. <laughs> I'd love to. Well, Phil, I'm glad you finally got here. <laughs> I, just... <laughs> I just started uh, casting our murder mystery. Am I going to be in it? Yes, Phil, you've got a very important part. You're going to be the doorman at the racket club. Well, that's life for you. Tonight, I'm the doorman there, and last night, the doorman threw me out. <laughs> You'd have gotten a bigger laugh if you'd have read that a little faster. I don't know what you were stalling around there. <laughs> well, anyway, you're the doorman. I'm going to be the chief of police of Palm Springs. Dennis, you're going to be a sergeant. And Don, you're going to be a member of the force. Mary, in our play tonight, you're going to be a glamorous Hollywood movie star, Miss Mitzi LaRue. And uh, you came to Palm Springs to be near your sweetheart. Oh, boy. Who has just been murdered. Oh, nuts. <laughs> I can't help it. That's the plot. Anyway, folks, this play will go on immediately after a number by Phil Harris and his orchestra. Are you ready, Phil? All set, Jackson. Say, Mr. Harris. What do you want, kid? Can I borrow your horn? I want to get another girl. <laughs> Give it to him, Phil. A honk it twice, Dennis. I'm free tonight myself. Playboy. <laughs> 
That was Wise Old Owl, played by Phil Harris and his Palm Springs Orchestra. Palm meaning, I've got the boys on my hands. And Springs meaning, they ought to take a drink out of one sometime. <laughs> and now, ladies and gentlemen, for our play, Murder at the Racket Club. ¿Qué nos pague para ir? Te dije que no nos iba a pagar nada. ¿Qué se puede esperar de un hombre como Jack Penny? Now, wait a minute. <laughs> Fellas, wait a minute. I told you I'd take care of you tomorrow. Manana, manana. Manana, he says. Manana. Exactly. Now, the opening scene, ladies and gentlemen. I don't know what they're waiting here for. I can't... All right, fellas, adios. Now, the opening scene is the police station in Palm Springs, California. Police Captain O'Benny is seated at his desk, attired in a sun helmet, a tin badge, and shorts. Curtain. Music. There's the phone, Chief. I'll take it, O'Day. Hello? Palm Springs Police Station and Date Shop. <laughs> Benny speaking. What's that, miss? You're taking a sun bath and there's a peeping Tom annoying you? Don't worry, I'll take care of it immediately. O'Day, get away from that window. (laughs) Donna, I forgot to ask her if she wanted some stuffed dates. Hey, Sarge. Yes, Chief? You arrested two fellas last night and I want you to stop filling this jail with crooks. Well, I gotta do something with them. I don't care. During the height of the season, this jail is for tourists. (laughs) I'm getting $12 a cell, American plan. We can catch crooks during the summer. Morning, Chief. Morning, Sarge Wilson. How are things on your beat? Marvelous. I sold 40 pounds of dates. Good. <laughs> Keep going like that. You'll soon be a lieutenant. Thank you, sir. <laughs> but, Wilson, I wish you wouldn't push the plain dates. You know, we make our profit on the stuffed ones. O'Day, where are you going with those satin bedspreads? I thought I'd make cell 9 and 10 into a bridal suite. It's a good idea. Put a canopy over the bunk. You know, if business keeps up this way, it'll really be... I'll take it. Hello? Palm Springs Police Station and date shoppy. (laughs) Oh, Benny speaking. What's that? What? Murder at the Racket Club? Well, there's life for you. That's the title of our play. Quiet, you. (laughs) Yes? Yes, we'll be right over. What's up, Chief? Les Stofan, the tennis pro at the racket club, just phoned that Kerry Carew, the well-known playboy, has been murdered. Get the squad car, Wilson. Yes, sir. O'Day, bring along some stuffed dates, the ones with the gold tinfoil. We ought to clean up at the racket club. Okay, Chief. Now, come on, fellas. I'm going to find the murder of Kerry Carew, or my name ain't... I'll take it. Hello? Yes? Look, fellas, I told you, manana, manana. <laughs> Adio. My goodness. Now, come on, fellas. I'm going to find the murder of Kerry Carew, or my name ain't... Calling all cars. Calling all cars. Be on lookout for newlyweds. Bridal suite now available at police station. That is all. I forgot to tell him about the canopy. Well, boys, here's the place. How do we get in, Chief? Right through the door. See that sign there? Racket Club, members only. Open up. Open up. It's the police. Yes, sir. What can I do for you? I'm Chief of Police, and I want to get in here. Are you a member of the club? No, I'm here to investigate a murder. I want to see the body. Well, if you're not a member, you can't come in. What? I'll have to throw the body over the fence to you. (laughs) What are you talking about? A man has been killed on these premises, and I'm going to find out who done it. That's who did it. No wonder you're not a member of this club. (laughs) Oh, fine. From Harris yet. (laughs) Now, look, bud, please. We got to get in here. I'm sorry, but you'll have to speak to the owner, Charlie Farrell. Here he comes now. Oh, hello, Mr. Farrell. Say, what's all this racket at the racket club? (laughs) Thank you. Thank you. You can thank them later. (laughs) 
Now listen, Farrell. I'm Captain O'Benny of the Palm Springs Police Department. Glad to know you. Remember me in Seventh Heaven with Janet Gaynor? Yes. <laughs> I remember. Now listen. Terry Crew has been murdered on these premises. And I'm going to find out who done it. Who done it? I warned him. <laughs> All right. Who did it? Who did it? Well, how about it, Farrell? Do I get in here or not? Just as soon as you sign this membership blank. That'll be $300, please. $300? Well, I don't take in that much at the police station all season. Well, you want to. You're charging more for rooms than I am. <laughs> okay, I'll make out a check. Hmm. Pay to the order of the racket club. $300. Boy, our date's going to go up. <laughs> you said it. Well, I'm a member now. All right, Wilson O'Day, follow me. Now, tell me, Farrell... Was Terry Carew alone when he was murdered? No, there were several people with him. I see. Well, the first thing I'm going to do is grill the suspect. I'm sorry, the grill doesn't open till noon. <laughs> I'm ignoring that, brother. <laughs> well, here we are in the lounge. Quiet, everybody. Dates, dates, get your fresh dates here. <laughs> Would you like a box of stuffed dates, sir? Not him. That's the body. <laughs> now, everyone line up. I'm going to find out a few things around here. Who are you, miss? I'm a movie star, Missy LaRue. What studio are you with? RKO. Oh, yes. I saw you in Kitty Poo. <laughs> Have you played any other outstanding roles lately? Yes, I had ten words in Western Union. Stop. <laughs> now, Miss LaRue, I want you to tell me everything you know about this crime. I don't know anything. I was just sitting here popping my bubble gum. And you didn't hear a shot? No, I really pop it, kid. <laughs> now, don't evade the issue, Miss LaRue. You were in love with the victim, weren't you? Pardon me, uh, dry martini boy. No, no toothpick in the olive. I like the bob for it. Hey, wait a minute. What's your name? Uh, Butterworth. Charles Butterworth. Oh, Butterworth, eh? <laughs> oh, that, thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. Never mind that. <laughs> now listen, Butterworth. How'd you know my name? <laughs> you just told me. Well, I better watch that. <laughs> now, listen here, Butterworth. What do you know about Terry Carew? Oh, a lovely chap. I'm going to play tennis with him this afternoon. <laughs> going to play tennis with him? Why, Terry Carew is dead. Too bad. Now, if he wins, he won't be able to jump over the net. <laughs> of course not. Look, the man is dead. There he is laying on the floor. Well, I was laying there last night, and I'm not dead. <laughs> Take my word for it, Carew is dead. Now, come clean, Butterworth. What do you know about this murder? Well, I tell you, Captain, I was just sitting here bobbing for olives. That's my hobby, you know. <laughs> yes, yes, go on. Yeah. Miss LaRue, watch that bubble gum. <laughs> Continue, Mr. Butterworth. Oh, forgive me, Captain O'Benny. Are you looking for a murderer? Yes, I am. Then, uh, would I do, Captain? Who's... Who's that guy? That's uh, Peter Laurie. Peter Laurie? Thank you. Now, listen, folks. Will you please stop applauding these guys? One of them is a murderer. <laughs> now, Mr. Laurie, what is that gun doing in your hand? Oh, I was just going out to shoot pheasants. I see. Well, what's that dagger doing in your other hand? Well, I have to pick my teeth, don't I? <laughs> now, Laurie, I want the truth here. And no beating around the bush. Did you kill Terry Carew? Who? Terry Carew. Terry Carew? I don't think so. No, I'm positive I haven't, I haven't killed anyone by that name. Now, cut that out. I'm going to get to the bottom of this, and I don't want any... <coughs> What's that? Somebody threw a rock through the window. Look, Chief, there's a note on it. Give me that. Let me read it. I'm just standing here. Okay. This may be vital evidence. What does it say? We want our money. Signed the Guadalajara trail. <laughs> Well, write manana under it and throw it back. <laughs> now, Mr. Laurie. Mr. Laurie. Where did he go? He went for a plunge in my martini. <laughs> ah. 
Come on out of there, Laurie. <laughs> now, I know you're trying to hide. I want the truth. Where were you at the time of the murder? Well, I... Come on. Think fast, Mr. Moto. Oh, I was exceptionally good in that, huh? <laughs> yes, yes, you were swell. Say, what about me in seventh heaven? You were marvelous! <laughs> You were marvelous. I wish I could think of a picture I was in. <laughs> Me too. See, folks, remember what I said about the ham here? <laughs> Never mind that. This case is solved. Peter Laurie, I arrest you for the murder of Terry Carew. All right, if you insist. Tell me, shall I go voluntarily, or do you want me to struggle a bit? What? You're trying to arrest him, Jack. I made him do it. You made him do what? Yes, Jack, it was the only way we could get you over here to join our club. Oh, so that's it. Well, what about Carew, the fellow you killed? Who is he? A dummy from Bullock's window. <laughs> oh, well, I thought he was much too pretty. Well, it was a good gag, fellas. As long as I'm hooked, I might as well enjoy myself. Say, Farrell, give me one of those Coca-Colas there, will you? There you are, Jack. That'll be $12. Yike! <laughs> Move over, Carew. Play, Phil. <laughs> We're a little late, folks, so good night. The Jell-O Program, coming to you from Hollywood, California, starring Jack Benny, with Mary Livingston, Phil Harris, Dennis Day, and yours truly, Don Wilson. And now, ladies and gentlemen, after a month's vacation in Palm Springs, we bring you a man who looks a month younger, as if that made any difference, <laughs> Jack Benny! <laughs> Thank you. Hello again. This is Jack Benny talking. And Don, I may only look a month younger, but believe me, I feel like a kid. If there was anything I needed, it was those four weeks on the desert. Roughing it uh, really did me a world of good. Roughing it? Well, I wouldn't exactly say that you were leading such a rough life there, Jack. Oh, you wouldn't, eh? No, I saw you out many a night in Palm Springs, and you were wearing a tuxedo. Yes, but it wasn't press. <laughs> And if you had to look close, you'd have noticed that carnation in my buttonhole was a cactus blossom. <laughs> and full of stickers. Don't tell me I didn't rough it. Why, I'm as hard as nails. Well, you feel pretty rugged now, huh, Jack? Do I, Don? You remember how soft and flabby my arms used to be? Uh-huh. Well, wait till I roll up my sleeve. I'll make a muscle for you. <laughs> wait. Ah, huh? oh, Jack, you don't have to bother. I'll take your word for it. No, no, Don. You know what a liar I am. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I want to show you. Now, watch. I'll raise my arm. There. How's that, Don? How's that muscle? Where? I don't see it. Right there on that tattoo. <laughs> see how fat the eagle is now? <laughs> see? Eagle? I thought that was a sparrow. With E pluribus unum on it? What are you talking about? I tell you, Don, I feel so good, I like to get in a scrap with someone. Wait till Dennis Day comes in, I'll straighten him out fast. <laughs> He'll never know what hit him. Oh, Jack, Jack, wait a minute. Take it easy. Take it easy, nothing. I've got a muscle, and I'm going to use it. <laughs> that kid has got to learn how to behave himself. But, Jack, you're being unfair. Ever since Dennis has been on this program, he's been a perfect little gentleman. Well-behaved and well-mannered. Well-mannered? Let me tell you something, Don. Last Monday, when I gave Dennis his salary check, he looked me straight in the eye and said, Thank you very much. Well, what's wrong with that? Don, with the check he gets, that very much is pure sarcasm. <laughs> Teach that kid to thank me. Oh, hello, Mary. Hello, Jack. What are you doing with your fist up in the air? I made a muscle for Don. I can't get my arm down. <laughs> See? See the muscle? Where? Right there. Some muscle. Looks like a marshmallow with a hangover. <laughs> the hardest marshmallow you ever saw. Boy, there's a real muscle. What are you going to do, stand there like a baking soda ad? <laughs> no, help me get my arm down. Here, pull. <laughs> Ooh, well, the eagle's a sparrow again. <laughs> but just the same, wait till Dennis gets here. I'll fix that kid. What about Dennis? I'm going to beat him up, that's all. He's been acting too fresh around here lately, and it's time I straighten him out. Straighten him out? Why don't you do something about Phil Harris? He's the wise guy. Mary, Phil is nothing but a big, playful kid. But Dennis is a real troublemaker. And he's smaller than you are. <laughs> <laughs> That's merely a coincidence. Let me ask you something, Mary. How about when we were driving back from Palm Springs and the Maxwell? 
All that kid did was complain, complain all the way in. Well, who wouldn't complain? It's a three-hour trip, and it took us four days to make it. Well? Four days from Palm Springs to Los Angeles? Why, it's only 120 miles. 129. We came by way of San Bernardino. <laughs> Besides, we stopped to enjoy the scenery. It was lovely down with those snow-capped mountains and beautiful orange groves. Oh, you and your orange groves. That's all we had for four days, orange juice. Never mind. The sign got them. All you can drink for ten cents. <laughs> now, wait a minute, Mary. Wait a minute. Don't give Don any false impressions. There, were, there was food, too. What about that delicious pressed chicken we had? It had to be pressed. You ran over it. <laughs> All right, I didn't mean to do it. It was an accident. An accident? Yes. And why did Rochester yell, Callie Ho, and chase it clear through a cornfield? <laughs> that never happened, and you know it. Would have been a very pleasant trip if you and Dennis hadn't been beefing all the time. I'll fix that, kid. By the way, Don, how did you come back to town? Well, the little woman and I took the train. It was a very nice, restful trip. Oh, the train is swell, Don, but I prefer motoring myself. I don't know, you see more of the country that way. But, Jack, even allowing for sightseeing, I can't understand why it took you four days to come from Palm Springs to Los Angeles. Oh, four days isn't so bad. That's progress. It used to take the covered wagon six. <laughs> and they didn't come by way of San Bernardino like I did. <laughs> anyway, Mary, you had a swell time in Palm Springs. You're back in Hollywood safe and sound, so forget it. Hello, everybody. Oh, here he is. All right, kid, put him up. Put him up. <laughs> You've been aching for trouble, and you're going to get it. What's going on here? <laughs> it's a long story. Jack found a muscle. It's not it at all. Come on, kid. Up with your do. I'll teach you to be careful. Well, gee, I didn't mean to run over that tin can with the lawnmower. That's not what I'm talking about. A small fine covers that. <laughs> I just don't want you to go around complaining about your trip home from Palm Springs. I was nice enough to invite you. Gosh, I drank so much orange juice, I feel like a sunset. Well, let me tell you something, Dennis. Orange juice is not only nourishing, but it's very good for you. It'll keep you from catching a cold. I won't sneeze till 1980. Well, that does it. All right, Dennis, put up your dues. Oh, Jack, will you stop being so childish? You're just picking on Dennis because he's the smallest one in our gang. Hmm. Mary's right. It's not like you, Jack, to be a bully. Why, in your physical condition, you could mangle the kids. I could? <laughs> Certainly, you're a gorilla. You don't realize your own strength. I don't? <laughs> well. No. Now, the least you can do is apologize to Dennis. Well, all right. You don't have to, Mr. Benny. I'm a rat, and that's all there is to it. <laughs> no. No, you're not a rat, kid. Well, one of us is. <laughs> Look, Dennis, you better sing your song before I lose my temper again. I don't know my own strength, like Don says. Now, what's it going to be? I'm going to sing In Dublin's Fair City. Good, good. Oh, Mary. What do you want? Help me get my arm down. It's stuck again. Okay. Ooh. Thanks, Mary. Sing, kid. <laughs> that was In Dublin's Fair City, sung by Dennis Day. And very apropos, Dennis, uh, tomorrow is St. Patrick's Day, isn't it? Sure, and it is. Yes, sir. You tell me to put up my dukes tomorrow and I'll knock your block off. <laughs> Dennis, I'm not going all the bother putting my arm up again. So control yourself. Oh, hello, Phil. Hiya, Jackson. You back in town already? Yeah, I got in last night. But you know, I don't know, I wish we could have stayed in Palm Springs a couple of more weeks. It's wonderful there. Well, personally, I'm glad to be back in the city. What's the matter, Phil? Don't you like the desert? No, that fresh air gets under my eyes and puffs them up. <laughs> oh. And I can't stand that hot sun beating down on my head. Well, why don't you wear a hat? Look, Jackson, I got gorgeous hair and it would be sheer madness to hide it. <laughs> well, that's the most conceited thing I ever heard. You know, Phil, I could have gorgeous hair, too, if I got it marcelled every week like you do. Well, why don't you? Well, maybe I will. If you can get a marcel, so can a coconut. <laughs> what? What did you say? Did I put my dukes up, Mr. Benny? Not this time, kid. This is strictly between Miss Livingston and me. You want to step out in the alley? Oh, quiet. <laughs> well, 
talking to Phil about Palm Springs. Now, how long did it... Mary, put your dupes down. <laughs> Phil, how long did it take you to drive back? Well, with all the traffic and everything, uh, uh, about an hour and 45 minutes. Only an hour and 45 minutes? Yes, and I stopped for a rumble lesson in Pomona. <laughs> well, I'll be darned. An hour and 45 minutes. That's what I can't understand, Jack. Why in the world it should take you four days to drive that distance? Well, we had a lot of tough breaks, Don, and hard luck all the way. I'll say. Just as we were pulling into Beaumont, all the tires blew out. Yeah. All four of them? All four in the spare. They've got a union. <laughs> Wait a minute, you're wrong, Mary. We had that tire trouble in Banning. Beaumont is where we ran out of gas. We ran out of gas in Azusa. No, Mary, I think it was Arcadia. Yeah, yeah, we ran out of gas in Arcadia. Arcadia is where the top blew off. The top <laughs> didn't blow off. It shook off. And besides, it didn't happen in Arcadia. It was Pasadena. It was not. It was, too. Pasadena is where we hit a bump and the headlights changed places. <laughs> oh, yes. We had motor trouble there, too. Motor trouble? Were you held up very long? Yeah, we had to stay overnight, so Jack and Rochester made a personal appearance at the theater. That's right, Don. I figured as long as we had to stay there, we might as well do our act. How was the business, Jackson? Did you pack them in? Well, it was on such short notice, Phil, and then it was raining, and besides that, we were bucking a terrific picture that was playing right across the street. Yeah? What was the name of it? The Puppets of Passion, starring Ronald Glick and Heather Noodleman. <laughs> Adults only. <laughs> but we did pretty well at that. Anyway, enough of our adventures getting back home. What do you say, Phil? How about a band number? Okay, Jackson. What do you want us to play? Something popular or something classified? <laughs> That's classical. Classified. Oh, brother, what a dodo. Well, it ain't my fault. You dragged me down to Palm Springs and I missed four weeks of night school. Oh, that's right. You did miss night school. Did it set you back any? Yeah, the teacher's going around with another guy now. <laughs> oh, she is. Say, your teacher must be good looking. Jackson, she's pretty enough to be a cigarette girl. I see. Well, Phil, let me know when you graduate from school, will you? I want to send your diploma to Ripley. Now, let's have a number. I don't care whether it's classified or classical. Just play it. Wait a minute. Come in. Pues bueno, muchachos, estamos esperando aquí mucho tiempo. No vale la pena. Mira la molestia que ya nos ha dado. Esperamos por tanto tiempo. Ya voy a pedir a Jack Benny que nos pague enseguida pronto. Hey, wait a minute. Wait, who are these three guys? Those are the boys that sang on the program last week. Oh, the Guadalajara Trio from Palm Springs. Well, I paid them their money. What do they want? More. More. I gave them plenty. I gave you mucho pesos, boys. Remember? Pero queremos más dinero. Por eso estamos aquí. Look, fellas, if you want more money, I'll straighten it out with you tomorrow. Manana. Manana. Why don't you pay them tonight? I don't know the word. Manana, boys. All right, go ahead and play, Phil. Hey, fellas, adios, will you? Adios. I wish I knew a good Spanish lawyer. <laughs> That was Darling Nellie Gray, played by Phil Harris and his classified orchestra. <laughs> classified meaning, I'm going to put an ad in the paper. I've had enough of them. <laughs> <laughs> and now, ladies and gentlemen... Oiga, Jack Benny, ¿por qué no la arreglamos ahora? Oh, please, fellas, I'll pay you pronto. Pronto. Pronto means right now. Oh. Manana, fellas. Manana. <laughs> Adios, will you? Hmm. And now, ladies and gentlemen, I would like to announce that next Sunday night for our feature attraction, the Benny, we know our business, but we're in the wrong one, players, will present their version of 20th Century Fox's version, of Jack Kirkland's version, of Erskine Caldwell's famous book, that sensational and daring saga of the Georgia Hill country, Tobacco Road. Thank you, Cupcake. <laughs> I should have hit that thing. I've got a muscle. <laughs> now, this great American classic will be the outstanding effort of our next Sunday's broadcast. I haven't seen the picture yet, Jack. What's it like? Well, it follows the play pretty closely, Mary. And just think, the legitimate show is still playing at the Forest Theater in New York. Remember the time I took you to see Tobacco Road when it first opened? Oh, yes. 
Gee, that was a long time ago. Uh-huh. I'll never forget that night. You wore a derby hat, white spats, and a checkered suit. And a bamboo cane. You know, in those days when I'd walk down the street, I wanted people to know I was an actor. You never could tell in the theater. <laughs> Oh, yes, they could. Say, Jackson, I remember Tobacco Road in them days. Oh, did you see it, Phil? No, I lived there. <laughs> oh, that's right. Well, Phil, you can be our technical advisor and tell us when to take our shoes off. <laughs> anyway, folks, tonight, as a trailer to this outstanding dramatic vehicle, we are going to present a few of the highlights that will... Pardon me, I'll take it. Hello? Hello, Mr. Bay. Guess who this is? Hmm. Well, really, I haven't the slightest idea. I'll give you a hint. Who works harder than any man in the, anybody in the world? Not you, Rochester. I bet twelve dollars you're laying down while you're talking to me. You got the phone in one hand and a chicken sandwich in the other. White meat or dark meat? <laughs> Never mind. I'm very busy now, Rochester. What do you want? Well, I'm over here in Pasadena to pick up the Maxwell, but you didn't give me enough money. Rochester, I gave you twenty dollars to have that motor fixed, and that's plenty. I know, but complications have set in. <laughs> what do you mean? You remember how the motor used to backfire just before it blow up? Yes. Well, now it whistles eight bars of there I go and boom. <laughs> well, that's only because it's overheated. Is the fan turning over? What's that, boss? I said, is the fan turning over? How can it? You've been wearing the belt for two weeks. <laughs> well, that's your fault. You gave me a buckle for Christmas. Now, tell the man who was to put on a new fan belt and have him fix that little leak in the radiator. Little leak? Yes. Boss, that thing drips like a California sky. <laughs> no, it's not that bad. And I have it fixed and pay the garage man. And Rochester, if I didn't give you enough money, pay the difference and I will reimburse you. I beg your pardon? I said I'll reimburse you. That means I'll pay you back. I know what it means. I just want to hear you say it. <laughs> You'll get it. Don't worry. I'll see you at home. Okay, goodbye. Goodbye. Oh, say, boss. Now what? I read in the paper where you signed a contract to make another picture pretty soon. Is that correct? Yes, why? I wish you'd speak to me about those things. That's not in your head. <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs> should speak to him about it. Now, where were we? Oh, yes. And now, ladies and gentlemen, as I start to announce, we will now have a preview of Tobacco Road. Take it, Mr. Wilson. Tobacco Road, a few of the highlights from this sensational production. First, romance. I love you, Ellie Mae. What do you say we get hit? You mean get married? No, get hit. I want to plow the field. <laughs> Drama! Hey, Jeter, ain't the clouds fleecy tonight? That's the mattress. You're under the bed. <laughs> Intrigue! Is there anybody home? Yes. Come in, tree. Comedy! Why does a hen cross the road? So Jack can have pressed chicken. Now cut that out. <laughs> Suspense! Estamos cansados de esperar aquí. Queremos el dinero. I told you, fellas, mañana, mañana. Technicolor. Who, oh, boss? Rochester. <laughs> These are only a few of the highlights of dramatic thrills that are in store for you next Sunday night. Don't forget to tune in, folks. Tobacco Road. Bigger than puppets of passion. You said it. Play, Phil. <laughs> And we will be with you again next Sunday night at the same time. So be sure to tune in and hear our version of Tobacco Road. <laughs> Say, Mary, I'm going to be a hillbilly next week. I better dig up some old clothes. Why don't you wear that checkered suit? You still got it. Oh, yes. But the coat is so tight on me now. I'll never be able to get my muscle in it. Oh, just wear the vest. That hollow chest of yours will fit anything. Not when I inhale. <laughs> Good night, folks. <laughs> The Jell-O program, coming to you from Hollywood, California, starring Jack Benny. With Mary Livingston, Phil Harris, Dennis Day, and yours truly, Don Wilson. And now, ladies and gentlemen, it is with great pleasure that I bring you a man with whom I have been associated for many years. A man whose friendship and thoughtfulness... Hold it, Don, hold it. We've got a long play to do tonight, so you needn't bother with the introduction. But, Jack, I had a very special reason for wanting uh, to... Hello again, this is Jack Benny talking. 
And, Don, I'm sorry I had to rush you like that, but as I said, we're doing a very important play tonight, Tobacco Road. And I'm anxious to get into it. Did the uh, rest of the gang get here yet? Don, did the rest of the gang get here yet? Who cares? <laughs> What's the matter with you? I simply asked if the gang got here yet. Well, if they mean more to you than I do, I'd like to tender my resignation. <laughs> what are you talking about? Well, just this. The reason I wanted to introduce you tonight was because I wanted to tie it in with my eighth anniversary. Your eighth anniversary? Yes, I've been on this program eight years tonight. And the least you could have done was to acknowledge it. Oh, so that's it. Well, gee whiz, congratulations, Don, and many happy returns of the day. Thanks. Well, what do you know? It's your anniversary I'm sorry it slipped my mind Say, I wonder what happened to the rest of the gang Slipped his mind What? That's fine treatment After I've worked and slaved and given you the best years of my life The best years of your life? For heaven's sake, Don, we're not married (laughs) Deeper You think I was the husband and you were the little woman now, please, don't be unreasonable. I don't think it's unreasonable to talk about my anniversary. All right, let's talk about it. So you've been with me eight years, eh, Dante? Well, if you hate me, come right out and say so. <laughs> now, look, Wilson, if you're going to act like a baby, I'm going to put you over my knee and change your option. <laughs> now, pull your lips in and behave. And stop laughing when you're supposed to be mad. <laughs> Reason, now, the reason I asked about the gang getting here is because I want to start casting Tobacco Road. I think we've got a swell play for tonight. It happens that my writers are very illiterate, and this hillbilly, this hillbilly stuff is right up their alley. Yes, sir. Don't expect me to laugh, brother. <laughs> Who asked you to laugh? I merely said my writers are a couple of hillbillies, and that's the truth. Well, why don't you get writers that are educated? Don, if they were educated, they could read, and if they could read, they would never have signed their contract. I got Phil Harris the same way. <laughs> oh, hello, Mary. Hello, Jack. Oh, hello, Don. Congratulations on your eighth anniversary. Thanks, Mary. I'm glad you remembered. Mighty nice to find out who your friends are. <laughs> Don, I'm your friend, believe me. I just happen to forget your big, fat anniversary. <laughs> That's all. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Now, look, there are only two ways out of this, Don. You can either accept my apology and I'll buy you a lovely present, or I can kill myself. Now, which do you want? Which is easier for you? Well? I'll be darned. He's thinking it over. Just thinking how silly you are, and Wilson, too. Well, I don't blame Don. He never forgets your birthday, does he? Nobody forgets it. How can you? Every year I send each one of you a telegram. Don't forget Jack's birthday, a friend. It's lucky that I'm sentimental or I wouldn't get a thing. Why, Jack, you even send us telegrams two weeks before Christmas. Well, certainly, those are just holiday greetings. Some greetings. Merry Christmas. All the stores know my sizes. <laughs> I don't remember sending anything like that, and if I had, it would have been funnier. Anyway, I'd be much more subtle than that. Oh, you're about as subtle as a two-dollar toupee. Now, let's analyze that little remark, Mr. (laughs) Anniversary. In the first place, you can't get a toupee for two dollars. They cost a lot of money. You got yours for nothing. Never mind. Remember that windy day? (laughs) Now, wait a minute, Mary. That that thing I grabbed that was rolling down the street was not a toupee. It was a bird's nest. (laughs) Well, a seagull must have made it. It had a wave in it. (laughs) All right, forget it. Now, Mary, I asked you to be here early tonight because I want to get going with Tobacco Road. Of course, I'm going to play the leading role, Jeter Lester. Why can't I be Jeter Lester? It's my anniversary. Don, you can't be a hillbilly. If you ever took your shoes off, your feet would spread out clear across the stage. <laughs> now, Mary, you're going to be my wife, and we have 18 children. 18 children? <laughs> what are you laughing at? You can write anything. <laughs> That's the play, and that's the story. Now, let's see. Hiya, Jackson. Here I am, bright and early. Well, I might know you've been on time tonight, Phil. This hillbilly stuff is your meat. Yeah, you know, my mammy and pappy down in Tennessee are listening in tonight. I just sent them a radio. Thought you sent your folks a radio over a year ago. Well, I did, but pappy spilled a drink on it, and it ate the dialogue. 
Well, there's an eight that Wilson can't tie into. Say, hey, where's Dennis? I told him to get here. What'd I told say? I said, where's Dennis? Thanks, Phil. I said, where's Dennis? <laughs> I told him, uh, I told him to get here early tonight. Oh, I've seen the kid. He's across the street shooting pool. Shooting pool? Why doesn't he get over here? Well, he was making a tough shot and he got his foot caught in the side pocket. What? Imagine he's paying 60 cents an hour just for laying there. Well, if that's the case, you might as well play your band number, Phil. And Mary, you run over to the bowling alley and get Dennis. I'm tired of that place. I've been setting up pins there all morning. You have not. You're just too lazy to go over, that's all. All right, hit it, Phil. Hold it a minute. Come in. Estamos aquí otra vez y muy enojados. Pues, ¿qué dice? Nos va a pagar o no? Sí, ya esperamos mucho tiempo, Jack Benny. Páganos el dinero enseguida, pronto. Well, I told you last week, mañana, mañana. <laughs> Play, Phil. All right, boys. Adios, will you, muchachos? <laughs> Adios. My goodness. <laughs> uh, that was Frankel Isserson. Play... <laughs> Played by Phil Harris and his lovely orchestra. Lovely being as close as we could get to the word that was blue penciled at rehearsal. <laughs> and now, ladies and gentlemen... Now, wait a minute, Jack. Now, we should lay off of my boys. They're high-class artists and they're commencing to resent it. High-class artists? Yeah. Phil, I'd like to throw a cigar away just once without having one of those high-class artists grab it on the first bounce. <laughs> They're all down there on their hands and knees. Not my first violinist. No, he's proud. He's got a nail on the end of his bow. <laughs> Seriously, Phil, I wish you'd speak to your boys about that habit. It embarrasses me. Well, I will, Jackson. Hey, fellas, no more smoking cigars unless it's their maiden boys. <laughs> well, at last, we're on the right track. All right, Don. At last, we're on the right track. Sorry, Jack, I'm not going to do that. What? Done. At last, we're on the right track. Now, go ahead. I'm not going to read the commercial unless it ties in with my eighth anniversary. Don, I'm not going to argue with you. Now, go ahead. At last, we're on the right track. Oh, keep your old track. <laughs> All right, then I'll read it. Mary, give me the lead. Okay. At last, we're on the right track. Ladies and gentlemen, you are always on the right track when you ask your grocer for a package of tempting and appetizing jello. But even though you are on the track, don't let him switch you to another brand. Boy, is that obvious. <laughs> Quiet. So remember, folks, always insist on genuine jello. And look for the big red letters on the box. Yeah. yeah. Isn't that awful? Don, I'd kick you right in the pants if you could feel it. <laughs> Personally, I think that was a very clever commercial. And now, folks. Hello, Mr. Benny. I'm sorry I'm late. Well, I wanted you here early tonight, Dennis. Are you all set for Tobacco Road? This ain't Benson I'm chewing. Dennis? Boy, am I sick. You ought to be ashamed of yourself, the idea of chewing tobacco just because we're doing a play called Tobacco Road. Well, I'm such a lousy actor, I figured anything would help. Dennis, we don't use that word on this program. You're a lovely actor. L-O-U-S-Y, lovely. <laughs> then I ought to get more money. Look, bud, make off like I didn't correct you. Anyway, Dennis, in our play, you're going to be Dude Lester, my son. Say, Jack, who's that fat girl standing in front of the piano? Where? Oh, her. That must be the actress I hired to play the part of Ellie May, my daughter. Are you looking for me, miss? I sure am, kid. <laughs> well, look, uh, Miss... Uh... Noodleman. Heather Noodleman. <laughs> Heather Noodleman. Oh, yes. I saw you in your latest picture, Puppets of Passion. Wasn't I lovely in that? You certainly were. <laughs> now, look, Miss Noodleman. Just call me Heather. <laughs> That's Heather. Heather. It's Heather from where I'm standing. <laughs> Never mind. Now, look, Miss Noodleman, you're not exactly the type I had in mind for our play. You see, Ellie May is supposed to be a thin, undernourished girl, and you're a little bit on the plump side. Uh, what do you weigh? I beg your pardon? I said, uh, what do you weigh? I don't know. Every time I put a penny in the machine, a little car comes out that says, if you don't get off, I'll scream. <laughs> well, 
Well, that's, uh, that's what I'm getting at. Uh, frankly, Miss Noodleman, you're much too fat. Be careful, young man. I'm a high-class artist. You are? But don't drop your cigar. <laughs> I won't. Well, Miss Noodleman, it's too late. To... <laughs> it's too late to make any changes, so we let you handle the part. Thanks, kid. However, try and look as hungry as possible. And now that we're all here, ladies and gentlemen, our version of Tobacco Road will go on immediately after Harris and the boys get us in the mood. Go ahead, Phil. <laughs> nice going, boys. Now, there's the number they can play. <laughs> no music. And now, ladies and gentlemen, without further ado, we bring you our feature attraction of the evening, Tobacco Road. All right, fellas, let's get in the spirit of this. Take off your shoes, everybody. Good. Hey, Jackson, you only took one shoe off. Well, I got a little hole in my other sock, so I better leave it on. Take both shoes off. You made us do it. Oh, all right. Hmm. Darn it. Oh, boy! Get away from there, all of you. It's mine. <laughs> See, our shoes are off. Phil, come on. You're a hillbilly, too. Muss up your hair. I'd rather die first. <laughs> all right, if you won't cooperate. Well, let's go. Ladies and gentlemen, our version of Daryl F. Zanuck's 20th Century Fox production, Tobacco Road. Set the scene, Mr. Wilson. I won't do it unless it ties in with my eighth anniversary. <laughs> it does tie in with your eighth anniversary. Look, Don. Tobacco Road is in its eighth year on Broadway. Erskine Caldwell wrote the novel, Caldwell Has Eight Letters. Jack Kirkland wrote the play, There Are Eight Letters in Kirkland. John Ford directed the picture, There Are Eight Letters in John Ford. Nunnally Johnson wrote the screenplay, There Are Eight Letters in Johnson. There are only seven letters in Johnson. Eight, I borrowed an extra N from Zanuck. John Sun. <laughs> Now, set the scene, will you, Don? Please. Oh, all right. That's what I have to go for. Music, boys. <laughs> tobacco Road, a hundred years ago, was the scene of the richest cotton and tobacco plantations in the entire South. But today, it is a famished and desolate land. The opening scene is the tumble-down shack of the Jeter Lester's. It's a hot summer's day, and Dieter is lying on the front porch asleep in the sun. Dieter, Dieter, Lester, you lazy good for nothing, wake up. Wake up, Dieter, wake up, I say. Hit me with something. Okay. Thanks, Mo. What do you want? I want you to go out and rustle up some food. We ain't at for a month. Don't worry, Ma. We'll get some food one of these days. I hope so. I'd like to burp just once more before I die. <laughs> we ain't gonna get that much. <laughs> well, Ada, it's about time for my nap. If I dream of turnips, I'll save you one. Now, Jeter Lester, you get up and go find Ellie May and Dude. I ain't seen them since this morning. Ellie May and Dude? Them's our hogs, ain't they? No, them's our kids. The hogs moved out on us. <laughs> oh, that's right. You know, Ma, that Ellie May is getting to be a mighty pretty gal. And besides that, she's a half-wit. <laughs> yes, yeah, she sure is smart. You know, Pa, I was wondering, if Ellie May is a half-wit, what does that make Dude? I don't know. I never was no good attraction. <laughs> He's very happy, though. Giggles all the time. <laughs> yes, sir. Hello, Skeeter. Hi, Skeeter. Where's Skeeter? He went to Toledo. Oh. So long, Skeeter. So long, Skeeter. <laughs> hmm. Who is that, Pa? Just a stooge. I'm sick of talking to you. <laughs> hey, Ma, ain't that our son, dude, coming down the road on his hands and knees? That's him, 18 years old, and he never learned to walk. Well, give the kid a chance. Maybe he never thought of it. <laughs> Hello, son. Hello, Jitter. That's Jeter. The way you shake. Well, by God, it's a fine way to talk to your poor old Paul. Where you been? I drove your old car down the village and stole that load of wood that was in the back seat. What'd you get for it? A dollar and a half, including the car. <laughs> True deal, son. 
I hand over the money. I ain't got it. I bought gasoline with it. Bought gasoline? What good is gasoline after you sold the car? If I knew that, I could walk standing up. <laughs> Why, you... Leave me alone, Pa. At least you got a can of gasoline. Yep. Now, if we just had a lemon, we could have a cocktail party. <laughs> yes, sir. You know, Pa, I saw Banker Wilson down the village, and he said if you ain't got a hundred dollars by tonight, he'll send us all to the poorhouse. The poorhouse? What's wrong with that? You go there, you gotta take a bath. Not me. I've had three baths this year already. Getting caught in the rain don't count. <laughs> Does too. I was chewing soap at the time. <laughs> anyway, where am I going to get a hundred dollars? Say, I got an idea, Ma. Hello, Skeeter. Where you going, Skeeter? Going to buy a heater. Well, you can get one up the streeter. Street here. I had a reach for that one. <laughs> so long, Skeeter. So long, Skeeter. I got an idea, Ma. If we can only get our daughter Ellie Mae married to some rich fella, our troubles is over. Oh, I'll be glad to marry a rich fella. You're a boy. <laughs> Ma, haven't you never told him what he is? I didn't know. <laughs> Well, he's a boy. He's got long pants. Hey, Paul. Paul, I'm hungry. Now, go over to that barrel, son, and help yourself with some ice cream. Thanks. Listen, Peter, I wish you'd stop feeding our kids cotton. Oh. They know it ain't ice cream. Their gums don't get cold. What's the difference? Got vitamins. Say, what's that coming down the road? That's our daughter. Hello, Ellie. Hello, Ma. Boy, is she thin. <laughs> Sit down, Ellie. I want to talk to you. Okay. Well, there goes the chair. The only one in this county, too. Too bad. Now, listen here, Ellie Mae. We're up again. it. The only way out is for you to get married in a hurry. I'm willing, Pa. I chased a man ten miles today. Nice work. I'd have got him, but he took a shot at me. <laughs> they always do. Say, how about you getting married to Twitch Harris? He works at the Wilshire Bowl, and he'd be a good catch for you. Well, tell me, Pa. Do you think I'm his type? His type? Ellie Mae, that is a general classification if I ever heard of it. <laughs> Hear that, more? Ellie Mae want to know if she was Twitch Harris's type. I'm his type, and I got a mustache. There you are. I tell your daughter, if you play your cards right... Hi, you cheater! Well, howdy, folks! By gum and by jello, here's Twitch now. Hello, Hello Twitch. Well, right. Hi, Twitch. You're looking good, Twitch. I see you got your banjo with you. That ain't my banjo. I just put strings on the jug to fool them revenuers. Well, I'll be doggone. <laughs> Say, Twitch, have you ever thought of getting married and settling down? Sure, lots of times, but a little bromo in the morning takes care of that. Well, Twitch, you ought to have a wife. Someone to drag you in off the road at night. You're liable to get run over. Well, maybe I ought to get married. What gal you got in mind, Jeep? <laughs> Well, there's a few of them around here. First is my daughter, Ellie Mae. I said Ellie Mae. Keep a talking, brother. <laughs> now, hold on, Twitch. Ellie Mae's a fine gal. She's homelier than a mud fence, but she's a wonderful cook. Who cares? If I marry her, I couldn't eat. <laughs> now, wait a minute, Twitch. Ellie Mae is very affectionate. Give him a kiss, daughter. Okay. You come near me and I'll straighten your teeth. <laughs> wait a minute. Her teeth don't stick out so far. My hat's hanging on them, ain't it? <laughs> Well, that's just plain rudeness. Now, listen here, Twitch. The reason I want... Hello, Skeeter. Hi, you Skeeter. Did you get the heater? Yep, and you can't beat her. That's good. So long, Skeeter. So long, Skeeter. <laughs> now, Twitch, the reason I want you to marry Ellie Mae is because I need $100 or Banker Wilson's going to take away my land. What you worrying about? You got most of it on you. Well, that's the last straw. Twitch, Harris, you get off my property. Get. Well, what's keeping you? Make Ellie May open her mouth. I want my hat back. <laughs> yeah, it on, daughter. Hey, Paul, here comes Banker Wilson. Doggone, he's here already for his money. We better hide. Yeah, let's all get behind Ellie May. Oh, take no use. Might as well face it. Hello, Banker Wilson. Nice day, ain't it? Now, listen here, Jeter Lester. I came here for that money, and I'm going to get it. Well, I'll tell you. Tell me nothing. You give me that eight dollars or I'll throw you out. Eight dollars? I owe you a hundred. Make it eight. I want to tie it in with my anniversary. <laughs> hmm, we ain't got eight dollars, thank you, Wilson. We ain't got seven dollars. There's six. 
shucks. We ain't even got five dollars. Have we more? Gosh, no. We ain't been to Sheriff's for weeks. <laughs> That's right. Then get going, Peter. Get off this land. Where are going, Wilson? Come on, Moore. Come on, Ellie Mae. Hey, dude. Yes, Pa? Get down on your hands and knees. We're walking to the poorhouse. <laughs> I sure hate to leave the old place, though. Hello, Peter. Hello, old Peter. Say, have you got $8 you don't need her? Sure. Can I marry your Peter? <laughs> Peter, she'll be better than that heater. <laughs> Here, Banker Wilson, here's your eight dollars, and we're a-staying on this land. Thanks, Skeeter. You're welcome, Skeeter. So long, Skeeter. So long, you old bum. <laughs> well, that was it, folks. Our version of Tobacco Road. Play twist. <laughs> And we will be with you again next Sunday night at the same time. Say, Jack. What I said, same time. <laughs> he certainly did. At the same. <laughs> with you next Sunday night at the same time. Say, Jack. What? <laughs> you know that said Alan did Tobacco Road last Wednesday. <laughs> he did? <laughs> well. You don't have to be so. Oh. <laughs> you don't have to be jealous, Jack. More money fell out of your shoe than his. Oh. <laughs> I knew I was a better actor. And now, folks, at this time, I want to wish a lot of success to Sam Slepperman Hearn, who opens at the Palomar Theater in Seattle, Washington, tomorrow. Good luck, Slep. Good night, folks. The Jell-O Program, coming to you from Hollywood, California, starring Jack Benny, with Barry Livingston, Phil Harris, Dennis Day, and yours truly, Don Wilson. And now, ladies and gentlemen, spring has come to Southern California. Birds are twittering in the treetops. Buds are bursting on the branches. All nature is infused. Yes, twittering. <laughs> Dennis, go ahead, Don. So without further ado, we would like to show you how a typical gentleman farmer is heralding the arrival of spring. The time early this afternoon. The scene, Jack Benny's backyard. The farmer, Jack Benny. <laughs> Rochester, Rochester, hand me those tomato plants. I'll set them out next to the string beans here. Why don't you plant these seeds instead? I don't want those. I want tomatoes. But these are mighty appetizing when they reach maturity. Rochester, we planted enough watermelons. <laughs> That's all you think of, watermelons. We planted more now than we can eat. Then who can eat? Than I can eat. <laughs> Now, please remember, this is my garden. There. That's in deep enough. <laughs> you sure look funny in those overalls and that old straw hat. I do look like a farmer in this outfit, don't I? All but the rubber gloves. They're too critical. <laughs> well, I've got soft, lovely hands, and I'm going to keep them that way. <laughs> Rochester, uh, go get the hose. I want to water the soil around these plants. I meant to tell you about that. Remember when Mr. Billsley came home the other night after he'd been out celebrating? Uh-huh. Well, he thought the hose was a snake and shot it full of holes. <laughs> oh, my goodness. That was a brand new hose. Well, go get it anyway. We can pack it up. Too late now, boss. He mailed it to Frank Buck. <laughs> what? He wants to know what species it is. That's the silliest thing Mr. Billingsley has ever done. You know, I think I've got some of these plants upside down. No, I guess they're all right. Dennis, don't mow so close to the rose bushes. Watch it. I'm almost through, Mr. Benny. Well, keep at it. Now, Dennis, while I think of it, I want you to go over to Claudette Colbert's house first thing in the morning and mow the lawn there. She'll be expecting you. Claudette Colbert? Gosh! And you'll get 35 cents an hour. But gee, Mr. Benny, I'm nuts about her. I couldn't charge her anything. You'll charge the regular rate. <laughs> I'm your agent, and I set the deal. <laughs> so don't worry about it. Okay. Let's see. Hey, Rochester, look uh, look at these mushrooms here. I don't remember planting any mushrooms. Those are toadstools, boss. They're poison. No. No, Rochester, I think they're mushrooms. Go ahead and taste one. I wouldn't eat one of those if you shoved a steak under it. <laughs> oh, what a baby. 
You know, Rochester, there's an old saying, a coward dies a thousand deaths. A hero dies but one. Yeah, but supposing I eat that thing and find out I'm a hero. <laughs> All right, don't eat it. Who cares? Oh, hello, Rochester. The garden looks lovely. Thanks, Miss Livingston. I see you got the scarecrow up already. This is me and you know it. <laughs> you buy that package of cucumber seeds like I asked you to? Yes, here you are. They were ten cents. Thanks. Gee, just think, Mary. I'm going to take these little seeds, plant them in the ground, and before you know it, vines will spring up with oodles and oodles of cucumbers on them. Isn't nature wonderful? Yeah. And, Mary, half of those cucumbers are going to be yours. The heck with nature. Give me my dime. <laughs> Give me my dime. Give me my dime. You'll be sorry when the crop comes in. I feel it's going to be a big season. Oh, you're some farmer. You and your crazy experiments. Oh, they're not so crazy. Remember last year? You sprinkled cheese all over the ground and tried to raise all rotten potatoes. <laughs> Sure, I sprinkled cheese. I had an idea. <laughs> oh, what are you giggling about? Every other gardener around here had trouble with potato bugs, but you had mice. <laughs> All right. I still say it doesn't hurt to experiment. In California, just a place to do it. You know, Mary... I only I... have a little more to go, Mr. Benny. Okay. You know, Mary, I wouldn't last far with you. I might turn out to be another Luther Burbank. Who? Burbank. Luther Burbank. Oh, yeah. They named Glendale after him. They named Burbank after him. <laughs> Burbank, not Glendale. Oh, I guess I didn't analyze it. <laughs> Certainly didn't. Say, Mary. Oh, Miss Livingston, what's new? Haven't you heard? I just missed seeing the cucumber queen. Well, Mary. Well, see you later. Ding, ding. He always plays conductor when he mows the lawn. <laughs> what a kid. You know, Mary, every year when spring comes around, I, I wish I was a kid again. Of course, I'm still full of pep. I feel young. Oh, stop rolling your eyes. I'm not rolling my eyes. I save that little trick for pictures. Now, let's see. Oh, Mary, I was just having a little argument with Rochester. Look. Look down there. Are those things, is there mushrooms or toadstools? Those are toadstools. They are? Well, I'm certainly glad you told me. I, I almost ate one. You almost ate one? <laughs> well, I mean, I would have eaten one after you did. With me laying there? <laughs> All right, forget it. I better dig these up and throw them away. Shoo, shoo! Time those chickens. Get out of here. Go, go, go. Whose chickens are they, Jack? What? Whose chickens are they? Oh, Ronald Coleman's. They're always flying over the fence. Chase them back, Rochester. All of them? Yes. <laughs> yes, all of them. They're young and tender, boy. I don't care. They're ruining my garden. I'll chase those chickens back to Mr. Coleman's yard. Every single one of them. But, boss, you're stifling my personality. Chase them away. Okay. Shoo! Shoo! <laughs> dog, dog, how can I have so much willpower when I'm ruined? You know, Mr. You know, Mary, Mr. Coleman and I are very good friends. I want us to stay that way. Well, I better get these cucumber seeds in. Hey, Jack, here comes one of your writers. Oh, yes, it's about time. We'll go on the air pretty soon. I haven't even seen the script yet. Well, so you finally got here. Here's the script, Jack, if I do say so myself. <laughs> Thanks. Where's your partner? Bill went to Catalina. You're Bill. <laughs> Eddie must have gone to Catalina. Well, one of us did. <laughs> Now, let's see, uh, let's see what you two guys wrote here. Hello, Mary. Hello, Happy. <laughs> I hope it's a play or something. They are... Hey, wait a minute. This is Tobacco Road. We did that last week. This time, we're doing it with jokes. <laughs> what? And if they don't laugh tonight, we'll do it again next week. <laughs> oh, don't be so stubborn. 
Now, look, you run ahead to the studio, and you better have something else written before we get there. Okay, chum. I have more trouble with those guys. Well, it's your own fault, Jack. Why don't you fire them? Oh, I can't. You know how soft-hearted I am. And besides, they saw me once at Laguna Beach with a... Well, anyway... <laughs> Anyway, they're just a little tired now. And, uh... hmm. Hey, Dennis, we'll be leaving for the studio pretty soon. What are you going to sing on the program? I got a swell number called High on a Windy Hill. Well, go in the house and run over it on the piano. I want to hear it. Okay. Shall I take Mr. Coleman's lawnmower back to him? Never mind. I think he bought another one. <laughs> now, Mary, uh, hand me that trowel. <laughs> hey, Jack. Jack, look what Rochester's got. Well, I'll be darned. Oh, Rochester! Yes, boy! <laughs> what have you got in your arm? All we need is dumplings! <laughs> Put down that chicken! <laughs> I'm warning you for the last time, chase those hands over the fence. Mary, hand me that trowel. Hey, that song was all right, wasn't it, Mary? That should be swell on the show tonight. Uh-huh. I hope I'm planting these cucumbers in the right place. It might be a little too shady for them. Say, Jack, look at that cute little robin over there. He just flew in from Miami Beach. How do you know? He's got a towel from the Roney Plaza. Oh, cut that out. Save that stuff for the program. Say, hey, Rochester, get the car. We'll be leaving for the studio in a few minutes. Yes, sir. Do you want the town car or the deluxe convertible coupe? <laughs> what are you talking about? It's spring. I'm dreaming. <laughs> Stay in the clouds if you want to, but get the Maxwell. Okay. Well, it's beginning to shape up pretty good. I got cucumbers, tomatoes, spring beans. Aren't you going to plant beets this year? No, Rochester makes terrible borscht. <laughs> Anything he can't barbecue, he doesn't put his heart into. <laughs> well, let's go. Uh-oh, here comes your boarder. Oh, yes. I wonder why he's wearing that turban. Uh, hello, Mr. Billingsley. Good afternoon, Mr. Benny. Digging in your garden, I see. <laughs> yes, yes, I uh, thought I'd get started early this year. I, uh, I do hope you plant pistachios. They're delightful. But, Mr. Billingsley... <laughs> Pistachios are nuts. Well, who isn't? <laughs> oh. Oh, I didn't... I didn't look at it quite that way. Hmm. Well, goodbye, Mr. Benny. I'm going out for a little stroll. Goodbye. Oh, by the way, Mr. Billingsley, you... You look just like a Hindu. Is that a turban wound around your head? No, that's a bed sheet. I slept like a top last night. <laughs> oh. Well, we've, uh... We've got to uh, run along to the studio. See you later, Mr. Billingsley. Goodbye. Goodbye. Oh, thanks. I never touch it. <laughs> Wish I could figure him out. Oh well. Come on, ready for? Oh, Dennis, come on, we're leaving for the studio. Be right with you, Mr. Benny. No, oh, such a nice day, Rochester. You might have put the top down. It'll go down as soon as we hit a dip. <laughs> yeah, that's right. I got one of those new automatic tops, Mary. Oh, shut up. <laughs> well, what's the matter with you? Relax, kid. Spring is here. Enjoy it like I do. You ought to enjoy it. That's when you stop aching. I don't ache in the winter either. Come on, get in the car, kid. The three of us will sit in the back. Now, before you get in, Dennis, I want you to sign this release. Here, sign on the dotted line. Okay. What release? It's just a formality. Dennis bumped his head in my car the other day, and he's suing me. Suing you? All I want is ten cents for that bottle of iodine. Isn't that silly? Why don't you settle out of court? Give him half of your cucumbers. He won't get anything. I don't like his attitude. Now, get in the car. Get going, Rochester. We haven't much time. Gosh, I don't know what to do on the program tonight. 
Dennis, would you like to sing the next... Watch that, sir. Watch that bump as you go out the driveway. <laughs> Whoop! Where's Dennis? Never mind him. Get off my shoulders. <laughs> Oh, I'm sorry. Drive on, Rochester. <laughs> Rochester, uh, let us off there at the uh, let us off there at the studio entrance. Uh, let's stop here at the drugstore, Jack. I want a sandwich. Sure, we got plenty of time. Okay, stop here, Rochester. Yes, sir. <laughs> I gotta have those brakes fixed. <laughs> Park the car, Rochester. I'll see you after the broadcast. I was thinking on going down to Central Avenue and taking my girlfriend out for a drive. Okay, but be back in time to pick me up. Yes, sir. So long, boss. <laughs> hmm. Rochester, did you hear that? Good night, boss. Nobody sneezed. <laughs> Rochester, what have you got under that front seat? Which seat? The front seat. Well, dog gone if it ain't supper. That's one of Mr. Coleman's chickens. Now, how did that hen get in my car? I know and she knows, but we ain't talking. You don't have to talk. Now, hand me that hen. I'll see that Mr. Coleman gets it back. Okay, here you are. See you later. Now, hold still, Chicky. Nothing to be afraid of. Huh? Well, that tops everything. You certainly look silly walking into a drugstore with a chicken in your arm. When I get the studio, I'll put it in a box. <laughs> it's crowded in here, isn't it? One tuna fish on whole wheat. One tuna coming up. Hello, Marvin. Hello, Mr. Benny. Where'd you get the chicken? It's not mine. It's Ronald Coleman. Well, that's funny. I've never seen him carry it around. <laughs> Believe me, it's his chicken. Now, give me a chocolate malted milk, will you? Okay. One chocolate malted milk, one malted with an egg in it. Wait a minute. I don't want an egg in it. Have you looked in the mirror lately? <laughs> Listen, all I want is a plain malted milk. See, uh, I think I'll have the special here. Chop suey and all the tea you can drink. Fifteen cents. See, you can get anything at a drugstore now, can't you? Bring her the chop suey, Mervyn. Okay. Hey, Laverne. Ping o chong o kung ping song o ma ka o ka o la o ti u ka o coming up. <laughs> hey, those boys certainly get in the mood for things, don't they? Huh? You said it. Last Sunday I ordered Swiss steak and they put a watch in it. <laughs> oh, they think they're so smart. What do you want, Dennis? I think I'll have the special sandwich: peanut brittle on whole wheat. You mean, you mean peanut butter? No, look, it says right here, peanut brittle. Oh, that's a misprint, kid. I'll bring you a peanut butter sandwich. Nothing doing. It says peanut brittle here, and that's what I want. <laughs> now, listen. I know my rights. Dennis. <laughs> bring, uh, bring him a glass of milk and a piece of apple pie. Okay. It better have peanuts in it. <laughs> I'm going to knock you right off that stool, kid. Now, behave yourself. Here's your chop suey, Mary. Well, what about it, Mervyn? Where's my malted milk? Now, don't get huffy or I'll put a Mickey in it. <laughs> what? One Mickey coming up! <laughs> Isn't that awful? Why do I come in here? Why? You want a meal ticket on a punch board. That's all used up. Come on, fellas. Give me a little service, will you? Oh, hiya, Don. Oh, hello, Jack. Say, what in the world are you doing with that chicken? Belongs to Ronald Coleman. Sit down and have a sandwich, Don. Oh, I just finished, thanks. Here's your malted milk, Mr. Benny. It's about time. Hey, Jack, look who just came in. Where? Isn't that the fat girl who was on our program last week? Oh, yes, Heather Noodleman. <laughs> Hello, Miss Noodleman. What's new, kid? <laughs> oh, nothing much. What are you doing around here? I just stopped in for a late breakfast. Oh, well, what do you have, miss? A leg of lamb and a cup of coffee. Oh, my goodness. No cream in the coffee. A lot that'll help. Yeah. 
Well, I'm going now, Jack. See you at the studio. Okay, Don. Oh, say, Jack, my new picture, The Roundup, playing at the Paramount this week. Would you mind mentioning it on the program? Oh, no, no, I'll be glad to. Maybe you can tie it in with spring. Yeah, okay, bud. See you up there, Don. Hey, you, where's that like a lamb? Take it easy, Miss Noodleman. You can't be starving. Gee. How's your mother milk, Mr. Benny? Very good, Dennis. <laughs> What was, what was that? Hey, Jack, look. Well, I'll be darned. Hmm. Hey, Mervyn, put this egg in my malter. <laughs> Here. I thought you didn't want an egg. Mary, this is destiny. <laughs> Leave me alone. Oh, hello, Phil. Hi, Jackson. Boy, am I low. Feeling bad, eh? Yeah. Same thing, Mervyn. Hey, Laverne, pull Harris together. One bromo coming up. They sure know you, Phil. A bromo for lunch. You know, if you keep this up... Holy smoke, hurry up, Mervyn. I see a chicken on the counter. <laughs> it's a real one. Calm down. Say, Phil... We only got a few minutes here. What number is you playing on the program tonight? I don't know. How do I know? Well, don't get mad. I just asked. Uh, didn't you rehearse anything? What are you worried about? Everything we play sounds the same, don't it? I know. I right, use your molded milk with an egg in it. That'll be 20 cents. 15 cents. My chicken laid the egg. That's Ronald Coleman's chicken. All right. I'll give the nickel to him. Now, look, Bob. Hey! And all I'm paying is 15 cents. Jack, Jack, look what time it is. Oh, my goodness, we're on the air in a minute. Come on, Dennis, Phil. Phil, hurry up. Okay, Don, we're on the air. The Jell-O program, coming to you from Hollywood, California, starring Jack Benny. With Barry Livingston, Phil Harris, Dennis Day, and yours truly, Don Wilson. And we will be with you again next Sunday night at the same time. Say, Jack, when are you leaving for Chicago? Tomorrow night, Mary. Hey, what's this about Chicago? I'm going to, uh, Phil, I'm going to appear at a benefit there Wednesday evening for the Greek War Relief at the Civic Opera House. So I'll see you all next Sunday, fellas. And incidentally, I'm going to bring the quiz kids back with me from Chicago. They're going to be on our program next Sunday. Boy, am I going to show them up. Hey, where's my leg of lamb? What a voice all the way from the drugstore. Good night, folks. 